interesting to see if AJ Styles use, tries to use that same strategy against Drew McIntyre tonight. Drew McIntyre, certainly the toughest task. The tallest, the strongest task for AJ Styles in this tournament thus far. And I'm not sure if AJ, if it's going to be smart for him to try to pull off a Claymore or a Future Shock DDT here tonight. As we get things underway in our finals matchup, man. This tournament has been progressing for weeks. We are finally going to find out just days before Backlash who is it going to be fighting Bobby Lashley in the main event on pay-per-view. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, later tonight we will have confirmation, an official date announcement for when the Backlash pay-per-view will be a live premiere right here on the channel. So stay tuned for that later on. In tonight's Raw episode is Drew McIntyre showcasing his strength early over the phenomenal AJ Styles. Let's talk about Drew McIntyre's tournament journey thus far. First in the first round, it was Cesaro. It was a great matchup. A true test of strength in that contest. Of course, Drew McIntyre walked out with the victory with the Claymore kick. And in the match against Mustafa Ali last week, unfortunately, a little bit of a great cloud over that match if you will with Seth Rollins sticking his nose out to distract himself at least sometime during the matchup Ali was able to fight back but in the end it was Drew McIntyre who got the win with the Claymore again Drew McIntyre's own big time finishing maneuvers have aided him big in this tournament thus far the very interesting strategies for both men throughout the tournament they certainly have earned the right to be here tonight only one man can Move on. Only one man can face Bobby Lashley, the almighty WWE champion on pay-per-view. The man who defeated Brock Lesnar, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago at WrestleMania, to retain the WWE championship once more. The man who has been dominant over WWE for the better part of a year as WWE champion has been Bobby Lashley. Not too much history with AJ Styles, but he certainly has got history Drew McIntyre, the Scottish psychopath. The two faced off at WrestleMania last year. They met inside Hell in a Cell as well last year. Tons of history between those two. I'm sure Drew McIntyre would love to get back to the ring with the almighty superstar himself. As for AJ Styles, that would be a new matchup. AJ and Bobby Lashley. Certainly you can scout them from afar, but it all changes when you're inside the ring with one or the other. Drew McIntyre taking it to the air there. Not something we see him do often, but in a match of this magnitude with an opponent like AJ Styles across from you in the ring, you got to throw caution to the wind as Drew McIntyre uses his strength. I'm very interested to see how these guys execute their maneuvers the further this match goes on. No doubt the toughest task for both of these men in the tournament thus far. Both former world champions here in the WWE. Drew McIntyre, former NXT champion, former Intercontinental champion. AJ Styles, on the other hand, has been Intercontinental champion, United States champion, tag team champion. He's been a Grand Slam winner under the WWE umbrella. And this, of course, isn't even including his accomplishments elsewhere. As AJ takes down the big man with some classic offense from the Phenomenal One. AJ working over Drew McIntyre here. A nice drop kick by the Phenomenal One. AJ's best bet in this match is definitely going to be able, or should be I say, being able to use his agility and speed over Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is an agile for his size. If he had to pick one over the other, it would definitely be AJ Styles. The high flying maneuvers. The speed of AJ Styles can definitely aid him in this matchup against such a taller, stronger opponent. Drew McIntyre, man, he's going to be a hard person to keep down. As he drops the DDT on AJ, and he's going for the early cover. Will AJ get the shoulder up? And it is. Just a normal DDT there from McIntyre. We do see him hit the Future Shock DDT. His DDT variation that he has perfected to a T. A lot of times throughout his matches, that time just opted for the old school DDT. I think that's all he had time for, realistically, just like he did right there. But AJ springs up. It's an emphatic DDT, but it isn't Drew McIntyre's best. As AJ may have felt a little bit of urgency there, we saw him spring back up, hit that bouncing forearm. 
And he's going to look for some classic phenomenal offense again. AJ takes down the big man. And as we already mentioned earlier tonight, whoa, AJ Styles going back up to the top rope. What's he looking for here? Frog splash into the cover. Is AJ doing a backlash? Oh, Drew McIntyre gets the shoulder up. That was getting close there. About a two and a half count for AJ Styles. As we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, later tonight in our main event, the WWE Champion Bobby Lashley returns to action as he will go one-on-one -on -one with the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe. It's going to be a great main event here tonight. And again, we will have news on the Backlash pay-per-view coming up in just a bit as well as Drew McIntyre is once again getting a little bit out of character here. He's up on the top rope and hits that tomahawk chop to AJ Styles. That's the second time McIntyre in this match has gone high risk. He hit that leg drop earlier. And now coming off the top that time, Drew McIntyre clearly mixing up his offense in this matchup to try to throw AJ Styles off his game. And it's definitely an interesting strategy. Definitely a smart strategy, I gotta say, from Drew McIntyre. He's just gotta make sure that AJ doesn't have moves like that scouted, being AJ Styles is very familiar with a lot of those high risk maneuvers. AJ Styles here. Look at this. He's got Drew McIntyre scouted. I think we know what he's going for. Phenomenal forearm. Phenomenal forearm by AJ Styles. But McIntyre's up and he hits the big boot. McIntyre just absorbs the blow and hits the big boot. Things are picking up here, but AJ Styles knows AJ or knows Drew McIntyre's days into the cover. That's gonna be all. No, McIntyre gets the shoulder up. AJ hitting that beautiful, phenomenal forearm, but Drew McIntyre, a tough SOB, just absorbs the blow, gets up, nails AJ with the big boot. AJ tried going for the pinfall there, but it was just not enough. When AJ hits one of his best maneuvers, you got to think, what's AJ going to decide to pull out as we progress in this matchup? Is he going to go for the strategy that has aided him throughout this tournament, and that's trying to use his own opponent's finishers against him? AJ counters there. German suplex sends the big man on his back. What a great matchup we have kicking on roll. Look at both these guys just going for drop kick like maneuvers. Both of them missing and AJ hits the forearm. After everything that this tournament has brought us, some phenomenal matches over the last couple of weeks. What a way to kick off Monday Night Raw tonight with the long awaited finals of the tournament. We started with eight men, we're down with two. Drew McIntyre sent AJ Styles to the other side of the ring with the belly to belly. Oh, wait a minute, McIntyre's going into the corner. I think we know what he's going for. He's put Cesaro and Mustafa Ali away with this move in the tournament. Claymore! Into the cover! But AJ Styles gets the shoulder up at the last second. The Claymore kick is what meant Drew McIntyre's meeting with the finals. He used that move on Cesaro, it got on the win. He used that move on Mustafa Ali, it got on the win. But tonight, AJ Styles able to withstand the blow, and it is still in this fight. Both these men pulled out their best tricks thus far, and it hasn't been enough. McIntyre's down and out. AJ Styles looks like he's going for phenomenal forearm number two. Decides against that. I don't think. I don't think Drew McIntyre may have been a little close to the ropes there. But unfortunately, the hesitation from AJ Styles. Age Drew McIntyre as he's into the cover. The phenomenal one way be down and out, but no, it is not. This is great, man. These guys are fighting tooth and nail. They know the opportunity that's on the line. WWE Championship opportunities don't come around often. When you do, you got to capitalize on them. They didn't fight all the way through this tournament just to be left behind. Neither one of these men wants to give an inch, and neither one of these men wants to be left off the Backlash pay-per-view card because they failed here tonight. You know the leader of the Hurt Business, the almighty Bobby Lashley. What a, what a leapfrog by Drew McIntyre there. You know the WWE Champion Bobby Lashley's got his eyes keen on this matchup. He's still got to worry about Samoa Joe earlier tonight, or later tonight. AJ unloaded on Drew. This is great offense here. This match has been going solid 10 minutes at this point. AJ takes down Drew McIntyre. And you gotta wonder as we get into the later waters in this match, what is it gonna take to keep one of these men down? 
They both hit their big time maneuvers. AJ with the phenomenal forearm. McIntyre with the Claymore. Is it just going back to those maneuvers or is it switching up your offense here? It's going to give one of these men the victory. AJ Styles working on Drew McIntyre in the corner there. Clearly he feels the need to do some more damage as he drops the leg. Big time maneuver by AJ. He drops the leg and now he look, could be going for another phenomenal forearm. Here we go! But Drew McIntyre stepped back. AJ's trying to get back into this here. AJ Styles grabs McIntyre. Look at this. Styles clash. AJ Styles secondary. Big time finishing maneuver. He nails it on the big man. But McIntyre gets the shoulder up at two. How in the hell did Drew McIntyre get the shoulder up? Styles clash does not do the trick. AJ Styles for the top. Spiral tap. He hasn't hit that move in damn years. That doesn't even do it. What the hell is it going to take? My God, AJ with a phenomenal forearm earlier in this matchup. A Styles Clash. Pulls out the spiral tap, a move that he hasn't done in years. And somehow, someway, the Scottish Psychopath is still in this matchup. And he just uses that big cranium. McIntyre from the top drops the big time leg drop again. These guys are still fighting. AJ's trying to get back into this. He knows if Drew McIntyre starts mounting some offense here, it could be just the comeback he needs to get the victory. AJ's going to have to rethink his strategy, man. He hit his best offense there. McIntyre's got to fight, man. He's really falling behind these last few minutes in this matchup. AJ's controlling this contest. McIntyre's staying in. He's... Certainly not put in the driver's seat. There's a big boot from Drew. As McIntyre, what a slam. Just elevating AJ Styles up to above his height. It brings him down on the map below. But AJ still in this. He's going to try to go for a sneaky quick cover on McIntyre. But McIntyre, you see the shoulder barely slipped up there. And AJ sends Drew over the top rope. Drew McIntyre is in trouble. AJ Styles going to look to take a breather here from the top. AJ Styles out of the ring with the forearm. Basically a phenomenal forearm variation there from the inside of the ring to the mat below. McIntyre going to try to withstand some offense. He's got AJ Days. McIntyre, smart strategy, honestly, here. Goes in the ring to take a breath. He's definitely falling behind here, taking a moment to rest his... Probably McIntyre's best bet at the current moment. He's going back after AJ Styles as AJ was doing the same, but AJ goaded him in, throws him into the barricade. I can't see these guys, or excuse me, I can't say these guys aren't sticking their strategy here, aren't playing this match smart. You can't play it too safe, but they're definitely playing it smart here. Taking their opportunities. AJ back in the ring, Drew McIntyre. Gonna look to meet him there. We're back at a standstill now. This match is in deep, deep water. AJ with the clothesline in the corner. McIntyre's down. What is it gonna take? Is it gonna be another big time maneuver from AJ Styles? McIntyre's down and out. He's a bit far across the ring. I don't know if he can hit it. McIntyre's just way too far for AJ Styles to catch all of it. He caught the arm, but clearly not what AJ Styles was intending there. He's lucky he at least caught the arms. That could have spelled bad for AJ Styles. McIntyre sits out with the suplex. And now just going for the ground and pound is the psychopath Drew. He's got a clear path in mind. He wants another match against Bobby Lashley at Backlash. He wants to reignite that rivalry, reignite that flame for the WWE title with a clothesline. AJ's down and out. Oh boy. He's stomping away. Is it going to be Claymore number two? If he hits us, there's no going back for AJ Styles. Claymore number two, and you might as well punch the ticket. AJ Styles gets his shoulder up. I cannot believe that AJ just got the shoulder up there. McIntyre with Claymore number two. He went for the kick. I think McIntyre may have been even looking for that future shot DDT. But somehow, somewhere, the phenomenal AJ Styles is still in this matchup.
What is it going to take? AJ Styles, look at this. Rolls out. Oh, tried going for that calf crusher, but did not watch the ring awareness there. McIntyre still down. AJ Styles, though, even though he missed on that calf crusher, should be trying to take advantage, but McIntyre still in this. Backdrop. AJ's back slams down the mat below. Man, look at the sweat dripping off these guys, man. That is dangerous. Trouble as AJ gets bounced off the top rope. We are well over, I'd say, the 12-minute mark in this matchup. I don't know how long we've been going. I don't got it in front of me. But, man, what a fight. This is what the WWE Championship and an opportunity to stand across the ring from the WWE Champion is all about. And it's back and forth we're going here. Neither man won to give an inch. Drew McIntyre's leg got taken out there. AJ Styles, look at this. Gets the big man up. Could it be Styles Clash number two? He hits it. And he goes directly into the cover. AJ Styles off the Styles Clash. He does it. What a freaking matchup. The finals of the number one contenders tournament. An absolute classic here on Monday Night Raw. Neither man wanted to give an inch. Claymore's phenomenal forms. Tooth and nail. These guys were fighting. In the end, it's Styles Clash number two. Look at that spiral tap. I can't believe AJ Styles pulled out that, ma that maneuver. But AJ Styles off Styles Clash number two gets the victory here tonight. Oh, wait, 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 wait. AJ Styles is celebrating his victory, but we got Cedric Alexander from the Hurt Business in the ring. Takes out AJ Styles. What the hell is this? AJ punches his ticket to meet Bobby Lashley at Backlash and clearly a predetermined attack from Bobby Lashley sending one of his Hurt Business cronies to the ring to do some dirty work. Bobby Lashley trying to make sure that the man he fights on Sunday now he knows will be AJ Styles ain't going in 100%. And let's be honest, I don't think it's an AJ Styles thing. It could have been a Drew McIntyre in that ring as well. Cedric Alexander getting sent out here to send a message here tonight on the behalf of the almighty WWE Champion Bobby Lashley. At the end of the day, message clearly sent. Cedric Alexander laying out AJ Styles on behalf of the Hurt Business and the WWE Champion, the almighty Bobby Lashley. The stage is set. The time is now. No rules. No countouts. No disqualifications. Absolutely no restrictions in this contest. No holds barred. And the prestigious prize in the women's division today, the WWE Women's Championship of the World. Your challenger, the Nightmare Rhea Ripley, your champion, Bianca Belair. The bell has sounded and we are underway with the second contest of this rivalry. This time it is no holds barred. Bianca Belair picking up Ripley, sends her down to the canvas in the early going. It's going to be very interesting to see as this match progresses. Who's going to be the initiator of the violence in this one? As Bianca is taking the fight to Rhea Ripley with those right hands. Look at a beat down the Nightmare here. And there's Rhea Ripley go for the clothesline. Blair once again sidestepped it. Bianca is unloaded on Ripley in the early going. Sends her to the outside. And a snap. And there goes Rhea Ripley down to the canvas below. Or down to the floor, I should say. And Bianca all over Rhea Ripley since the bell. Rhea's got something in mind here. Blair coming to the outside, but there's Rhea Ripley pulling her down to the floor. Rhea Ripley is known for her brutality inside the square circle. She's rough and tough and she's strong, but so is Bianca Belair. She has proved resilience and proved just how good she is throughout her championship reign. Both these women are at the absolute top of their game. The only question is, is Bianca Belair have the advantage in this contest? And she was the victor of their last contest. Or is Rhea Ripley going to fare better with the no-holds-barred rules? The brawl is right up here at ringside. Rhea Ripley taking apart our announce table moments ago. She looks like she is going to be the leader of the violence in this one. Ripley's down. Bianca Belair catching her breath. She's preparing for a long, hard-fought match. 
and she's taking her breath when she can. Ripley's, however, going under the ring and is looking to bring out some carnage here, and she's got a damn hockey stick. We're in New York, and Ripley is playing the role of the Islanders here tonight. The Blair not won an affair with that hockey stick, taking out Rhea Ripley as she gets into the ring. Ripley threw her best shots at Bianca at their matchup at Money in the Bank, so I'm sure she's going to try to take advantage of more opportunities in this matchup with the weapons involved. That time she gets the knees up on Bianca Belair. But there's Belair fighting back. Belair's been all over Rhea Ripley in this contest, and now Ripley eats the knee of Belair. Taking down Rhea Ripley here. Bianca Belair's going to have to try to wrestle her style match with the rules and restrictions on this contest. And of course, those rules or restrictions are the fact that there are none in this match. Blair's down. Ripley's got a ride on that hockey stick, and Blair eats it to the forehead. But Blair, she is tough. Now she's got Ripley on top of her shoulders. Fireman's carry position and hangs her up in the top rope. Women's championship on the line. You, two, you know these two women are going to throw everything at each other. As they're going back and forth here these last couple of seconds. You gotta think if Rhea Ripley comes up short in this contest, that's back-to-back -back losses for the Women's Championship. She is definitely gonna be sent to the back of the line in the division, and Belair's gonna be looking for a new challenger. On the other hand, if Ripley picks up the victory here, will there be reason for match number three, a possible grudge match between Belair and Ripley? All will know in due time. Ripley heading to the outside. She could be looking for a little more carnage. On the Women's Champion, she hits that super kick. Ripley's looking under the ring. Let's see what she's going to pull out, but there's Blair. Blair's honestly stopping some of the weapons and stopping some of the offense of Rhea Ripley in this matchup. She's looking to wrestle her style of match, as we mentioned earlier. She's got Ripley above her head. The only person that's going to be able to do something like that with the size and stature of Rhea Ripley is the strength of Bianca Blair. Now sending her into the barricade. But there's Bianca fighting back. Back and forth in this contest. And now look at this. Suplex on the outside. She's holding her up in the air. Belair still on the outside of the ring. Showcasing her assets right here. And it was suplexed out of the floor. Remember, no count outs in this contest. These two women can fight on the outside all they want. And I'll follow it up with a power slam on the outside of the ring. Rhea's gotten in, gotten in offense, excuse me, but Belair has been definitely in control of this contest so far. Women's champion has been avoiding as much as she can the weapons and the big time strikes of Rhea Ripley, and you can just see she's all over the challenger. Rhea Ripley's got to start mounting some offense there. There's a counter, and there's a kick. Let's see what she's got here. Oh, and she throws Belair. Head first right into the steel of the ring post. And Belair goes right down immediately. Following it up with that leg drop. Rhea Ripley, now is her time to try to mount some offense. But she's looking under the ring here. Now let's see what she's going to pull out. She's pulling out the hardware. Rhea Ripley pulling out the table. Remember, no disqualifications, no count outs. Absolutely no holds barred here in your women's championship main event. And Rhea Ripley pulling out the hardware here in New York. And she hits Bia with the wood. And Rhea Ripley's got something in mind with that table. She's going to be looking to send the women's champion right through the wood here. Bianca's going to be in trouble. She's going to have to try to avoid this at all costs. But there's a nice shot. Ripley's dazed. Belair's got her up. Using the strength again and just turns her inside out. Sending her down to the canvas below. And there's a counter from Ripley. Back and forth we're going here. Sends her to the table. Does not crash through it yet, but there's Ripley spearing her through the table. Bianca Belair, spine first into the wood. Off the spear from Rhea Ripley. And Bianca's got to be down here. Rhea Ripley's headed up to the top rope. Could be looking to finish things off. Hits the elbow drop. A maneuver that Belair has gotten the victory with in the past before. We're going to have a new women's champion, but Belair gets the shoulder up. Rhea Ripley almost had her. Put her through the table, followed it up with that elbow drop. You know it's going to hit harder with somebody with the size and stature of Rhea Ripley, but it's not enough here. Ripley's going for yet another table on the outside of the ring. Ripley is looking to take advantage 
of the stipulation as much as she can here. She's pulled out the hockey stick. She put Belair through the table right there. And now she's brawling with her on the outside of the ring, sending her into the barricade. Moments away from having a new women's champion. But we know the heart and the resilience of Bianca Belair. There's a reason she has fought through all the challenges thus far. And she is still holding the gold. And that's a nice clothesline. Belair eats the floor yet again. Ripley headed back into the ring where she just sent that table in. Once again, look at her. Start building up the violence in this contest. She's got the table. There's Belair trying to avoid it. Nice shot. Knocking out the table out of the hands of Ripley. Blair cannot afford going. Do yet another piece of hardware there. Scoop slam sends her to the ropes. Follows it up into a quick cover. Bianca Belair looking to put this thing away. But Ripley gets the shoulder up. And not watching her back. There's Ripley. There's Belair with the counter. Back and forth with the reversals here. And a big time headbutt from Ripley. He goes for the clothesline. And Belair counters. Sends her down to the mat. Back and forth we go. These two women fighting tooth and nail here for the women's championship. And there's a counter from Ripley with a clothesline. And we got a collar and elbow. Blair with the reversal. Ripley now with the reversal. And yet another clothesline sends Blair down to the canvas. And Blair with the spear on Ripley. Back and forth we're going here. And now Ripley with the reversal. Turning Bianca inside out. Grabbing a hold, sends her into the corner. And now she hits a spear variation. And now stomp it away on the women's champion of the world. Ripley coming unhinged here in this contest. She knows if she fails to win the women's championship here, that the opportunities have rung out. At least momentarily. And she's got to start from the back of the line. She's setting up that table inside of the ring. Blair in a precarious position. Wait a minute, Rhea Ripley has got a hold here. Sends her out of the canvas. And Ripley going to be looking to become the new women's champion. Into the cover she goes. Blair gets the shoulder up just in the nick of time. Blair, lucky for her, avoided that table. And I'm sure Rhea Ripley decided to avoid the table herself. And was able to get into the cover position a little faster. But now Blair up against the table. Ripley's got a hold. Suplex position. Send a Blair through yet another table in this contest. The suplex into the table. Blair eats wood twice, but now she's fighting back. Ripley's dazed. Blair's got her up in the KOD position. KOD to Rhea Ripley. The heart, the resilience of the women's champion into the cover of Rhea Ripley. And Ripley able to get the shoulder up. At 2.9, Ripley gets the shoulder up and holds on to her chances of becoming the women's champion just a little bit longer. But Belair is now becoming unhinged, beating the hell out of Ripley. Ripley counters and just a tackle to the women's champion. And we are getting in a championship rounds here in this no holds barred contest. Ripley's going to the outside, looking for more blunder, looking to take advantage of the stipulation just a little bit more. Man, I can't believe Blair went through that table. Able to absorb it the best she could. Pops up with that KOD, but still not enough to put Rhea Ripley away. And I'll just slap it her at ringside. We got a brawl here. And Ripley with the counter. A nice backdrop of Blair. Just yet again, a hard fall to the outside of the ring. And now Ripley eyeing up Bianca Blair. Oh, she sends it right in our announce table. Oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Belair on the announce table. Ripley's got a hold. Champion and challenger in a precarious position. And Ripley sending Belair right through the announce table. Bianca Belair. First the spear through the table. Then the suplex through another table. And now Ripley sending Belair once again. Hard through the announce table. Down to the floor of the Nassau Coliseum. Rhea Ripley's got to go for the cover here. Bianca Belair showing her resilience. It's now or never for the champion to fight back and hold on to the women's championship. And quite frankly, I don't know how these two women are still going, but the women's championship of the world is on the line, and that'll motivate anyone to hang in there. Back and forth we go in this contest. 
Ripley's going under the ring. She's looking for more blunder yet again. And she's pulling out the third table of this contest. Fourth if you count the announcer's table. But there's Belair to cut her off. Using the strength to her advantage. Now Ripley able to counter. Rushing leg sweep sends the champion down to the canvas. And drops the leg on her as well. Belair is in trouble. As the challenger... Her wheels are spinning, and she's setting up the table yet again in this contest. Now look at this bit of a standoff between champion and challenger. Challenger takes advantage as she hits the superplex. It should be the super kick on the women's champion. Blair's dazed on the apron right now. Ripley looking to take a moment. She's scouting the women's champion. She's got something in mind here. Oh, but Blair, nice counter. Grabs a hold. Ripley eats the back of the neck. Or her neck eats the back of the knee of Bianca Belair. It's a hard landing there. But you see how tough she is able to fight back. And what a women's championship main event we got going on right here. On Monday Night Raw for the New York City. But now Rhea Ripley once again going to look to suplex Bianca Belair through the table. And she does. But Lair once again eats the table. Ripley goes right into the cover this time, not wasted any time. How the hell did Belair barely, and you see literally barely, rolling her shoulder up? Ripley sending Bianca through the fourth table of this contest, but Belair somehow, someway, able to get it up. And now she's got Rhea in the air, and Rhea eats the canvas for dinner. Belair to the cover on the challenger. Rhea Ripley gets the shoulder up. My God, what a main event. Rhea's now fighting. She's got Belair in the air. And hits her with that backbreaker. The women's champion is in trouble. Tables have been breaking left and right in this contest. Belair off the counter. Using her strength. And she's got Rhea Ripley fireman's carry position. Oh, no way. KOD out of nowhere. Bianca Belair. Into the cover! And she retains the WWE Women's Championship of the World! You wanna talk about heart! You wanna talk about soul! You wanna talk about resilient in this contest! Bianca Belair proves it yet again! My God, what a fight! What a main event! for the Women's Championship of the World in this no holds barred collision here tonight on Raw. How did Bianca survive the onslaught of the challenger? I will never understand and I will never know. No matter the obstacle, Bianca Belair seemingly always running them over. And with two victories over Rhea Ripley, leaving her in the past, you gotta wonder what is next for this dominant champion in the WWE. Four tables and the brutality of the nightmare was not enough. The EST is still on top of the WWE, but who is gonna be next in line to challenge Bianca Belair for the Women's Championship? Between these two men into a snowball effect. But it all comes down to this. Right here, right now, from the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. The rivalry that started months ago on Monday Night Raw now concludes here at SummerSlam inside the steel cage. And we are underway, and Ali is going to be fired up to get his hands on the Monday Night Messiah. But Rollins takes over Ali. And Ali, of course, as we mentioned... There's no possible way he could be coming in 100% here tonight. It was just two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw where Seth Rollins absolutely beat the hell out of Mustafa Ali and then some back in the interview position. Absolutely hitting with multiple maneuvers, hitting him with the steel cage, or excuse me, the steel chair. Seth Rollins, oh, Seth Rollins slipping off the top rope there. Well, that's, gonna, that's gonna go well for Mustafa Ali, but Rollins right there to luckily retrace his steps. So as we were mentioning, Seth Rollins using that steel chair over Mustafa Ali in the backstage area and then just slamming Mustafa Ali's head face first on the concrete. And again, it was because of that assault that Ali, my God, just hits the cage for the first time in the contest. 
It was because of that assault that Mustafa Ali hasn't been seen in the last two weeks. It was home nursing injuries. It's his first match back here tonight. And being the first one to hit the steel cage is not going to go well for him. But of course, Mustafa Ali is tough and he will dig down deep. A man who we have kind of ignited as the heart and the soul sometimes of the WWE. As Ali, look at this. Sunset flip to Rollins. We're gonna put Seth Rollins away there, but it ain't just about winning for Mustafa Ali tonight. Because that is something he has done over Seth Rollins a number of times over the last couple of months. It's constantly win over the Messiah. Tonight for Mustafa Ali is about revenge over Seth Rollins after Rollins took this rivalry to a personal level a number of weeks ago. For Seth Rollins though, it's about putting Mustafa Ali out for good. Ali, wait a minute here. Look at that sending Seth Rollins face first into the steel cage. A measure of payback for the assault a number of weeks ago. Two men with different vendettas going in this one. As we were mentioning, it's all for Seth Rollins about putting Mustafa Ali out for good and finally being able to prove that he can beat Mustafa Ali. And whether that's prove it to himself or prove it to the WWE Universe, he wants to do it one way or another. Rollins with that ripcord knee. We don't know the extent of Mustafa Ali's injuries from a couple of weeks ago. We don't know if there was a measure of a concussion or what. We just know Ali was banged up. It moves like that. Oh, wait a minute. Ali trying to send Rollins into the cage here. Rollins able to block it. And Rollins here going to look. Suplex, no. Falcon Arrow sends Mustafa Ali down on the mat. But again, we don't know the move. The extent of Mustafa Ali's injuries from a number of weeks ago. We know he was banged up leaving the arena that night. He's basically sentenced to, to bed rest for a number of weeks as Rollins goes into the cover on Mustafa Ali, trying to put him away here, but Ali gets the shoulder up. And I'm sure Mustafa Ali, in his mind, isn't going to be looking to end this thing right away as Rollins comes from the top with the elbow drop to the back. And you got to think for Seth Rollins, as much as he wants to defeat Mustafa Ali once and for all and prove that he can defeat him here tonight, I'm sure Rollins at the same time in some cold and calculated way, wants to beat the hell out of Mustafa Ali to truly put him on the shelf for good here tonight. And Mustafa Ali, nice swinging neck breaker to take Rollins off his feet. And remember, these two were set for just a one-on-one -on -one singles matchup here tonight. Just a straight-up wrestling match, but it was that attack in the locker room, or excuse me, backstage in the interview position a number of weeks ago. It was after that that this match was issued to be inside a steel cage so there'd be nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And we'd finally get a solid winner here tonight. And we mentioned it on Monday Night Raw this past week. We've mentioned it a number of times, but this match here tonight, not the normal steel cage rules. No escape in this contest. The cage is there to simply keep these men inside to determine one true winner and one true loser. This match must end by pinfall or submission here tonight. Ali looking good off that super kick and a number of offense. Now going to come from the middle rope and hits the splash on Rollins. Stop Ali starting to battle back against Rollins as far, who's been the aggressor for the majority of this contest. Ali's got him up. It sends him down to the canvas below. A little bit of innovative offense from Mustafa Ali. Ali sending Rollins into the corner. Again, for Ali, this is about getting payback from a number of weeks ago as Rollins is in a precarious predicament here. Ali coming from the top. Nice Frankensteiner sending Seth Rollins halfway across the ring. And now Ali's got something in mind. He's heading up. He's scaling the cage on the top rope. What's Ali going for? Goes for the elbow drop from a different position. Assisted from the steel cage, but Rollins got out of the way. And Rollins here grabbing a hold. Pedigree to Mustafa Ali. Rollins finally going to be able to put Ali down. But Ali gets the shoulder up. And Seth Rollins in disbelief, but he should know by now how tough Mustafa Ali is inside that ring. He's got another gear. He's got a second and a third gear that a lot of superstars do not have. That's why we refer to him as the heart and the soul many times in the WWE. And that is what has credited Mustafa Ali to beating Rollins in the past. Mustafa Ali, he defeated Seth Rollins all the way back in March in that number one contenders tournament. And as you saw in the video package prior to this contest, the next meeting between the two was that tag team matchup at the Backlash pay-per-view. We saw Mustafa Ali and Dominic Dijakovic take down Seth Rollins and his disciple Murphy. 
And of course, that Money in the Bank qualifying matchup a few weeks later. And Mustafa Ali won again. Rollins trying to put away Ali again here. Ali gets the shoulder up. And also remember, there's a six-man tag team matchup on main event. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Rollins. Curve stomp to Mustafa Ali. And that is going to do it for Seth Rollins here. No, Mustafa Ali is hanging in the fight. Ali digging down deep, kicking into another gear. That is what we refer to for Mustafa Ali, not looking to fall to Seth Rollins here tonight. After everything Ali has been through by the hands of Seth Rollins, if there's ever a night to get that victory, it's right here or right now at SummerSlam as Ali eats the turnbuckle. And Ali trying to bounce back with that drop kick, but Rollins sidesteps it here. Ali still got fighting him though. Hurricane Rana taking Seth Rollins off his feet. As we are mentioning, there was a six-man tag team matchup on main event about a month ago here as Mustafa Ali, once again, look at this, going to scale the cage. Rollins is getting to his feet. Ali drops the elbow and takes Seth Rollins off his feet. Impressive maneuver from Mustafa Ali. Ali springboard hits that senton. And that was another win for Mustafa Ali, that six-man tag team match on main event. Mustafa Ali, Mansoor, and the WWE Champion AJ Styles picked up the win over Austin Theory, Murphy, and Seth Rollins. So that's four losses in the book for Seth Rollins against Mustafa Ali. And Ali here, look at this, taking Rollins off his feet, nice maneuver. Again for Mustafa Ali, of course, he wants to get his hand raised tonight. Of course he wants to beat Seth Rollins again. But after Rollins took things to a personal level, Ali decides to do the same. Did you see the low blow there? Not something you usually see out of Mustafa Ali, but after everything these men have been through, Ali's looking for payback, and now he's locking in that Koji clutch, dead center of the ring. Rollins with nowhere to go, low blow, followed by a submission. Ali has tapped out Seth Rollins to this maneuver before. But this time, Rollins has a way out of it, able to elbow Mustafa Ali right in the corner of the eye there. And again, Mustafa Ali has put Seth Rollins away with that Koji plus before back in their initial meeting back in March. Ali headed to the top, drops the elbow on Rollins. And he's going to follow it up with the cover here. And oh, with Seth Rollins at 2.9 getting the shoulder up there. That was a close call for the Messiah. You can't imagine how Seth Rollins is going to react here if he takes a fifth loss in a row to Mustafa Ali. As Rollins bounces up with the swing blade. And Ali bounces up with the clothesline. These guys are reaching a fire under them right now. Rollins down, Mustafa Ali is game planning his next maneuver. He wants to get that victory, but he wants to beat the hell out of Seth Rollins and gain his payback in doing so. As wait a minute, Rollins here grabbing a hold. Mustafa Ali eats the knee right to the ribs. Rollins going for the cover. He could have just knocked the wind out of Ali long enough, but Ali gets the shoulder up. Ali's got to be careful here, man. He's taking a lot of big-time maneuvers from Rollins. Rollins, look at this. Grappled up Mustafa Ali. Sending him down to the canvas. It was only a few minutes ago in this contest for Rollins. He hit that pedigree. Just a few moments later, he hit that curb stomp from Mustafa Ali. Ali's also eating the canvas, or excuse me, eating the cage in this matchup. He's definitely got some damage put on him. Not saying that Rollins doesn't either. But Ali has definitely taken the more impactful maneuvers in this contest. As Rollins, look at that! Forearm to the back of the head. And that might have knocked Ali out cold for good. Rollins not able to put away Ali yet. Remember that forearm to the back of the head was one of the maneuvers that knocked Ali out in the backstage area a number of weeks ago. And again, we don't know the degree of Mustafa Ali's injuries on that night as he takes down Rollins with the Tornado DDT. But any shots to the neck and head area has got to be wary on Mustafa Ali. Again, we don't know if he was diagnosed with any sort of concussion or if it was just a couple of bumps and bruises, but nonetheless, he's of course been cleared here to compete tonight against Seth Rollins, but as we talked about, we don't know the extent of his injuries here as Mustafa Ali is feeling it right now against the Messiah. Ali grabbing a hold. Rollins is dazed here. This could be the opportunity for Mustafa Ali to put Seth Rollins away for good. Look at this. Wraps around. Nice swing out DDT. 
And Rollins is down. Mustafa Ali yet again in this contest is heading up to the top. He's eyeing up Rollins. Mustafa Ali with the big time splash from the top. Almost superfly Jimmy Snuka style in the cage. Ali springboard hits that senton again. And Rollins has got to be worried here, man. Ali is really starting to kick into a new gear and hit some of that high exhilarating offense. Rollins has had a lot of time to prepare for this matchup and study what went wrong against Mustafa Ali on the previous occasions. He's got to be wary of Mustafa Ali's best offense. He got out of that Koji clutch earlier, so clearly Rollins has done his homework. Mustafa Ali hit that Frankenstein earlier in this matchup. Rollins making sure he can't hit it again and takes him out with the basic but yet effective DDT. Rollins eyeing up Mustafa Ali. Oh, could have been looking maybe for a pedigree there. But Mustafa Ali caught it, but Rollins instead able to hit him with that Instaguri. Now Ali has absolutely got a couple marbles loose at the moment. Down on the knee, Seth Rollins go behind. Oh, what a kick to the back of the head. And if all the previous maneuvers didn't knock out Ali, that might have been the final blow. But Ali somehow, some way, Gets the shoulder off the canvas yet again. And Mustafa Ali has got a fire lit under him here tonight. After being at home watching Seth Rollins the last number of weeks. Remember Rollins is coming into this match with a win this past Monday night alongside Murphy in that tag team matchup against AJ Styles and Edge. Rollins with the momentum coming in here tonight. And Mustafa Ali is coming in just with the fire and the rage against Rollins as he hits that big time signature drop kick does Ali and Rollins has got to be in trouble here man Mustafa Ali is kicking into a new gear Rollins is down Mustafa Ali is heading up to the second rope yet again hits a splash that's multiple dives here Rollins could have a broken rib throughout this contest oh five four for Mustafa Ali and Mustafa Ali puts the final nail on the canvas of this long and hard road against the Messiah Seth Rollins. A story that we have watched written over the last number of months. Here tonight, June 26, the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. The biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. Mustafa Ali finally beats Seth Rollins for the fifth time, but this time the most personal of them all. What a fight. Mustafa Ali digging down deep and brings the fight to Seth Rollins more than he ever has before with maneuvers like that. Here is your winner, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali wins yet again. This time the most personal as he gains his revenge against the Messiah Seth Rollins for all the attacks a number of weeks ago. Where does the Messiah go from here after another loss to Mustafa Ali? But now that Mustafa Ali has put Seth Rollins in his pass, what is next for Ali in his path here in the WWE? What a fight. He survives the steel cage here at SummerSlam. Is AJ Styles handing over the WWE Championship for the last time in this reign? He has held the gold before. He has lost the gold before. He doesn't want to go back down that road of chasing the championship yet again. Will that title still belong to the phenomenal AJ Styles? Will we leave Phoenix here tonight? Or will Edge become a 12-time world champion? We are going to find out right now as the main event of SummerSlam is underway. Edge in the red. AJ Styles in the white. And the gold is up for grabs as AJ goes down early against the Rated R Superstar. And again for Edge, this is not about just winning the WWE Championship tonight. He has had a Hall of Fame career with a list of accolades a mile long. He's held every championship he possibly can here in the WWE. Every accolade you could think of for Edge. Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania main events. Edge has done it all in the squared circles. AJ Styles with a springboard moonsault going for the cover on Edge. AJ not getting the win just yet. But again, that is what is on the line for Edge as well. It is about defeating 
AJ Styles proving that he can get that win over the phenomenal one at this stage in his career. As AJ is going to the top rope early, this is where AJ succeeds, goes for the crossbody, miscalculates it there, and that's going to give the momentum right back to the Rated R Superstar. Edge goes for a shot, AJ able to take him down. Remember AJ Styles, he knows that he can beat AJ Styles, or excuse me, he knows that he can beat Edge. For Edge, I'm sure he has watched their WrestleMania rematch back numerous times. Trying to study the phenomenal one, especially at this stage in his career, as he is the man in WWE. AJ Styles bringing a little bit of brutality to this matchup in the early minutes, beaten down on the Rated R Superstar. We've seen Edge, or excuse me, we've seen Edge in some wars as of late. He's back on May the 2nd. Where he was able to defeat five other competitors in that Money in the Bank ladder match where he pulled down the briefcase that you saw him make his way to the ring with here tonight. The briefcase that Edge is now handed over, hence the reason he is getting this championship opportunity right here, right now. We've seen Edge in recent weeks defeat Damian Priest on Monday Night Raw in a very physical altercation. And again, this past Monday night, we saw Edge and AJ Styles be forced to team up. And evidently, AJ Styles wasn't interested for a moment tried coming back to save Edge, but in the end, Seth Rollins and Murphy took advantage of the split team of the Rated R Superstar and the Phenomenal One, and were able to score the victory over Edge on that night. AJ eyeing up AJ Styles here and takes him off his feet with the sweet chin music. AJ goes down, Edge into the cover, new champion. AJ gets the shoulder up. You know, as we've gone throughout this night here at SummerSlam, Five championships on the line, and so far, every single title in the WWE has changed hands. AJ's heading to the top. Look at this. AJ, look at that. Corkscrew from the top rope. And Edge, they have just got the wind knocked out of him here. AJ dragging Edge away from the rope. Smart to make sure there's not a rope break. AJ going into the cover. Edge gets the shoulder up. AJ working over Edge here, but again, as we were mentioning, the WWE Championships, all of them have been on the line here tonight, and all of them have changed hands thus far. Ricochet becoming the new Cruiserweight Champion. Dominic and Rey Mysterio bringing home the World Tag Team Championships. Pete Dunne becoming the new Intercontinental Champion. And as you just saw in our co-main event, the Women's Championship changing hands twice in one night. Short-lived championship reign for Shotzi. You got a feel for the woman after her, how hard she worked. But of course, it is the nature of the Money in the Bank contract. And Asuka cashing in successfully over Shotzi to become the new WWE Women's Champion moments ago. Will Lightning strike twice in the same night with double Money in the Bank cash-ins here. AJ looking to make sure that does not happen on his watch. But Edge gets the shoulder up. And remember, if Edge loses this match here, that's it. He loses the chance at cashing in that Money in the Bank contract. And he's looking to lose his chance at the WWE Championship as AJ Styles has got that calf crusher locked in on Edge. And AJ able to break it early, and that is very pivotal for the Rated R Superstar, especially the later this match goes, does not want to be limping around on one leg. As Edge, look at that, nice drop kick, sends the phenomenal one to the outside of the ring. AJ down. Edge going to follow him out to the outside. Look at that, Edge just sending AJ right to the barricade, getting physical here in the first couple of minutes of this WWE Championship main event. What a night it has been here at SummerSlam while the brawl continues at ringside. I want to thank everybody that has joined us here tonight for the SummerSlam pay-per-view. A night we are never going to forget, Sunday night, June 26th, right here in Phoenix, Arizona. It has been a historic night, one of the best nights we have had thus far. As Edge taking down AJ Styles, of course, the Rated R Superstar. He can't win the championship on the outside of the ring, but he can certainly do some damage on the Phenomenal One. However, a situation like this definitely favors the champion here as AJ takes Edge over on the outside. As we mentioned, it definitely favors the champion here. AJ could absolutely retain the championship via count out if he wanted to. Now, I don't believe Edge. Wait a minute here. AJ's got him in a predicament. Look at that. 
AJ Styles with that reverse fireman's carry, sending Edge down for a ride right out here in front of us at ringside. But as I was going to mention, I don't believe AJ Styles would want to pick up the victory that way. Defeating Edge via count out here. He's beaten Edge in the past. He knows he can get the job done. And I'm sure he wants to get it done yet again. And AJ taking his eye off the ball. And Edge sends him for a ride. Flying off the apron. WWE Champion down. Edge goes for the axe hammer. But AJ too quick. Gets away of Edge. Edge trying to follow here. AJ back out. We're getting the brawl once again here at ringside. AJ grabs a hold. Or excuse me, Edge does. And sends AJ into the barricade. And wait a minute here. Edge is clearing off the announce table. The Rated R Superstar's got something in mind. And he takes AJ out with the kick. It's another kick in this contest. He's hit that move a few minutes ago. A couple more of those, and AJ's going to be knocked out for good, and we're going to be leaving Phoenix with a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. AJ trying to fight back and make sure he doesn't get put in that precarious situation that Edge may have been planning, clearing off the announce table. But Edge, look at that! Locking a hold of the phenomenal WWE Champion. Sends it for that German suplex and now comes flying off the apron with that clothesline. And Edge, you see, he keeps breaking the count here. He's clearly got something in mind on the outside of the ring as he hits AJ Styles with that axe hammer. Edge knows he can't win the WWE Championship on the outside of the squared circle, but he could certainly do some damage over the current champion himself. As he's continuing to beat down the WWE Champion. AJ is down right now. And definitely in a situation with Edge on his tails. Now, wait a minute, look at this. Right out here in front of the announce table, AJ Styles face plants due to the hands of the Rated R Superstar. Edge grabbing a hold, going to elect to send AJ back to the ring. Absolutely did a number of these last few moments or so on the outside of the ring. AJ's got to be feeling it off the attack. He must smell the sense of urgency after that insecurity from AJ Styles as he takes Edge out with that neck breaker. Very interesting match since the opening bell and interesting strategies from both of these men as AJ Styles takes out Edge with one of his signature strikes. It almost seems like the strategies thus far for AJ Styles to try to out-wrestle and defeat AJ Styles that way. Or she means defeat Edge as he once again sends Edge for a ride off that reverse fireman's carry. And that may be enough to keep the champion down. AJ going into the cover of the challenger, but Edge gets the shoulder up. As we were mentioning, seemingly the strategies thus far from what we can put together is that AJ Styles... Looks like he's trying to out wrestle, a, or excuse me, out wrestle Edge and defeat him that way. Edge, on the other hand, clearly coming out with a more brawling mentality here tonight. Maybe he believes he can't out wrestle AJ Styles. And AJ Styles, wait a minute, goes for the phenomenal forearm and he hits it. Edge may be knocked out cold. AJ into the cover off the forearm here. Oh, Edge gets the shoulder up at the very last second. And AJ Styles was. Damn near close to retaining the championship there. Edge tried knocking AJ's balance loose, hitting the ropes, but AJ had already springed off, hit the air, and was able to change the trajectory to hit that phenomenal forearm. Oh, and I believe Edge has been busted wide open. I'm not sure if it was off the forearm or off that knee that Edge, or should be AJ hit moments later, but regardless, the challenger is bleeding from the forehead here, and that is not gonna go well as we get into the championship rounds in this main event contest. And you almost smell the sense of urgency from the Rated R Superstar here as he just got hit with that phenomenal forearm and now he's bleeding from the forehead. AJ on the second, or excuse me, Edge on the second rope. Look at that! Spear off the second rope, a different angle, takes AJ off his feet and AJ gets the shoulder up. We've seen Edge hit that maneuver in recent weeks, he hit that second rope spear to Damian Priest a number of weeks ago. And I believe we mentioned it then, and we'll mention it now. It's an effective maneuver, and it's a different angle off Edge's usual spear. And because of that different angle, it may not be as impactful as Edge's finishing maneuver spear. But something like that will definitely be enough to knock out your opponent. Elevated DDT by the challenger. As Edge sends AJ into the corner, and ever since Edge has been busted wide open... As we mentioned, 
And we'll say it again, you smell the sense of urgency out of Mr. Money in the Bank. As he has been in control since that moment, and he's stomping away on the WWE Champion here. Edge shifting the momentum to the corner of himself, to the corner of the Rated R Superstar. Looking to prove, as we've mentioned all throughout tonight, that he can beat AJ Styles, and that he become a 12-time World Champion. Edge off that knee and a nice clothesline. I believe off that knee, AJ Styles as well has been cut open. And if the battle wounds don't show anything, it should definitely show the fight. And these men to leave here tonight is the WWE Champion. Anything it takes at any and all costs to walk out of the biggest party of the summer and one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year with the most prestigious gold in the business. Edges down, AJ Styles backing control of this main event affair. Nice backbreaker, follows it up with a quick neckbreaker. The Rated R Superstar goes down. Now Edge fighting back. It's almost as if both men literally are smelling blood in the water on the other opponent. They try to strike and why the iron's hot. AJ fighting back, you see the momentum. As we've seen in a couple of our matches here tonight at SummerSlam, the momentum shifting back and forth. And Edge now pulls AJ in with the backbreaker. A simple yet effective move for Mr. Money in the Bank here. Edge once again goes to the second rope and he drops an elbow. Not a move you see a lot out of Edge, but it's a move that could be awarding him the undisputed championship here and AJ gets the shoulder up. Man, what a match this has been. And we're definitely getting into some deep waters here in our main event for the WWE Championship. AJ back in control. And wait a minute, wait a minute here. AJ Styles, he's in the corner eyeing up Edge. AJ Styles just used Edge's own spear. And oh man, that was almost it. AJ Styles almost putting the Rated R Superstar away with his own damn maneuver, going for the phenomenal forearm here, but Edge getting out of the predicament. And man, what a, what a finish to this contest. And talk about adding insult to injury. If AJ would have won this contest via that spear on Edge there, if Edge would have lost to AJ Styles with his own move being used against him. And that's something we've seen AJ Styles use in the past. Remember all the way back to March, and AJ was making his way through that number one contenders tournament to originally qualify to earn a shot at the WWE Championship. We saw AJ use the moves of Ricochet as well as Damian Priest against those opponents. As AJ Styles with that brain buster on Edge. Edge trying to fire up here, go after the phenomenal one, but Edge gets his momentum taken out from under him. You see the Rated R Superstars trying to fight. And use every ounce of energy and adrenaline in his soul. Goes for the phenomenal forearm. Luckily, Edge gets out of the way. Misses for his own maneuver. And Edge takes down AJ. Trying to slow down the trajectory of this matchup at the moment. And you see Edge's plan. Ever since he got hit with that phenomenal forearm earlier. He's been trying to... Originally, it looked like take the balance of AJ Styles away. AJ Styles clearly found a way out of that. And now twice in a row, he has avoided... The phenomenal forearm, AJ's best maneuver, the maneuver that won him the WWE Championship back at Backlash. They're trying to sidestep AJ Styles by any means necessary. And AJ may be knocked out, Edge just hit a couple of those headbutts. Forehead to forehead, battle wound to battle scars. AJ's back now, and AJ is once again, AJ is clearly wants to hit that elbow, because he knows if he hits one more, excuse me, that forearm, he knows one more, that could be it. That could be the exclamation point he needs. The Rated R Superstar once again tapping into those deeper waters. Going forehead to forehead out of those brutal headbutts to the phenomenal AJ Styles. Sends him into the corner and AJ, just the energy being taken out of him in this championship matchup. AJ Styles is down. Edge has got something in mind here. Rated R Superstars eyeing up the WWE Champion. There's AJ Styles. Wait a minute. AJ taking out the calf. Edge bounces up. Both men go for strikes. Both men missing. Edge follows it up with a super kick. AJ goes for the... Excuse me. Edge goes for the elbow. 
AJ got out of the way, but this time Edge hits the forearm. You feel the intensity of this main event contest right now. And there's the knee that has taken AJ off his feet multiple times. Edge is into the corner. AJ's in her predicament. The spear. The champion's down. And the championship belongs to the rated R superstar. For the 12th time in his Hall of Fame career. And for the third time, he has successfully cashed in the money in the bank. And your new undisputed WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World. Edge takes down the phenomenal AJ Styles here tonight at Phoenix. My God, what a hell of a main event. Edge surviving everything AJ threw at him here tonight. An onslaught from the phenomenal one. But it only took one spear for the rated R superstar to Here's get his way. And the new WWE Champion, the rated R superstar, Edge. After everything Edge has been through, he gets the victory back over AJ Styles. And after the long, hard fought road over the last few years since returning to the WWE, Edge is once again the WWE Champion. Today has been historic. Sunday, June 26th will go down in the record books. Thank you for joining us here at SummerSlam. Edge leaves Phoenix, the new WWE Champion. Thank you and good night from Phoenix. Back in 2006, right here on main event, or excuse me, right here on Saturday night's main event for the WWE Championship. The title is not on the line here tonight. Cena will get his opportunity along with three other superstars in 24 hours, but the bell has sounded, and we are underway with this epic main event contest. John Cena versus Edge. This is going to be a good one here in this main event. Both men looking to build momentum, looking to roll into Seattle tomorrow night on a hot streak. And Edge, as we mentioned, he has yet to be defeated ever since he made his return after a short hiatus. That was prior to Money in the Bank. Edge defeated Drew McIntyre in the Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. Won the Money in the Bank contract, of course, back in Philadelphia. And successfully cashed in that briefcase against the phenomenal AJ Styles at SummerSlam. It was a match of the year candidate between those two men. Edge, as we mentioned, has also been victorious in recent history. He owns a victory over Damian Priest on Monday Night Raw. A month and some change ago, and the last time we saw him in action was that tag team matchup with him and John Cena defeating Austin Theory and Omos on the roll after SummerSlam. And as we mentioned, for John Cena, up until this past week on Raw, he had been nothing short of successful. The tag team victory that we talked about, a singles win over Austin Theory at SummerSlam, a win over Omos on Thursday night's main event. John Cena just lost in the chaos of Raw this past week. And that matchup against Mustafa Ali. Of course, as Cena was making his way to the ring, Austin Theory, a man who has been in the thorn in the side of John Cena over the last month, attacking Cena prior to the bell. Cena got rid of Theory, sent him packing to the back, then had to refocus against Mustafa Ali. But if you remember this past Monday night on Raw, it was, it was chaos at ringside and... During the matchup between John Cena and Mustafa Ali, his cameras were cut into the crowd as Edge and AJ Styles evidently broke into a brawl in the backstage area, which bled out into the crowd. Edge put AJ Styles through a table out in the audience. AJ laid out Edge on the concrete by the stage. It was all out chaos, closing Monday Night Raw this past week. All five men in the WWE Championship match, tensions are certainly high. Coming up for that five man elimination challenge tomorrow night. And of course it will be. Last man standing leaves with the WWE Championship of the World. And elimination is only going to occur by pinfall or submission. No disqualifications in that contest. And Edge is down. Cena coming for the top rope there. A little bit of a five-knuckle shuffle variation for the franchise. And these two men know each other so well. They have faced off so many times throughout their career, as we mentioned. This is our second time facing off in the history of Saturday night's main event. But that's just one of so many matches between these two men. 
Think back to the first time Edge cashed in the Money in the Bank contract back in January of 2006. Who did he defeat on that night? John Cena to become the WWE Champion. Cena, of course, taking the title back a couple of weeks later at the Royal Rumble. Defeating Edge on that night. Wasn't the last time in 2006 that those two men crossed paths. Remember back at SummerSlam in John Cena's hometown of Boston in 2006 where Edge defeated John Cena on that night to retain the WWE Championship. Of course, a month later, John Cena defeated Edge in Edge's hometown of Toronto to become the new WWE Champion. Wait a minute here, Cena, look at that power bomb to Edge over the top rope, sending him to the outside. We're sitting here talking about the history. Clearly, we need to talk about the now because Cena is taking the fight to the Reddit R Superstar. And man, these two men do not want to risk injury with Extreme Rules coming up tomorrow. But Cena is not looking to take another loss here tonight. Talk about bringing the fight to the Rated R Superstar. They're sending him flying out of the ring, over the top rope, down to the floor below here in Portland. Now Edge, sense of urgency there. Doesn't want to keep the fight on the outside. Nice shot to John Cena to get the momentum back momentarily. Catch a breath for the Rated R Superstar. Cena back in the ring and Edge coming at John. And again, talking about the history between these two men. Really the rivalry of the year almost in the year of 2006. Think about all the other times these two men for the World Heavyweight Championship. These two men fought in 2009 at Backlash in a last man standing match where Edge was victorious on that night. They've really traded a lot of wins throughout their careers between Edge and John Cena. So many matches on Monday Night Raw all over the years as well. So much writing, so much history. And I think at this point in these men's careers, there's absolutely a mutual respect between John Cena and Edge. With certainly respect not outweighing the competition between these two men, especially when the WWE Championship will be on the line tomorrow night. And it may not be on the line right here, right now, but with the road to Seattle coming to a screeching halt in just 24 hours, it's all about building that last minute momentum. John Cena dazed here, the rated R superstar, scouting his opponent. Nice shot there by Edge. What a night it has been here on Saturday night's main event, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us thus far in this live premiere special on the road to Extreme Rules. Seeing Shelton Benjamin pick up the win over Damian Priest here tonight. Rhea Ripley defeating the debuting Sarai. And of course, moments ago, Apollo Crews with the Debuting Commander Aziz. Pick up the win over the debuting Rick Boogs. A lot of fresh faces on the card here tonight, but certainly no mistaking with these two legends here in our main event. Edge already a Hall of Famer. Coming back out of retirement a few years ago, one of his goals was to become the WWE Champion yet again. He accomplished that dream. And he defeated... The phenomenal AJ Styles at SummerSlam. Meanwhile, John Cena, I think, is going for the AA here, but Edge cutting him off just at the last second. And that could have spelled the end for the WWE Champion had John Cena laid him out with that attitude adjustment. You saw Cena. Smelled some blood in the water. The Radar Superstar, that just goes back to how well these two men knew each other. Had that move scouted, knew exactly what to do to counter it. Meanwhile, Cena's down. Edge could be looking for the spear here. Edge going for the spear. Oh, Cena with the counter. And John Cena countering Edge's big time move into the DDT. Cena into the cover on the radar. Superstar, but Edge gets the shoulder up. And you feel the momentum of this matchup. The atmosphere shifting to a new level. Edge had the AA scouted. Cena had the spear scouted. And now we're back out here with the brawl. And Cena is sending Edge over the top rope again. And that's a back-to-back -back fall in this contest. Edge eating the floor here. And Cena using his strength to his advantage. The brawl getting taken to the outside. And the Rated R Superstar is certainly in trouble as the franchise is in control of your main event here tonight. John Cena working over the WWE Champion. As we mentioned, these two know each other so well, had each other's 
Big time exclamation point finishing maneuver scouted. You got to think if these men have anything up their sleeves, something to throw their opponents off guard here tonight. And Cena's tactic may just be the brawling on the outside, so we've seen him do it a few times. Edge taking down John Cena here. Look at this. Sending Cena right into the announce table. And Edge knows how to brawl himself. Now wait a minute, Cena here. Cena has got something in mind. Cena's clearing off the announce table. He's got to watch his back though because the WWE Champion's coming from behind and a neck break around on the floor. And Edge breaking the count. Or Edge is heading back out to the outside now. And Edge with a shot to John Cena. And Cena's dates. Edge taking advantage of that exposed announce table and throwing Cena's gut right into it. John Cena's got to be careful he's not put through the table that he revealed there. But Edge throwing him back into the ring. Now Radar Superstar's got something on his mind in this contest. Go for a super kick it looked like there. Cena dodged it and there he hits it. First time doesn't work, second time's a charm. And I'm going to follow it up with a couple of stiff headbutts by the Radar Superstar. And these two men tearing down the house here tonight in Portland. What a main event this has been. Edge now sending John Cena to the corner. The WWE Champion's feeling it here. He's got something in mind. As John Cena's down. Wait a minute. Edge could be looking. Big time swinging neck breaker from the middle rope down to the canvas below. And Cena's got a history of neck problems. That could be... What well, leads to the victory here, but Cena gets the shoulder up. Yeah, that was a big time maneuver. Swinging neck breaker from that rope. That's a big time fall for Cena. Wait a minute, Cena dodges Edge's clothesline. And the franchise pulling out some of those five moves of doom for Edge here tonight. Edge is down. Cena's going into the cover. Looks like he thinks he's got this match where he wants, but the WWE Champion gets the shoulder up. Now Cena's feeling it here, man. You smell it. Now look at this, Cena with Edge. Power bomb down to the canvas. Edge taking another huge fall in this contest as John Cena's heading somewhere where we don't see him too often. Leg drop from the top rope by the franchise. Now Cena's feeling good, but Edge, look at that sense of urgency there Harry's up that super kick now Harry into the top rope goes the champion edge coming big time macho man elbow drop from the top rope right to the heart of the Saint nation but John Cena gets the shoulder up and this is a main event talk about a Saturday night's main event an historic event in WWE history returning here tonight you can't think of two better men to throw in the showcase contest in the WWE Champion and the franchise of the company. And Cena's looking worse for wear right now. Edge dropping that knee right on the back of the franchise. And the WWE Champion scaling the ropes and drops another inverted elbow drop. Man, you gotta wonder what condition these two men are gonna be in come Extreme Rules just 24 hours from now. These guys are leaving it all on the table here tonight. No one wants to risk injury, but no one wants to risk defeat as Cena lays down Edge once more. And Edge is in trouble. Wait a minute, Cena's got something in mind. John Cena looking for the STFU. Edge has tapped out to this maneuver in the past. Will he do so again? He's dead center of the ring, and Cena's got that stranglehold in on the WWE Champion. And Edge breaking it with the elbow. Another one there, taking Cena off his back. And Cena may be knocked a little loose there. Edge sending him over the top rope. And what a matchup we are seeing out of John Cena and Edge right now. Edge barely surviving that STF there. The fight spills back out to the outside here in Portland. And AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Mustafa Ali got to love what they're seeing right now. Just watching these two men pick each other apart just 24 hours before the WWE Championship will be on the line. Cena eating the barricade. Wait a minute, Edge. Look at this. Back drop right on the top of the barricade. And that is steel with very thin padding. Cena eating it right to the back. 
And Edge could just be looking for the count out victory here. These guys are in deep waters in this contest at this point. I think any means necessary to get the victory. Cena getting back in. Edge trying to stay on the offense though. John Cena may be in trouble, man. This has been all Edge the last number of minutes. As Cena goes face first and the Rated R Superstar is back in the corner. Edge is looking for the spear and he hits it flush. The WWE Champion with the spear. Oh, but John Cena kicks out at the very last second. The heart of the C Nation staying alive here on Saturday Night's main event. I don't think Edge can believe it. And Cena's down dead center of the ring. Edge is heading to the top rope. Oh man, this is not good for neither of these men. The deeper this goes in this contest, and did you see the counter from John Cena? Edge was going for a clothesline, maybe even a crossbody. Cena catching him in that power slam there. And Cena, emergency cover from the franchise. And the WWE Champion scraping his shoulder barely off the canvas. Now Cena, trying to stay alive here. He's got Edge where he wants him, at least momentarily. He survived the spear, he countered the offense. But now it's time for John Cena to showcase his talents. The WWE Champion's down. Remember we talked about Edge hasn't taken a loss in a number of months. And he certainly doesn't want to do so on the eve of a WWE Championship defense. Oh, that's a nice shot there. I'll see the counter. Wait a minute. Cena reversed. Attitude adjustment out of nowhere. Cena to the cover. John Cena has picked up the victory here tonight. My God, these men tearing the roof off the joint here at Saturday night's main event. John Cena handing the WWE Champion his first loss in months and momentum back on the side of the franchise. And respect being shown where it's due. Shaking the hands between these two men after they tore down the house tonight. But they will be opponents just 24 hours from now. Tasma took another loss to Ricochet the Swerve and the returning Hurricane Helms. Which originally put Swerve in this contest. But again, with that concussion and sideline here tonight, we now have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. The one and only Ricochet. Santos Escobar. The first man to climb the ladder will leave with the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Our fourth match here this evening, our second championship matchup. And you just know that these two men are going to leave everything and everything inside of that ring. All to take home the Cruiserweight Championship that Ricochet again fought so hard to earn that championship opportunity. Made his way through the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator a number of months ago. Then challenging Isaiah Swerve Scott in the number one contenders matchup. Picking up the win there. And a hard fought victory over Santos at SummerSlam. And for Santos Escobar, tonight is about getting that one on one rematch that he wanted originally. But again, after that six man tag team matchup, Isaiah picking up the win over Santos Escobar in that contest. That is what put Isaiah Swerve Scott in this matchup originally. And again, the Swerve will get a Cruiserweight Championship opportunity upon his return. But tonight, all roads have led now to this SummerSlam rematch between the one and only and the leader of Legado del Fantasma as Ricochet comes from the top with the Hurricane Rana. And that high-flying offense that not only does the Cruiserweight division do so well, but the one and only Ricochet may be one of, if not the best in the world at doing so. That is what led to Ricochet taking home the gold at SummerSlam. With ladders into play tonight, you never know what is going to happen. Ricochet getting caught with that bicycle kick from Santos. And now Escobar's got a ladder. He's bringing it into the ring. Ricochet's got one in hand. And you got to watch when the steel is in play because you never know what's going to happen. Ricochet coming at Santos with a nice neck breaker there. First man to climb the ladder and retrieve the gold. Leaves the Cruiserweight Champion, the Champion Ricochet, the Challenger Santos Escobar. But it ain't as easy as it sounds. It is a challenge to climb the ladder, stay on the ladder, and pull down the gold while your opponent is incapacitated enough and not able to pull you off. These men got to be careful of the falls 
that could take place on the steel ladders as well as off of the steel ladders. A very dangerous situation here tonight at Extreme Rules. The caution will be thrown in the wind with a chance to leave with the Cruiserweight Championship. And what a kick from Santos El Escobar. And just a situation of position inside of that ring. That ladder fell on Ricochet. And now Escobar, this is smart strategy here. Looking to take out the knee of Ricochet. Can't put him away with a, a tap out in this one to win the matchup. He can certainly take out the legs. Cause Ricochet not being able to climb. And what a fall away neck breaker again. This time Escobar catching the end of that ladder. Man, just the ladders just being involved in that ring as these men basically look to out-wrestle each other in the early moments of this matchup, already causing damage. As Escobar with a snap suplex. And both these men are precariously close to that ladder. A moment to go off that maneuver. Escobar setting up the ladder, middle of the ring. He's going to be the first to climb here. And this is where things get interesting. Ricochet's going to follow him up. Escobar's got his hands on the championship gold. But Ricochet's right there trying to combat him. Ricochet losing his balance there. Now he's trying to hurry back up. Escobar has got to watch the champion here. Wait a minute. Ricochet throwing Santos Escobar off. Escobar taking the first fall. Ricochet now. It's not as easy as it looks to pull down that championship, he gotta uncuff it, unlock it, excuse me, and unhook the championship that's hanging precariously above the arena here tonight. Ricochet's got his hands, he's trying to undo it. Santos Escobar now racing back up to the rugs of that ladder. And Ricochet trying to eat those punches, but Escobar laying him in, flushing out. Ricochet takes the fall. Ricochet's down, you know, he's gonna. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. From the top, Escobar! What a super fly splash! Escobar knew Ricochet wasn't gonna get it, wasn't gonna go down without a fight, throwing a caution into the wind with that splash there. But Ricochet, you wanna talk about just trying to absorb the pain and get back into this matchup, now meets Escobar back on the rugs. Oh, what a kick, Ricochet. And Escobar goes down off the kick. Oh, wait a minute. Ricochet's now heading to the top of the ladder. Oh, my God. You got to be kidding me. Shooting star press from the heavens from the one and only. And you hear the crowd here in Seattle. Oh, wait a minute. Ricochet, not again. Not again. The shooting star press was enough. Now he's eyeing up something else. Oh, my goodness. And now going back to the top rope. 6.30! My God! I'm not gonna have a voice by the end of this night. Ricochet, you wanna talk throwing caution in the wind. Ricochet taking that expression to the fullest extent of shooting star press. That Huracan Ron of Frankensteiner. How the hell he landed that so flush off the top of the ladder? Be my guest to figure it out. Followed it up with a 6.30. Some tell Santos Escobar trying to scave to his feet there. And the Cruiserweight Champion knows how hard this match is going to be to pick up the victory. Trying to do everything he can to keep Escobar down. But wait a minute, Escobar! Knocking down the ladder. And Ricochet takes a fall. This time, not voluntarily. The ladder's back up. And to see how fast these two Cruiserweights scaling the rugs to try to get their hands on the gold that hangs above the ring here tonight. Man, you want to talk about the dangers of a ladder match? Look no further as Ricochet once again falls spine first on the canvas below. Escobar's got something in mind here. And a crossbody for the top of the ladder. These guys are using those ladders here tonight as bases to take to the air, taking high flying to a new level for the Cruiserweight Championship here at Extreme Rules. Escobar's got his hands. Ricochet making that ladder unbalanced. Now a chop goes for the kick. Escobar, but a watch here. Situation gets dangerous when both men are swinging on the ladder. Escobar goes down. Ricochet again has got his eyes on Escobar. Not again! Shooting star press! For the second time in this contest. My God, Ricochet just doesn't give a damn. 
No way is he going to do something else. Phoenix Splash and Santos Escobar got the knees up. How the hell are these men still standing? An average man will be down for the count and in the hospital at this point. But these two men are like gladiators out here tonight battling for the gold. My God, I don't even know what to say right now. As Escobar's got his hands on the Cruiserweight Championship, looking to become a three-time Cruiserweight Champion. Ricochet's back up. And the battle once again continues on the rugs of the ladder, and Escobar goes down. Santos Escobar is dazed. Ricochet now. I think he's trying to decide whether that's enough to keep Santos down and out for good. He's going to elect to try to pull down the Cruiserweight Championship. He's got a good opportunity here. Escobar's got a knee up. Now he's climbing up fast, trying to take Ricochet's eye off the ball. A couple of shots to the rib cage. I would say would be enough to keep any normal man down, but these men are not average men. Ricochet trying to knock Santos Escobar off with the kicks, but again, Escobar battles back. Back and forth we go here. Teeter-totter at the top of the ladder. Back and forth brawl. Oh, wait a minute. Santos Escobar. No way. Ricochet. That may be the exclamation point that sends the Cruiserweight Championship to the Legado del Fantasma family. That is a rib cage crushing maneuver. Somehow Ricochet kicks up. The ladder becomes unbalanced. Holy, what a forearm. Santos off the ladder. Ricochet again with the shove. Escobar. A fall from the heavens once more. And these guys, I don't even have the words right now to explain the insanity we are witnessing in this ladder match here this evening for the Cruiserweight Championship. And Ricochet pulls down the gold. These men getting the standing ovation they deserve here tonight in Seattle. The falls from the heavens that we just witnessed. The caution in the wind that these men threw. Sacrifice leads to reward. To the victor goes the spoils. Ricochet survives the ladder match and is leaving Seattle, Washington. Still your cruiserweight champion of the world. My God, what a ladder match. Austin Theory defending the championship for the very first time. But will Knight 1S champion be the only Knight as champion? Could Theory's first defense be holding the championship and handing it over for the very first and last time? This is a very interesting main event matchup we have on deck for you. A lot of writing between these two men and the gold that is at stake. But it is time for your main event. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Cena Theory WWE Championship. And of course, the news that we found out before this matchup, starting next week here on Monday Night Raw, the WWE Championship Eliminator gonna take place. Four men with momentum as of late and victories in the win column. Randy Orton, RVD, Drew McIntyre, Mustafa Ali, those four men gonna compete in a bit of a mini tournament to decide who is gonna be the next challenger, or I should say a future challenger for the WWE Championship. Whether that be Austin Theory, John Cena, or whoever will challenge for the championship at Judgment Day. But of course, next week it's going to be Drew McIntyre taking on Randy Orton in the first matchup in the Eliminator two weeks from now. It's going to be Mustafa Ali taking on Rob Van Dam in the second match of the Eliminator. And the winners of those two matches are going to move on to Judgment Day, fight one-on-one -on -one in a number one contender's contest. And from there, we will determine a future challenger for the WWE Championship. So... A lot of opportunity rolling around in the WWE right now for all four of those men who have been nothing short of successful as of late. Mustafa Ali, the only one who has got a loss in recent history. Of course, that came at extreme rules, but the track record of Ali, definitely in the win column, win-to-loss ratio, 
Mustafa Ali knows how to get his hand raised here on Raw. Speaking of Mustafa Ali, what about last week here on Raw when he picked up the victory over that man in the ring right there, John Cena? So definitely all four of those men, when you like the actions of some of them, a.k.a. Randy Orton or not, deserving to be in that eliminator. But only one man is going to be a future challenger for the WWE Championship. So are they going to be Orton, McIntyre, RBD, or Ali? We're going to find that out over the next couple of weeks into the Judgment Day pay-per-view. And of course, we have our WWE Championship match on deck right now. But who is going to be the man defending the WWE Championship at Judgment Day? Austin Theory or John Cena? And from what I understand, next week here on Monday Night Raw, we're going to find out who the number one contender is and who will challenge for the WWE Championship at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. So a lot of interesting news and exciting matchups coming up next week on Raw. Leading into our next Universe Mode pay-per-view Judgment Day, which is already looking like it's going to be an extraordinary event. The finals of the Eliminator plus a WWE Championship match is going to be signed for that pay-per-view. It's all going to kick off next week, but we focus on the here and the now. And that's the issues between John Cena and Austin Theory. Again, for Theory, his issue with John Cena has been not one but two losses. Theory wanted to prove that he was the future face of the WWE. He called out John Cena. Well before SummerSlam, John Cena accepted, made his return at the biggest party of the summer and knocked off Austin Theory. Well, it was a great matchup, but Austin Theory really didn't have nothing to be ashamed of on that night. He took the fight to John Cena. Just in the end, John Cena was the better man. And, of course, the next night on Monday Night Raw, we had ourselves a tag team matchup between John Cena and the Rated R Superstar Edge on one side of the ring, Austin Theory, and a tag team partner of his choosing, which ended up being the Colossal Omos, on the under end of the ring. And of course, on that night, John Cena and Edge picking up the tag team victory over Theory and Omos. It's Austin Theory suffering back-to-back -back losses to John Cena there. And ever since then, Austin Theory attacking John Cena, trying to take out the franchise. Kind of started with that after John Cena had a matchup on main event over the Colossal Omos. Cena picked up the win on that night. Theory jumping him afterwards, laying him out which then led us to a matchup on Monday Night Raw, which saw Austin Theory take on Mustafa Ali. John Cena sticking his nose in that match, delivering a chair shot to Theory, really up in the ante. Talk about wanting revenge and laying out Theory on that night, kind of aiding Mustafa Ali in victory on Monday Night Raw. And then last week here on Raw, Cena in the main event set to go one-on-one -on -one with Ali, but as Cena was making his way to the ring, Austin Theory... Running down the aisle, attacking John Cena from behind, issuing a beatdown on the franchise. Cena was able to fend him off for, after a few moments, but still, the attack and the damage was done. And Mustafa Ali ended up defeating John Cena. And hell, Cena already could have had a little damage done because of that attack from Theory. As Cena here is looking to get a little payback, five knuckle shuffle on Austin Theory. And Cena going into the cover. Are we going to see a new WWE Champion here 17 times? Not just yet. Here we get in the shoulder up, but that is the writing on this contest for John Cena and Austin Theory. The issues over the last month. And of course, both men were in the ring with each other on Extreme Rules. And Austin Theory outlasting John Cena in that matchup. Cena was eliminated by Edge. Austin Theory made it down to the final two with the Rated R Superstar. And Ended up walking out with the WWE Championship on that night. Austin Theory, call him what you wish. He may be the luckiest man in the world, or he may be the future of the WWE. We talk about it every time Theory's in the ring. He may be cocky, he may be arrogant. He may not know when to shut his mouth. But he certainly has all the tools to get it done from bell to bell, and he's proven that in the past. And sure, he hasn't gotten the job done over John Cena just yet. Hell, tonight could be that night. Only time will tell. But Theory's, at the end of the day, is the man with the gold right now, is the face of the WWE as its champion. It's time to prove that and prove his worth. Here tonight on Raw, Theory laying out Cena there. Could be looking for the count at victory. As talented as Theory is, I don't put a pass in to look for a count at or any, trying to, any kind of way to get the job done in this contest. Any means necessary for all day Theory. Cena now continuing to fight on the outside of the ring, and Theory going face first, right down on the floor, and Cena issuing the beat down. This is more than just about the WWE Championship for John Cena tonight. Of course he wants to walk away with his 17th world title in the WWE. Of course John Cena wants to do so, but he also wants payback on Austin Theory. 
Again, for not one, but two beatdowns issued over the last month. Siri may, Cena, excuse me, may have evened the odds a little bit a few weeks ago here on Raw with that chair shot, but the ante was up last week on Raw, and of course with Theory walking out as the WWE Championship, I'm sure Cena felt a little extra disappointment, a little more of a sting at Extreme Rules. Theory back into the ring, Cena taking him down. Oh, and Theory going for the pump kick. Cena blocks it, goes behind. Cena going to use his strength, pick it up Theory here. And slamming him down to the canvas below. And Austin Theory eyeing up Cena. Where is Theory going? Theory's next to the announce table here. Theory was trying to exit through the timekeeper's area. I think he's trying to sneak up on Cena here. Theory can't put it past him. They're trying to use mind games and cheap tactics in this matchup over Cena. And Cena going right after Austin Theory. Cena's been in there with some of the best, if not all of the best. Cena's had some amazing moments and matches right here on Monday Night Raw. Remember the one-hour classic with Shawn Michaels in 2007? When Cena got drafted to Monday Night Raw in 2005? Go back to the year 2007 as well. John Cena was basically the WWE champion from January all the way up until an injury that cost Cena the gold. Cena is one of the faces of Monday Night Raw over the years, but Austin Theory trying to become the next face of Monday Night Raw. And Theory's beating down Cena on the outside here, and I'm sure now that Cena's down, Theory could be looking for a count-out victory, and an axe hammer takes down the franchise. And Theory back into the ring. Of course, the count's going to break. Cena back out there. Theory's following him. Now Theory go for the clothesline, but Cena with the hip toss on the outside of the ring. Man, like Theory or not, that's going to hurt like hell. WWE Championship match continues here. Nice belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Cena going for the kick. Theory with the counter, and Cork screws that knee. And Cena fighting back. Back and forth we go, and this brawl on the outside of the ring here. And Cena throwing Theory right into the announce table. The brawl continues on. All for the opportunity to walk out of Nashville tonight with the WWE Championship. Cena's down again. Theory rushing back to the ring. I believe Theory's looking for that count-out victory over John Cena. Maybe Theory's in his own head. Maybe he believes that he can't beat John Cena. Again, two losses to the franchise. This match has been going for about 10 minutes or so. Theory yet to put John Cena away. 10-12 well, minutes was the length of their SummerSlam matchup. Maybe Theory's in his own head. Maybe he believes deep down, whether he wants to admit it or not, that he can't beat John Cena. One, two, three. Maybe he feels he's got to pull some underhanded tactics to be able to defeat the franchise here tonight. You hate to see it. And Austin Theory's got all the tools to get it done inside of the ring, but you talk about the cockiness and the arrogance and the mind games that Theory plays sometimes, and I don't put it past him to look for a win like that. But then you see him pull out shooting star presses and you clearly see that this man's got the talent in the ring. And now John Cena's in a predicament. And Cena could be out for the count. Austin Theory into the cover. Is Theory going to defeat John Cena here? And no, Cena gets the shoulder up. And Theory's got to be thinking after that, what the hell do I got to do to put Cena away? This is the third night in a row. John Cena's in action inside of that ring. It was a hellacious 15-minute matchup with... Edge on so wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. Austin Theory, this is a singles matchup. This is not no DQ. Theory's going under the ring to grab a chair. Cena, however, making sure Theory can't pull any trickery with that steel chair. Oh, and Theory with a cheap shot there, and that chair may have just been there for distraction. And Cena's down. He's got to be feeling the punishment, as we mentioned, a 15 minute. Back and forth classic with Edge on Saturday night's main event that he walked out the victor of. Of course, as a member of that five-man elimination challenge, we're going to Theory off the pump kick. This is going to be all. No, Theory get, or excuse me, Cena gets the shoulder up again. Now Theory heading back outside of the ring. Cena is dazed. He's got to be feeling the damage, feeling the punishment. Now Theory's going under the ring again. I can't imagine what the WWE Champion is looking for. He's pulling out a damn kendo stick. Cena again trying to make sure. Oh, Cena with a, a shot with that kendo stick. 
Referee's discretion. It looks like he's going to let this one go. He knows the WWE Championship's on the line. He knows the trickery theory tries to pull. He knows Cena's just trying to watch himself in this matchup. Looks like ref's going to let that one go. I don't expect that it'll happen again here. But the opportunity that's on the line, referee giving a little leeway to these competitors right now. Trying to make sure this WWE Championship matchup doesn't end in disqualification. Nobody here in Nashville nor watching around the world wants to see that. In theory, again, with that shooting star press. A move that that young man has perfected. And Cena's down in theory again is going back to the outside. And now he's headed towards the timekeeper's area. Cena coming at him. Oh, Theory, I believe, was just goating him in there. Theory just goating John Cena in and takes him down. And Cena's down and out. Where the hell is Austin Theory heading? He's got his eyes on the franchise yet again. Austin Theory is just trying to beat the hell out of John Cena here. Oh, wait a minute. No, not on the outside of the ring. Going for a powerbomb. Cena countering, though. Avoiding disaster right there. But still, the brawl here on the outside continues. This is not good for either man. Whether you like Austin Theory or not, it's Cena into the barricade. Cena's down with Austin Theory again grabbing that chair. Now he's headed into the ring. And Cena could be risking count out, but for some reason, Theory has brought that steel chair inside the square circle. Cena back in, and Theory catches him with a drop kick. Referee getting rid of that chair. Theory again heading to the outside. And whatever Theory's plan is here, whether it's to get himself disqualified or distract the referee or simply frustrate John Cena, can't really tell if it's worth it or not, but Cena's going after Theory here. You know Cena wants to win this match fair or square. Cena can't win this match on account of disqualification. By technical terms, he can win, but he will not be leaving with the WWE Championship. John Cena does not want to let this match an opportunity slip away from him. It ain't just about, as we mentioned, the WWE Championship tonight. It's about revenge over Austin Theory. As Theory is once again grabbing that damn steel chair. The kendo stick still in the ring. Austin Theory starting to go out there. Cena, Cena tackling him down here. Go for the AA. No Theory counters. The brawl continues in the corner. Cena grabbing a hold. Look at this. Hurricane Rana from the franchise. Cena trying to put away Theory, trying to pull out different maneuvers in the arsenal. Here he's dazed. John Cena, however, could be looking for that you can't see me five knuckle shuffle yet again. A Theory getting to his feet. Cena knew to stop instead of stopping himself in his tracks. An elbow shot there. Why the hell does Austin Theory... Th oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at this. Referee taking the kendo stick away from Austin Theory, trying to make sure this match... It's smooth Salem there. Oh, and Cena slapping some respect into the young man. Theory, though, counters. Neck breaker to the franchise. And Cena is down. Austin Theory's got to... He better put this match away soon because the more trickery he tries to pull, Cena's just going to get more frustrated. And I don't know if that's what Theory wants or not. Theory may think that's what's going to aid him as a frustrated Cena, but I think a pissed off, motivated, frustrated Cena is going to run over Austin Theory, especially how late we are in this contest with the WWE Championship on the line. Man, it's been an amazing night here on Monday Night Raw, a chaotic night to say the least. An awesome World Tag Team Championship matchup to kick us off. The Mysterios walking out still with the gold. Pete Dunne was set for a matchup against Jinder Mahal. Unfortunately for him, the surprise debut to the main roster of NXT's Tommaso Ciampa ambushing the Intercontinental Champion, laying him out on the stage and here in the ring, sending a message, presumably that he's heading for the gold. Now Austin Theory and John Cena battling out in this WWE Championship main event. We gotta be near in 20 minutes if we haven't hit it already. These guys are absolutely gotta be hitting exhaustion at this point. We gotta kick it into that another gear. They want to walk out with the WWE Championship Theory with that second rope elbow right to the sternum of John Cena here. And Cena's days, Theory. Oh, and another knockout shot to Cena. And what does Austin Theory have in mind? Uh, once again, grabbing a hold. Could be looking. TKO! Straight to ATL. And I don't know if Cena's going to be able to get out of that move again in this contest. He does. How the hell is John Cena still in this matchup? 
You think about the exhaustion that's got to be setting in after three, state, three straight nights of action, excuse me, for John Cena, and how deep and deep we are in this contest, but Cena is still in this fight. He's gone the distance before. He's been in this situation before. Main event lights are no pressure for the franchise. Get a little of this. Five knuckle shuffle. And are we going to see a new WWE Champion? Moment of truth here, but Theory gets the shoulder up. And the match continues for the WWE Championship. And I think Cena's eyeing up Theory. He knows it's AA now or never. Oh, and Theory with the counter. Oh, and Theory again. What a shot to the franchise player. And Cena's dazed. Austin Theory's got him up one more time. TKO. All day Austin Theory into the cover. And the third time is a charm. Wow, what a matchup in this main event. Austin Theory tried playing games, tried playing trickery and distraction, but in the end, he had to just go to his arsenal and pull out of his best maneuvers to defeat John Cena here tonight. Austin Theory gets the win he's been searching for, and the WWE Championship, whether we like it or not, remains with that young man right there. A look at your champions and your challengers here tonight. Our third of five championships being decided here on this pay-per-view event. It's been a big night all night long and the big fight feel absolutely continues right here. A little bit of tag team wrestling for the world. Tag team titles and the matchup has begun. We kick things off with the 20 plus year veteran Rey Mysterio and Damian Priest. Rey Mysterio immediately taking things to the, to the sky his way to take Priest off his feet. Again, the biggest story of this matchup, on top of the fact that the Mysterios have been so dominant the last several months, has got to be the fact that Rey and Dominic Mysterio have already defeated Priest and Dijakovic. And obviously Priest and Dijakovic, it isn't just the fact that they came close to winning the tag titles on that night that rewarded them this second chance opportunity against the Mysterios, but they outlasted the Hurt Business. They outlasted the Viking Raiders. They earned the title match here tonight a number of weeks ago on Raw. Absolutely earning their spot to be here, but so far, not so good. As Rey Mysterio has been in control since the opening bell, but Priest trying to make sure the momentum shifts back in him and Dijakovic's corner. The partnership between Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic coming about over the last several months through an issue with the Hurt Business or some backstage altercation is all we heard. A day of Monday Night Raw and then it led to a tag team matchup where Priest and Dijakovic ended up defeating Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin that very night. And a mutual respect is there between Priest and Dijakovic because you remember back weeks before the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, Damian Priest actually defeated Dominic Dijakovic in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup and the two absolutely tore down the house on that night on Raw. So a lot of mutual respect and now friendship between the challengers here tonight. It's been very fun to watch, continuing them, them to grow here as a, a tag team in the tag team division in the WWE. But tonight is absolutely their biggest opportunity yet. Dijakovic, man. Priest and Dijakovic, so agile inside of that ring. The Mysterios may be known for their high-flying abilities, especially Rey Mysterio, one of the greatest cruiserweights and Lucha Libre competitors of all time, but that's one thing we always talk about when Priest and Dijakovic are inside of that squared circle, is their natural gifted abilities from bell to bell. For men, their size and their strength inside of that ring to be able to do the things they do, springboarding off the ropes, taking things to the air. That's what makes Priest and Dijakovic so similar in their respects to each other and so different than a lot of the teams in the tag team division. Priest back in here now with Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio fighting back over Damian Priest. And I'm going to tag in his son for the first time in the matchup. Dominic making his presence felt here in Denver, Colorado. Dominic Mysterio, we've really seen him grow into his own over the last several months. Alongside his father becoming tag team champions yet again. But in so many instances, Dominic Mysterio, the backbone of the Mysterio family team. 
Dominic with a nice moonsault there. And Dominic again goes for a moonsault, but Priest gets out of the way. We talked about Dominic Mysterio kind of being the backbone of the team. You remember back to Extreme Rules and that tables matchup. The Mysterios versus the Viking Raiders. It was Dominic who was able to muscle up the big man Ivar. You know, a suplex through a table that won the Mysterios and retained the gold on that night. Wait a minute, Dijakovic's the legal man. So is Rey Mysterio. He's going for a 619. Priest cut him off, and Dijakovic there with the knee. Almost had a 619 early in the Mile High City. Dijakovic able to take back control in this World Tag Team Championship matchup. Now Dijakovic, what's this big man got in mind? Rey Mysterio's in trouble here. And I don't know, holy hell! Dominic Mysterio, or excuse me, Dominic Dijakovic may have just ended the tag team title reign in the blink of an eye for the Mysterios here, but Rey gets the shoulder up. Man, what an insane inverted maneuver from Dominic. Dijakovic able to take out Rey Mysterio from the top rope, falls up with the fall away German. That just shows you the intestinal fortitude of Rey Mysterio, a legend of the ring, a man who has been in many big match situations in his, in his career, including tonight. Able to survive that maneuver from Dijakovic, and somehow the Mysterios are still in this matchup for the World Tag Team Championships. Rey Mysterio fending Dijakovic off, classic DDT. Just one of the many ways the smaller competitor has figured out throughout his career to get the bigger man off his feet. Now Dijakovic in Mysterio corner. Ray's got him up top, Rey Mysterio. Oh, Dijakovic shoved him off and now Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio shoving Dijakovic off the top rope. Now Dijakovic tagging in Damian Priest and Rey Mysterio tagging in Dominic Mysterio. The two fresh men in this matchup. Mysterio comes running at Priest, and Priest levels him with a lariat. The two fresher men going out of here, but right now, momentum is in the corner of the challengers. Priest, Falcon Arrow, sends Mysterio to the canvas. Are we gonna be seeing new World Tag Team Champions here tonight at Judgment Day? Priest again with that lariat. Former NXT North American Champion, former WWE United States Champion, Priest has held singles gold before. Will he hold tag gold for the first time tonight? And that may be the final nail in the coffin of the Mysterio title reign, but Dominic gets the shoulder up. Living a fight another day in this contest. Almost had him off that choke slam maneuver. Now Mysterio's in the corner. Damian Priest, wait a minute, elevated, choke slam, sit out into the power bomb. And somehow Dominic Mysterio survives in this contest. Priest throwing some of his best work at Dominic, and Dominic, the youngest competitor in this contest, and still very young in his WWE career, showing how tough he is for a man his age, for a man his size. But he knows the magnitude of this contest. The title's on the line. He survives, tags in his father. Ray and Dijakovic are your legal men. DDT! Dijakovic's down. The master of the 619's heading to the top rope. He's got to watch, though. Dijakovic charging at him and taking perhaps the greatest luchador of all time off the top rope. Now Dijakovic muscling Mysterio up, power bomb sits out with it into the cover. New World Tag Team Champions, not just yet. What a matchup this has been since the opening bell. The Mysterios versus Priest and Dijakovic. All four of these men leaving it all in the ring tonight here in Denver, Colorado, just for the opportunity to be called World Tag Team Champions. Now Mysterio headed back up to the top rope using his high flying abilities to take Dijakovic off his feet. And now heading up to the top does Ray, could be looking for maybe a big time splash here. Frog splash! Mysterio won the gold back at SummerSlam with that very maneuver, but it's not gonna do it tonight. At least not yet. And you hear the sold out crowd here in Denver, Colorado. Tag Team Wrestling. Dijakovic back in the mix. Oh no. 
Mysterio's down, now the big man's headed to the top rope, and a splash from Dijakovic, immediately into the pinfall. But Ray survives. Man, these guys are gonna be exhausted from the amount of energy they are exuberating in this contest. Dijakovic whipping off. Rey Mysterio here. Mysterio counters. No, Dijakovic still in it. Back elbow by Dijakovic. Mysterio's going for something there. Dijakovic with the counter, able to muscle the little man over. Springboard. Leg drop. Throwing everything he's got at one half of the World Tag Team Champions here. Will he be walking away with the gold? And Mysterio again survives. You gotta wonder, Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic, they have really unloaded ever since the opening bell, throwing some of their best offense at Ray and Dominic Mysterio. And they have survived it all. What is it gonna take to possibly put the World Tag Team Champions down? Or are Priest and Dijakovic gonna get in their own heads the later we get into this contest and possibly spell the end for their chance to become World Tag Team Champions? Dijakovic tagging in Damian Priest here as Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio is down and out. And Priest going to continue the offense on Dominic Mysterio. And now a tag made to Dijakovic. Clearly coming with strategy here tonight as the rare breed Dominic Dijakovic and the archer Damian Priest. Priest is back in. Dominic's getting to his feet. Wait a minute. Mysterio sidesteps him, but Priest with the kick. Mysterio with the drop kick. Ups the ante there, now tags in his father, Ray. And Priest is right there with the tackle. A lot of this matchup has been Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic in control with the Mysterios counteracting when they can. Mysterio trying to get back some offense in this contest. Ray with a springboard. Bulldog maneuver. And I don't know if that's going to be enough to keep Damian Priest down, not just yet, but Rey Mysterio starting to mount some offense for the father-son duo. Priest may be down and out. Rey Mysterio ducks the clothesline. Wait a minute. Tilt to whirl. Head scissors. Sends the archer down. Boy, Priest pops up in a spear. Back and forth we go now in our World Tag Team Championship matchup. Denver, Colorado sold out tonight for Judgment Day, and they are getting a showcase of the tag team division here in the WWE. Damian Priest grabbing a hold of a dazed and confused greatest mask of all time. Damian Priest sends Ray for a fall away to the canvas. And you see the pace of this matchup has slowed down just a bit. A bit of exhaustion may be setting in for both teams in this matchup. And Mysterio taking Damian Priest over. Nice drop kick to the Chrome Dome. And Ray get a tag in his son, Dominic. Leaves, leaving Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest are legal men in this contest for the World Tag Team Championships to be contested. Priest whips Mysterio off. Now a tag made to Dijakovic. We're going to see a little tag team Double team action from these two men, and they send Dominic Mysterio for a ride. Now Dijakovic just getting brutal with it. For a man who's got extraordinary offense and knows how to fly all around the ring, a basic slam on the canvas is going to be just as effective. Now coming from the top with that tomahawk chop. Dominic Mysterio is in trouble right now. Dijakovic's got this match where he wants it. Mood salt. And I may have spoke too soon as Mysterio gets out of the way. And Dominic with a shot to Dijakovic. Make it another one. Goes for the clothesline. Dijakovic counters. Mysterio on the shoulders here. Dijakovic. Death Valley driver to Dominic Mysterio. Mysterio getting caught up in the offense there. Nice counter by the challenger. A choke slam. Oh, Mysterio lands on his feet at a clothesline. Takes down the challenger. Got to keep your eyes on the Mysterios, especially in a match like this. They'll fly all around the ring. They'll catch you off guard. They will outlast you if you allow them. Right with the drop kick. Takes Dijakovic off his feet. But the rare breed is still in it. And a shot to the back of Mysterio. 
And could be going for that sit-out powerbomb again. We saw this earlier in the contest. This time, doesn't sit out with it. Instead, uses the leverage to drive Rey Mysterio just a little harder onto the canvas. Rey Mysterio so tough, what you see, collapsing there. And Dijakovic gets that choke slam. At least that choke slam throw that he was going for on Dominic moments ago. Dominic was able to survive. Unfortunately, his father not having the same luck. Rey Mysterio may be in a predicament here on the apron. No Ray counters. Rey Mysterio springboard. Hurricane Rana takes down Dijakovic. One of the greatest luchadors and cruiserweights of all time showcasing those attributes here this evening in this World Tag Team Championship match. And he counters into a DDT to take Dijakovic off his feet. And somehow Dijakovic still in this contest. Sending Rey Mysterio over the top rope down to the floor here at ringside. Oh, wait a minute, Dijakovic springboard. And a cross body to the outside of the ring. The size, the mere size of Dijakovic. Just toppling Rey Mysterio at ringside. My God, what a dive to the outside. Dijakovic leaving it all and then some in the ring and out of it tonight. Who the hell is going to leave with the World Tag Team Championships? And Rey Mysterio may have just got his head taken off. Dijakovic in control. Well, I spoke too soon. Mysterio with the counter. Rey Mysterio, Lucha Destroyer. Rey's headed to the top rope. Could he be looking for the frog splash? He hits it again for the second time in this matchup. And the count, but Damian Priest breaking it up. And you gotta imagine if Priest didn't get in there, Mysterio's would have been walking out. Still, the World Tag Team Champions. And Dijakovic now trying to gain control of this contest for the challengers. Backbreaker, make it two. And throws away the champion. And you want to talk about championship rounds. We are in the midst of them yet again here tonight. This time for this tag team affair for the WWE World Tag Team Championships. Rey Mysterio is down. Dominic Dijakovic is taking control back in this contest. Go for the moonsault. This time doesn't hit at all. At least hit some on Rey Mysterio. Now going to whip the champion off in a visiting team corner. And now into the corner of the Mysterios. Dijakovic runs at him with the elbow. Sit out powerbomb. Alex not for the powerbomb. Or excuse me, Alex not for the pinfall there. Dijakovic knows it's going to take more and more to keep Rey Mysterio down. Wait a minute. Feast your eyes. And that has got to do it. We are going to have new tag team champions with Dominic Mysterio in there to make sure that will not be the case. And Mysterio rushing leg sweep to Dijakovic. And we're at a bit of a stalemate with both our legal men down and out. Oh, and, oh, and Dijakovic with a right hand on Dominic Mysterio. Not taking kindly to him breaking up that fall. Trying to go after Dominic on the outside. But Rey Mysterio... It's got Dijakovic all tangled up. Neck breaker and sends Dijakovic to the outside of the ring. Pure chaos in this tag team matchup. May have been two times there where this championships would have been decided. Rey Mysterio almost put Dijakovic away. Priest broke up the fall. Then vice versa and Dominic Mysterio breaking up the fall. Now the brawl leads to the outside of the ring. And Mysterio is in control of this contest at the current moment. And just whipping Dijakovic off. We're seeing the brutality start to play into this contest as we're in later rounds, desperate times, calls for those desperate measures. Mysterio heading back into the ring. Dijakovic gonna do the same. And now we hear a, at a standoff again, but Dijakovic making that short. Big Boo takes Ray off his feet. Goes for the super kick, Ray with the counter. Over, and a kick to his own. Dijakovic gets up. Super kick to the champion. These guys are laying it all on the line tonight. 
Mysterio's got to be out. Damian Priest now tagged in. Going for the double team and a double shoulder block by the stronger competitors. We're down to Damian Priest and Rey Mysterio. Priest choke slam into the cover. Will that be all? New World Tag Team Champions right here. No, Rey Mysterio survives again. The hell is it going to take to put an end to this matchup? Mysterio, oh, Damian Priest was eyeing up something there. Ray was able to counter. Ray, splitting Priest, takes him down. And again. Ray Mysterio smells a sense of urgency right now. It's now or never for the Mysterios to get back into this contest as we are in the midst of may, uh, possibly the best tag team match of the year here in the WWE. Priest back in control over Rey Mysterio. Looks like Rey couldn't decide if he wanted to go high risk or not. Wasn't sure of Priest's whereabouts. That costly misstep has given the momentum back to the challengers, at least momentarily. Rey with the drop kick. He can never count out Rey and Dominic Mysterio. And that is the reason they've been so dominant as World Tag Team Champions. Their heart and soul and their resilience in these kind of matchups. Priest is down. Rey Mysterio is headed to the top rope. If he hits the frog splash, it could be over. Frog splash to Damian Priest. Dijakovic's in there to break it up. And Rey Mysterio taking care of Dijakovic. Sunset flip and lays him out. Almost had the ending to this matchup here tonight. Wait a minute, Rey Mysterio making sure Dijakovic stays out for good off the neck breaker. And again, taking the man off his feet. Rey's got to focus here because Dijakovic is not the leading competitor. That would be Damian Priest. And Damian Priest taking advantage. Rey is down, Priest. Oh, he hit this early on. His son, Dominic. Choke slam from the middle rope. The crowd here in Denver is coming unglued. Damian Priest, wait a minute. Mysterio, reckoning. Dead center of the ring. Into the cover goes Damian Priest. And we have new WWE Tag Team Champions of the World. No doubt in my mind, the Tag Team Match of the Year for WWE. Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic, a tag team that formed in the midst of issues with the Hurt Business, have now propelled themselves to the ultimate success in tag team division. They have outlasted the father and son duo and have crowned themselves the champions here tonight in Denver, Colorado at Judgment Day. You got to give respect to Dominic and Rey Mysterio for the run they have had the last number of months, even prior to winning the championships. They took on all challengers. They took on Priest and Dijakovic. But tonight, the challengers now crowned champions, outlasting the father and son duo in the race to the finish line. And we are leaving Judgment Day with new tag team champions of World Wrestling Entertainment. Congratulations, Priest and Dijakovic. Ricochet taking a moment to pose with the championship that may be leaving him here tonight. Ricochet hands over the gold. Wesley eyeing up the prize. The Cruiserweight Championship on the line yet again under the spotlight in the main event here on your Thursday night. Wesley, Ricochet, the Cruiserweight Championship. The stage is set. The time is now. Ring the bell. Let's get things going. This is going to be a very interesting contest. Wesley has only had a handful of matches here on the main roster. And one of those was that tag team matchup previously here on main event alongside Ricochet. Wesley made his main roster 
debut in an impressive contest against the Hurricane about a month ago. And change here on main event as well. It was it a losing effort? But Wesley's efforts in that tag team matchup, the reason he is getting a Cruiserweight Championship opportunity tonight. But Ricochet already looking to take out the opponent and sending Wesley to the outside. Ricochet is on top of the world right now. Springboard, or excuse me, corkscrew to the outside. Taking Wesley out. Ricochet doing what he does best, taking things to the air. That aerial offense of the one and only that you won't see out of any other Cruiserweight competitor. The Cruiserweight division. Full, wait a minute, Ricochet over the top rope. Topek and Hilo once again taking out Wesley. If the Cruiserweight Champion isn't fired up, I don't know who and what is. You think Ricochet would be down and hurting after that matchup with Chad Gable this past Saturday night. But if anything, the adrenaline's still pumping for the Cruiserweight Champion, and he's going to use that to his advantage here tonight. I see Wesley taking Ricochet down with one of his best maneuvers in his arsenal. That tilt to whirl. Wesley's got to fight Ricochet. He's got to get on top of the offense now or never. This matchup just kicked off and Ricochet already taking things to the air. Wesley's got to do the same springboard. Pele kick. The maneuver that pinned Otis just last week on main event. Now Wesley again with that tilt to whirl. And I say this is one of the best moves in Wesley's arsenal because we don't see many people do it. It's hard to pull off and it's a maneuver that takes your opponent off his feet. Man, what a matchup this has already been. What are we, a minute, two minutes into this Cruiserweight Championship affair and these two men already leaving it in. Everything they have in the ring and Wesley with that miniature hurricane run and Ricochet ate the canvas trying to go for the shooting star. A maneuver that Ricochet has in his arsenal as well. Knows it well enough to have it scouted. Wesley with the shot. And a nice kick. Ricochet down on the knee again. Wesley again with that miniature hurricane run. And Ricochet eats the canvas. This time Wesley's smart enough to go right into the cover. The gold's on the line. Ricochet's cruiserweight championship reign survives another moment. You see Ricochet was going for that hangman's neck breaker there. A maneuver in his arsenal that we see him pull out quite some time. Wesley had it scouted. Lee's on the top rope. Picture perfect moonsault from the challenger. And into the cover again. And Ricochet gets the shoulder off. Man, these cruiserweights out here doing what they do best, flying around this ring. And Ricochet follows up. The crash and burn from Wesley with a shooting star press. You aren't going to see this kind of action in any other universe mode. Nobody has this type of action, these type of matchup, these types of story being told. Ricochet springboard moves somebody, crashes and burns again. Back and forth, the momentum shifts in this Cruiserweight Championship main event. And Wesley with a kick to Ricochet. Lee going to the top rope. From the top, goes for the elbow and he hits it. And again, springboard. Bit of a cross body that time on the lower back of Ricochet. At some point, one of these high risk maneuvers really gonna start to play a factor in this contest. Yes, you're doing damage to your opponent, but you're also doing damage to yourself. How much longer can these guys take it to the air from bell to bell? Ricochet taking out the knee of Wesley. German suplex into the bridge. And a rope break there, unfortunately, for the one and only. These two men have had their foot on the gas pedal since the word go. And they have not slowed down since. Wesley on the top, Ricochet counters. No, Ricochet with that recall knee. A maneuver that we normally see him hit inside the ring. A variation there on the corner. Wesley's down, Ricochet sends him into the corner again. Cruiserweight champion gets caught with the double knees, or excuse me, double feet from the challenger right now. Wesley gonna shoot him off. Ricochet counters, 
Back and forth we continue to go. And our Cruiserweight Championship main event, Springboard drop kick sends Wesley to the outside yet again in this matchup. Wesley is down, Ricochet. Looks like the one and only's wheels are spinning and dropping the axe hammer on the challenger. Man, what a matchup this has been. These two showing the prestige of the Cruiserweight Championship, a championship that has been held by many greats in this business. Rey Mysterio, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho. Ricochet taking out Wesley. Off that springboard and now Ricochet hitting the ropes. Making a dose. If you smell, Moon Salt from the one and only. Is that going to do it? No, Wesley survives. Man, what a cruiserweight championship matchup. Ricochet's got to be wondering what is it going to take to put the challenger away here tonight. And we also failed to mention Ricochet again this past Saturday night competed in a hell of a matchup versus Chad Gable at Judgment Day. Is Ricochet feeling any effects from that matchup? We noted that he must have been running off adrenaline since the opening bell. But at some point, that's going to come down. At some point, the punishment is going to start to rake up. And Wesley, I think maybe outrunning the Cruiserweight Champion here. Wesley's getting fired up here tonight on main event. Going straight into the cover, not wasting any time. Good chance for the challenger to become the Cruiserweight Champion, but Ricochet stays in this matchup. Springboard. Ricochet was out of the way. Ricochet with the elbow. Back and forth we go. The pendulum continuing to swing in our Cruiserweight Championship match here tonight. German into the bridge again. Ricochet this time not going for the cover. Springboard and a Phoenix splash. My God. What a matchup we are seeing right now. These two men Hit for tat, high flying maneuver, back and forth in this match. I feel like we are watching a marathon sprint right now. These two gotta be making the legends of the cruiserweight division throughout the WWE, throughout WCW, throughout the entire world proud right now. Bringing even more prestige and honor to holding the gold that currently Ricochet has the rights to. Ricochet's got Wesley in a predicament, but Wesley able to battle back. Lee going for maybe a cutter or something there. Able to cut Ricochet off. And once again, Wesley going to take Ricochet for a ride with a tilt-a-whirl. Wesley now going to the ground. Trying to throw a little bit of everything and more at the Cruiserweight Champion to try to take the gold away from the one and only. Lee on top, Ricochet's right there to cut him off. Trying to go for a slam, Wesley counters. What a DDT for the top rope by Lee. Lee again going to the top. Ricochet not having any of it though. Oh, and a senton there to the challenger. Wesley's down, Ricochet springboard, goes for the moonsault. Doesn't catch all of it, I believe the foot, the feet, excuse me. May have caught the chest in the rib cage of Wesley. Enough to keep him down, and Ricochet follows it up with the recall knee. Signed, sealed, and delivered as another Cruiserweight Championship defense made successful by the one and only. Santos Escobar, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Alpha Academy's Chad Gable, and now Wesley added to the list. Ricochet is putting together an impressive resume of former challengers in his reign with the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Ricochet. The question remains, who is going to be the one to step up to take the championship away from the one and only Ricochet? Before we get to Boston and before we get to Survivor Series, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned steel cage matchup here tonight. Sheamus. 
Pete Dunne, the Celtic Warrior and the Bruiserweight. Here we go, it's your main event. Pete Dunne and Sheamus one-on-one -on -one inside this cage. No eliminations in this contest. This must be won by pinfall or submission. No escape in the cage here tonight. The cage is there to leave you inside the squared circle with nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And of course the cage can be used as a weapon if and when necessary by these two men. Pete Dunne out for retribution against Sheamus tonight. I'm sure Pete Dunne would love to get his hands on Tommaso Ciampa in the Intercontinental Championship as well, but I'm sure he feels that. Oh, wait a minute! Sheamus taking a spill on the steel cage. What an impact by the Bruiserweight, and Sheamus again hits the cage. You know, Pete Dunne has been sitting on the emotions against the Celtic Warrior Sheamus for several weeks, wanting to get his hands and some retribution on this man. And as we were mentioned, I'm sure Pete Dunne wants another crack at the Intercontinental Championship, but I'm sure he feels he's got to right the wrongs of the issues with Sheamus before he can focus elsewhere. And ever since the opening bell, the Bruiserweight has really taken it to the Celtic Warrior. And Pete Dunne is scaling the top rope, scaling the steel cage. What does this man have in mind here? Coming for the top of the double stomp on Sheamus. Pete Dunne is feeling it in this main event contest inside the steel cage. And Sheamus is looking worse for wear in there right now as Pete Dunne has been all over the Celtic Warrior since the opening bell. Oh, and an Instagory right in the corner. Sheamus' days, Pete Dunne has taken the fight to him ever since the opening bell, as we mentioned. Sheamus not able to mount any offense thus far, and this is not gonna go well for the Celtic Warrior. If not only does he take a loss, but also takes a brutal beating in this matchup on the road to Survivor Series. Sheamus right now is all tied up. The Bruiserweight's really having his way. As we mentioned, Pete Dunne's been sitting on these emotions and letting it, waiting to get him out against Sheamus for several weeks. On top of already going into Judgment Day with the injuries due to attacks from Tommaso Ciampa, Sheamus really put the icing on the cake on that night. And Pete Dunne went in that matchup with Tommaso Ciampa, seriously injured, and had to defend the Intercontinental Championship anyway. You know, Pete Dunne's a tough SOB. He would have went out there against anybody's will or not. But at the end of the day, the injuries were the injuries, and they definitely took a toll on Pete Dunne on that night. Oh, wait a minute, Sheamus here, back in control of this contest, has already got Pete Dunne in the air for that Celtic cross, and Pete Dunne takes a hard fall in the early minutes of this contest, and able to get the shoulder up here, but Sheamus not wasting any time. I'm sure that comes after he sees the offense that Pete Dunne's pulling out. Throwing everything he had at him since the opening bell, Sheamus with a little bit of a desperate maneuver, already pulling out that Celtic cross. Anyway, could be looking for another one here. Instead, wait a minute, maybe a power bomb could be headed towards the cage. Oh! Slamming him on the steel cage and another one! Power bomb into the middle of the ring. He done his days and Sheamus with a bro kick! Early minutes of this matchup! And Pete Dunn able to scale the shoulder off the canvas, but man, that was almost it. This match has only been going for a few minutes. Sheamus really just starting to get some momentum behind him and not wasting any damn time. He wants to get this match over with, not risk any injury inside the steel cage and get the win he wants over Pete Dunne. He almost had him there on that small package, but the Celtic Warrior with that Celtic cross, the power bomb on the cage and the ring and then the bro kick to Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne able to survive, but you know the damage is done to the Bruiserweight right now. Things are already feeling high intensity in this contest after just a few minutes. The steel cage is already playing a factor between these two competitors. Oh, wait a minute, Sheamus grabbing a hold of the smaller competitor and hits him with that backbreaker, trying to snap Pete Dunne right in half. Now the beatdown's gonna commence. You know Sheamus wants to put the hurt on Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne wants retribution, but you know what Sheamus did to Pete Dunne back in Judgment Day, and wait a minute, another damn broke kick. And Pete Dunne able to get the shoulder up. That is the second broke kick in just a matter of minutes, and this match has only been going for a few minutes, and somehow the bruiserweight Pete Dunne is still in this matchup. What a fight since the bell rung. And Pete Dunne's got it back. Oh, look at that right there, right as we... About to discuss it, Pete Dunne getting right back into this contest. How he's not knocked out right now 
and having his lifeless body dragged off the canvas by officials, I don't know. Taking not one, but two bro kicks dead on from Sheamus, full impact there. Pete Dunne still swinging in this steel cage matchup. And now here comes out classic Pete Dunne, grabbing a hold of Sheamus, trying to beat him down limb by limb, and what a stomp to the back of the neck. Brutality since this matchup kicked off. Flipping Sheamus off in the corner. Pete Dunne with a simple yet effective clothesline and sends Sheamus down to the canvas below. What has Pete Dunne got to do to really shift the momentum drastically in this contest? He's doing a number on Sheamus right now, but you got to imagine the intensity level and the damage is definitely in the favor of Sheamus. Pete Dunne took some brutal offense, not one but two bro kicks. And then, of course, the slams and the attacks on the cage. Pete Dunne may look good right now, but internally, he's got to be feeling the damage of what has taken place inside of the steel cage. And you also got to wonder if Pete Dunne's still reeling from any effects from all those attacks from Tommaso Ciampa and even Sheamus back in August and September. Now, wait a minute. From the top rope with an elbow drop again on Sheamus, this time going into the cover. And not enough just yet. Sheamus still showing signs of life in this main event. Of course, the matchup that was signed for Survivor Series really plays a factor in this match as well. It's not just about retribution for these two men tonight. It's about building momentum towards the TD Garden in Boston at the Survivor Series pay-per-view where both these men are going to be a part of traditional Survivor Series teams. Sheamus once again looking to send Pete Dunne to the cage. But the Bruiserweights got something else in mind. Able to avoid disaster, at least momentarily there. Sheamus grabs a hold. Simple scoop slam. And Pete Dunne back up with the clothesline. Back and forth, the momentum begins to shift in this contest. Who's going to get the upper hand on one another? Who is going to survive the steel cage and be well on their way to the Survivor Series pay-per-view? Where these two men will meet again, just this time with teams by their side. Brutal backbreaker there. No knee pads for Pete Dunne, so that's going to hurt even worse for the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. As Pete Dunne again going back to the well with what works, just bringing the fight to Sheamus right here, just as the Bruiserweight always does, picking his opponents apart limb by limb and beating them down. Now grabbing a hold of Sheamus, going to look to possibly send him into a steel cage, and no, sends him into the corner. Oh, I believe Sheamus busted wide open there. The brutality of this steel cage match taking a number. One final blow to the turnbuckle has sent the Crimson Mass flowing down the head of the great white Sheamus. And that is definitely going to kind of even the odds in this matchup. Pete Dunne may be feeling the effects of the damage from Sheamus, but Sheamus is clearly showing him getting turned inside out by Pete Dunne there. And Sheamus' days, Pete Dunne may be going for the final nail in the coffin of this steel cage match. Going for the forearm, Sheamus able to counter and a third bro kick. A third kick right to the face. And there's no getting up from that. It wasn't a long one, but it was certainly a hard hitting fight inside the confines of that steel cage. And clearly the damage being shown as the blood trickles from Sheamus' face. But what a fight between these two men. A disappointing loss for the Bruiserweight, but in the end, he went down swinging. Not one, not two, but three broke kicks it takes to keep Here Pete Dunne down tonight. The Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! Sheamus may have gotten the last laugh inside the steel cage, but will it be Team Sheamus or Team Drew McIntyre walking out the victors? Coming up at Survivor Series. Thank you very much for joining us. Big fight feel here in Boston. Edge hands over the WWE Championship for quite possibly the last time. Randy Orton taking a look at what could be his prize. But who is going to be the last man remaining here tonight at Survivor Series? Randy Orton. Edge. The cell has been lowered. And the main event is underway. Here we go. The Viper, the Apex Predator, the number one contender versus the Hall of Famer, the Rated R Superstar, and the defending WWE Champion. So much bad blood over the years between these two men. It was only right for everything to culminate 
inside the steel of the hell in the cell. It should be very interesting to see how this plays out. We talked about how Randy Orton has more experience inside the hell in the cell, but Edge, no stranger to big match situations. He's been in the cell before. He's main evented WrestleMania. A decorated career for the Rated R Superstar. He has done everything there is to do in the WWE. Every championship, every accolade, Edge has accomplished it. But can he add on to that already Hall of Fame career tonight? With a successful title defense over Randy Orton. We're going to find out throughout this main event. And Edge exits the Hell in a Cell. Randy Orton's got his eyes. Edge is looking underneath the ring for something here. And Edge is grabbing a kendo stick. I guess there was a little left over from that last man standing earlier tonight, and Orton takes advantage. We already saw one kendo stick break, and there's another. Randy Orton into the cover, already on edge, and Edge gets the shoulder up. It goes without saying, but anything goes. No disqualifications inside Hell in the Cell. This thing's got to be won by pinfall or submission inside the square circle, but anything else does not matter. Orton now heads to the outside, and Randy Orton's grabbing the wood of a table here. These guys wasted no time introducing some accessories into this playground. These guys got to be careful, brawling away on the outside of the ring. The ring surrounded by the steel, surrounded by the Hell in the Cell structure. Punishment will be inflicted as Randy Orton is the first to eat the steel. Edge throwing Orton's face first right into the cage wall. And you see how the fight is really restricted around ringside. Not too many places to go when you're locked inside the confines of the Hell in the Cell structure. Oh, and Edge hitting Randy Orton off the steel steps right there. And, oh, I believe Randy Orton may already be busted wide open. We are, what, two minutes into this matchup. And if I'm not mistaken, Orton's showing some color. He ate the steel of the cage and then eating those steel steps, Randy Orton... Got to be careful in this matchup, especially the later it goes. The blood trickling from the forehead's only going to make you more tired. You put a target on your forehead in this matchup. And after a brawl around ringside, Edge sent Randy Orton into the ring. At that table right there that Orton brought into play a few moments ago. And a swinging neck breaker to the rated R superstar. Edge obviously with a history of neck problems. Has looked great ever since coming out of retirement. Which is really where things escalated between Orton and Edge a couple of years ago where Orton wanted to put Edge back into retirement. And hell, I'm sure that's on the mind of the Viper here tonight. And a suplex by Orton. Simple but effective. Crashing him into the canvas. Suplex man, not that table out of ringside. I don't think Orton cares right now. He's got Edge in a predicament in the corner. Using those rights and lefts to beat down the rated R superstar. Edge has had one hell of a year, as we said. Money in the bank. Two more WWE Championship reigns in the list of accolades for Edge throughout this year. As for Randy Orton, he's really showed a different side over the last number of months, turning his back on his former tag team partner, the original bro, Matt Riddle. Of course, those two men went one-on-one -on -one back in Extreme Rules. Randy Orton only agreed to the matchup that Riddle wanted, and only would do it if Riddle promised that it would be the only meeting and that when Randy Orton won that there would be no more chances that Randy Orton would get his opportunity to move on from RK bro and that's exactly what happened and we all saw how much punishment Randy Orton inflicted on that night at Extreme Rules and quite possibly Matt Riddle's never been the same since of course as we mentioned Randy Orton earning this WWE Championship match here tonight in the lead up to Judgment Day defeated Drew McIntyre and then on September the 10th at Judgment Day, defeated Mustafa Ali in the finals of the WWE Championship Eliminator. That's the reason Randy Orton is the number one contender here tonight. And of course, is back at Judgment Day as well, where Edge won back the WWE Championship after a short time without it, defeating Austin Theory in what was a great wrestling main event. That is one thing I don't expect to see too much of in this matchup, is some pure wrestling. And these two men have been fighting ever since the opening bell. Orton bringing that table back into play. Obviously, it's got something in mind with the wood here tonight. And it's got Edge, Hangman, Neckbreaker there. And a fall for the Rated R Superstar. Now Orton's grabbing the table. Orton clearly has got some punishment in mind for the WWE Champion here tonight. 
What is that punishment going to be? What has Orton got in mind? What are the wheels are turning for the Apex Predator? Edge trying to look to avoid disaster here. He's got Orton in a predicament, slamming him down in the corner. And these guys have been going at it since the opening bell. A lot of brawling between these two men, but you kind of see they're taking their time with each other here. They're playing the long game in this Hell in the Cell, and Orton's already shown color, jerking from the forehead. A target on the head of Randy Orton, as we mentioned, but we're going to see how that'll play in the long game in this matchup. As Orton sends Edge over the top rope down to the outside, we are back out right by the steel cage walls of the cell. Let's see who's going to get the upper hand. Let's see if one of these men is going to be able to avoid disaster, if one of them is going to eat the hell in the cell yet again. Edge has yet to come in contact with it. Randy Orton, on the other hand, when face first a few minutes ago and just ate a super kick to the jaw. I think I might have saw some blood flying around here at ringside. Orton's got to be dazed off that kick from Edge. Oh, still fighting. Oh, and an uppercut to the WWE Champion. Brutal. Just a brutal fight since the opening bell. And Edge with another kick. And sends Orton into the steel steps again. You know, kind of like how we mentioned earlier in the last man standing match between John Cena and Austin Theory. No headlock takeovers here tonight. It's all about a fist fight inside the Hell in a Cell for the WWE Championship. Edge again whipping Randy Orton off. Orton barely avoiding disaster with the cell right there. And Edge missing for that super kick again, and Orton sends Edge right into the ring apron. Oh no, and Edge hits the steel steps this time. May have hit the steel cage on the way down. Randy Orton, you see he's taking his time here at ringside, not trying to rush into anything, and once again throw an edge into the steps. Cold and calculated is the number one contender. We really saw it on display a couple of months ago in that matchup against Riddle at Extreme Rules, and we've really seen it on display with Randy Orton ever since, and Edge eats the cell, and Edge is trying to fight back. Felt the steel of the cold, steel cold of the cell, doesn't want to do it again, and Edge sent Randy Orton through the cage wall. The hell of the cell may come crashing down tonight. Edge just sent Randy Orton through a ride right through the wall down here to ringside, and the fight continues whether it's in the cell or out of the cell. Well, the cell is usually meant to keep the men inside. We've seen people break out before, but at the end of the day, this thing can only be won inside of the squared circle. Take the fight where you have it. But somebody's only leaving with the WWE Championship if the decision's in the ring. And the fight has now broken out outside of Hell in a Cell to ringside. And Orton throwing edge may have hit the cell there. The audience here in Boston, the barricade's breaking the view up a little bit, but Edge trying to fight back. The fight just continues. These guys are throwing each other all around ringside. And the more these guys ragdoll each other around, the more falls they come in contact with the steel cell, the steps, the floor. The damage is going to start wreaking a toll at some point. Can't believe Edge, the emphatic throw to Randy Orton right through the cell. Edge ate the cell, almost as if he woke him up and then immediately sent Orton crashing through the wall. They're battling here through these announce tables. Already had one casualty tonight. Are we going to see another? Randy Orton in the barricade. Fight continues here for the WWE Championship on Thanksgiving night 2022 here at Survivor Series. Oh, and a headbutt to Randy Orton. Now Orton again sending Edge right into the corner. The fight continues. Edge is down and out. The number one contender eyeing up the WWE Champion. Orton's drew blood already. Edge has yet to. I'm sure he would love to keep it that way. And Orton needs to barricade again. Ragdolling each other around. Back and forth the momentum swings. In Hell in the Cell tonight. You gotta imagine. This is a long time coming. Between these two men. Really never got the chance. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Edge. Orton's down. And Edge is scaling. The Hell in the Cell. You have gotta be kidding me. Randy Orton just realized where Edge went. I don't think Orton wants to climb that cell and meet with 
and meet Edge at the top of this structure. Orton's looking up. I don't think Orton's too interested right now. The WWE Champion is atop the cell, is atop Boston, and is challenging Randy Orton to come finish this fight on top of hell. I don't know, the wheels are spinning. I don't think Randy Orton really wants to do it. He knows the casualties that could come. Oh, oh no, Randy Orton said screw it. Orton's climbing the cell wall, and Edge is fired up. What started in the ring, has now made its way to the top of the hell in the cell. Edge and Orton meeting in the most dangerous of situations possible here tonight. Gotta be damn near 20, 25 feet in the air. And now dead center of the hell in the cell, Orton grounded and pounded on the rated R superstar, trying to make sure he doesn't come out on the losing end of this battle atop the structure, but there's Edge. The brawl continues, stiff elbows to the open wound of Randy Orton. Oh no, Edge spear, a spear on top the cell. And not only did he spear him on top of the cell, but notice the landing point of Randy Orton right in the crossroads of those beams and Orton, oh. Oh man, or it was close from falling off the hell in the cell. That was dangerously close for the number one contender. Man, this is getting dangerous. Oh no, not on the cell. Orton just face first onto the cell structure. These two gotta be careful. Those, oh my. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Those, that roof is only with, meant to withstand so much punishment. Orton with an uppercut, you see. That one panel is already folded. No, no, no. Edge! Edge! Through the cell! You have got to be kidding me. Randy Orton. Oh, my. The Exploder Suplex just sent Edge falling all the way down from hell. And Orton's got that table still. They didn't climb back down, walk their asses back into the ring. Randy Orton just set Edge, falling through the sky, down to the ground. And it almost gets uncomfortable to watch when Randy Orton gets into this mindset here. The table's in play. Orton again sends Edge through the wood of the table. Just wrap the damn match up already. And oh no. Edge is barely able to stand. Orton now is not done with the punishment. We talked about this back in Extreme Rules when Orton was going to this place and really snapping and beating the hell out of Riddle. How uncomfortable it was to watch. And Edge somehow is trying to avoid disaster again. I don't know how the hell he's walking right now after taking a fall damn near 20 feet to the floor and then crashing through a table to follow that up. Oh, and now Orton with another left hand. This is the punishment that Hell in the Cell can bestow upon your career. There's a reason these matches are few and far between anymore. There's a reason that Edge and Randy Orton were deemed worthy to step foot inside this structure because they knew it was the only way to end things between the two of these guys once and for all. Edge is on the outside. Randy Orton has brought another wooden table into play. And I don't know what the hell he needs to be doing with that. As if there already hasn't been enough punishment in this contest. Edge back into the ring. Randy Orton. Oh no. Eyeing up the table again. And Edge goes through the table. Edge is withstanding assault after assault from the number one contender and is somehow staggering on his own two feet. Orton's not done, but Edge knows it's now or never to turn the tide in this contest. Now, I might be mistaken, but I believe Edge has been cut open. Oh yeah, Edge has been cut open as well. Both these men are bleeding the crimson mask and that head buddy gonna do anybody any favors. Edge trying to fight back. Both these men are bleeding from the forehead. Randy Orton has introduced another table into this matchup. Orton swings in a miss. Edge grabbing a hold of the number one contender and sending him down to the floor. 
may not have been as disastrous as Edge's fall, but Orton certainly taking a fall like that ain't going to do him no good. This is where Edge has done the most damage thus far in this match, just brawling around ringside. That's how he cut open Randy Orton in the early going, and that's how he's really was in the momentum driver's seat in the first few minutes of this matchup as well. Fight spills back into the ring. It's blood versus blood right now. Orton with a kick. Edge is on his knees. DDT takes Edge out. Edge is barely staggering right now, but you see the WWE champion, the heart and the resilience of the rated R superstar still got fight in him as we enter real late waters in this WWE championship matchup. Oh no, not for the top rope. Blood is trickling down at Orton, superplex. Dead center of the ring. It almost gets uncomfortable to watch. Randy Orton, piece by piece, picking apart the WWE Champion. Not to mention he has another table yeah. looming in the corner, but I'm sure he's got some vicious intent in mind. Edge trying to survive, counters out right there. Orton unloading on the WWE Champion. Edge with a shot there, Edge with a drop kick. Orton counters. Edge avoids disaster again, and there's the drop kick by the WWE Champion. Orton bounces up, goes for a drop kick. Edge counters. And a shot right to the open wound to slow the pace down. Back and forth we go inside Hell in the Cell. When it's been an amazing night here at Survivor Series. New champions crowned. Revenge being served. And only one person is going to come back alive after this Hell in the Cell matchup. And right now, Randy Orton is in the driver's seat. And ever since Edge took that fall, it really feels like the Rated R Superstar is fighting an uphill battle. Every time he tries to fight back, tries to build some momentum, Randy Orton's right there to cut him off. And Orton's just got something dastardly in mind with these tables, man. He keeps going back to the wood. But Edge is trying to avoid disaster by any means necessary. Orton trying to grab a hold. Once again, grabs a hold of the WWE Champion and sends him in the corner. And a clothesline. Simple. Extremely effective as the champion goes down. And Orton, once again, is setting up the wood of the table. And Edge trying to make sure that it's not going to be the rated R Superstar. Going through it this time. Neckbreaker lands on the table. May not have cracked through it, but definitely going to do some damage. And Orton returns the favor. I'm telling you, man, ever since Edge took that fall, he cannot build the proper momentum in this matchup. You see the toll of this matchup is starting to catch up to the WWE Champion. Table set up yet again by the Legend Killer. Orton says Edge into the corner. Edge again trying to counter. And sending Randy Orton over the top rope. Almost hitting the cell there. One better count his lucky stars that he didn't hit the cell structure. You see Orton's trying to avoid disaster right now. Back into the ring, Edge on the chase, and Orton finds Edge right where he wants him. Damn neck breaker by Orton. Edge is in excruciating pain inside of the cell right now. Orton yet again setting up that table to drop kick takes Edge off his feet. What the hell does Randy Orton got in mind at those tables, man? He's already put Edge through one, not one, not two, but now he's looking for a third one. And if Edge eats one more table, I just don't know how the Rated R Superstar is going to uh, uh, excuse me, avoid disaster and live to fight another moment in this matchup. Oh, and vintage counter by Orton off the scoop slam. Edge is trying, Edge is coming out swinging, but I just don't know if he's got enough left in the tank. I don't know what Orton's got in mind, but Edge obviously knows that Orton's wheels are spinning and he's trying to avoid it by any means necessary here. Grabbing a hold of Randy Orton, neck breaker, Randy Orton's leg luckily hit the table. I think Edge may be the one now counting his lucky stars and he avoided disaster. Orton may be in trouble, Edge in the corner. This is what Edge needs to walk away the champion, a spear. Into the cover. No, Randy Orton kicks out just at the last millisecond of this matchup. 
That may have been Edge's best shot after all the offense that he's taken from Morton. RKO out of nowhere. No, Edge kicks out again. Oh, man. First the spear, then Randy Orton kicks out. Orton breaks out of it. RKO out of nowhere. Edge kicks out. Who is going to survive hell in the cell and leave Boston on Thanksgiving 2022 with the WWE Championship of the World? Orton grabbing a steel chair and now sends Edge right into the structure. And we are in deep, deep waters in this matchup. And Randy Orton just delivering a chair shot to the Chrome Dome of Edge. And the Crimson Mask continues to float on the forehead of both men, but especially the WWE Champion, as he may be knocked out cold after eating the steel. Orton's eyeing him up, tries going for it again. Edge thankfully devoids the chair shot there, goes behind, takes Orton off his feet. And Edge trying to end this matchup. Into the cover he goes, but Randy Orton kicks out. The Hell in the Cell moves on forward. And now Edge is in the driver's seat with the chair. Orton counters and a drop kick, and he drop kicks the steel chair right at Edge's face. God damn it. And another shot to Edge. Oh my God, Orton is unloading right now. I don't know how Edge is still conscious after everything he has taken in this matchup from Randy Orton. And now the number one contender, beaten down on the WWE Champion with absolutely no remorse left in his soul. Edge can't even stand up on his own two feet. Orton is putting pedal to the metal. Edge able to avoid it right there. Edge with a shot, takes Orton off, living a fight, at least one more second in this contest. Edge goes for the kick. Orton counters. Orton with a shot. Another one. Unloading on the champion right now. And Edge is in deep, deep trouble. And oh no. Oh no. Orton eyeing him up. RKO number two. Randy Orton is the WWE champion. Whether you like him or not, Hell in the Cell wrote the final story in a long Long history between the Apex Predator and the Rated R Superstar. Here is your winner and the new WWE Champion, the Viper, Randy Orton. They say Hell in the Cell will change your career forever. And I don't know if Edge nor Randy Orton, no matter the result, will ever be the same again. A valiant effort by the Rated R Superstar. But November the 24th, 2022 belongs to that man. And once again, the WWE has entered an age of Orton. The new WWE Champion, the Apex Predator. 1.0. One point in time, a Royal Rumble match winner. But is Seth Rollins going to hold the World Heavyweight Championship for the very first time in his career? We are going to get an answer to that question right here, right now. SmackDown All-Star Kickoff, MGM Grand, Las Vegas, Nevada, December 4th, 2022. Who is leaving Sin City with the gold? That is what is all on the line. The World Heavyweight Championship, Robert Roode, Drew McIntyre, John Cena, Seth Rollins. The bell has sounded and we are underway with our main event. Who is gonna get the upper hand in this matchup? You remember this is an elimination style four man matchup. So one fall to a finish is not gonna decide our champion tonight. We need three casualties, three bodies going down for one man to leave as the new World Heavyweight Champion. Cena and Robert Roode battling out in the corner. Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre taking issue with each other on the other side. 
who is going to be the face of the blue brand, who is going to be the face of SmackDown as we head towards the Royal Rumble on January 1st and kick off the road to WrestleMania. That is the big question. What a night it has been here on the SmackDown All-Star kickoff in Las Vegas. Ricochet retains the Cruiserweight Championship in an absolute clinic against Tyler Bate. Wait a minute, Drew McIntyre looking to eliminate Seth Rollins here. Rollins to be the first casualty, not just yet. Also tonight we saw the debut of Imperium, and more specifically the man who is in action, the former NXT United Kingdom Champion Walter, defeating Drew Gulak in his debut tonight. In absolute impressive fashion. Rey Mysterio picking up a win over The Miz. Finn Balor moments ago picking up a win over Shinsuke Nakamura. And of course, a new United States champion was crowned here tonight as Mustafa Ali outlasting seven other men, along with Bobby Lashley as the final two. Ali leaving Las Vegas, the new WWE United States champion. Who is going to be the world heavyweight champion? Cena, Rude, Rollins, and McIntyre battling out to stake that very claim. Of course, no count outs and no disqualifications in this style match as well. Things are only going to be decided by a pinfall or a submission. As McIntyre got John Cena hoisted up in the air, slamming him down on the canvas. Now some new pairings in this matchup as McIntyre taking issue with John Cena. Rollins sending Robbie Roode out of the ring. And McIntyre now heads back towards Seth Rollins. McIntyre entering another big match situation this year. Does not want to come out on the losing end yet again. Bobby Roode, who has spent most of the year down in NXT, returned to the main roster a few weeks before Survivor Series, went one-on-one -on -one with Edge on Monday Night Raw. May have been a losing effort, but of course Bobby Roode earning his opportunity to be here on SmackDown tonight with a win over Ali last week in San Antonio. McIntyre and Rollins back in the ring as two bodies are laid out on the outside. Rollins, what a forearm to Drew McIntyre in the corner. And Cena going after McIntyre. Bobby Roode trying to get his hands on Rollins, but Rollins, you just see that rolling forearm on McIntyre. Knockout blow as Cena takes out Bobby Roode. Who is going to be the first elimination in our World Championship matchup? Main event of this live premiere. Of course, the next time we come your way for a live premiere event, December the 21st, a special role on SmackDown production of Saturday night's main event. Featuring superstars from Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. And of course, we're kicking off the new year. Sunday night, January 1st, 2023. New Year's night with the Royal Rumble. We're going to kick off the road to WrestleMania. Can't wait to get to those two events. Can't wait to see what the conclusion of this one's going to be here in Las Vegas. Rollins oh, beating down on McIntyre right now. You know, it might be smart in situations like this to possibly team up with some of your opponents. Trying to outcast somebody and make an elimination in this matchup. Partnerships never last, but in a situation like this, might be the best idea. Rollins going to the top rope, eyeing up McIntyre, but I think Cena took his man here. Rollins still coming from the top, dropping the knee on Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins throwing caution in the win for the chance to become the world champion tonight. For the last time Rollins held a world championship here in the WWE, 2019, when he was the universal champion on Monday Night Raw. Of course, that championship was unified earlier this year at the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight title. The big gold is back. We are continuing its lineage here tonight on SmackDown. And Cena muscling up Drew McIntyre. That's no easy task. McIntyre, obviously the biggest and strongest man in this matchup. But John Cena, no stranger to using his strength to his advantage. He's got McIntyre laid out in the middle of the ring. Cena going a little vintage here. Five knuckles shuffle by the franchise. And will that be your first elimination of the contest? Is McIntyre hitting the showers? Not just yet. Cena throwing one of his best shots in his arsenal at Drew McIntyre, but the Scottish psychopath lives to fight another moment in this four-man elimination matchup. 
Rollins trying to take it to McIntyre. McIntyre and Boy's disaster there. Muscle is up the Messiah, and the Visionary hits the canvas. Back to our original pairings in the first part of this matchup. McIntyre and Rollins going at it. Cena and Bobby Roode going at it. Two singles matchups that I would love to see down the line here on SmackDown. John Cena grabbing a hold of Bobby Roode. Drew McIntyre setting his sights on the visionary here. All four men back inside the squared circle. Look at this. Robert Roode lays out John Cena. And we may have our first elimination in the franchise here, but Cena gets the shoulder up. Meanwhile, Rollins goes for a knee on McIntyre. He moves out of the way. Casualties left and right in this matchup. Gets, oh man, McIntyre. Claymore kick out of nowhere. Rollins is done. Rollins is done now. Seth Rollins survives. McIntyre hit that Claymore kick out of absolutely nowhere, but somehow Seth Rollins still in this World Championship matchup. McIntyre's dazed, Rollins is off to the corner. Here comes Seth for the top of the clothesline. You smell the sense of urgency in the visionary now after eating that Claymore kick. Moonsault. Into the pinfall, referee a little bit out of position there. May have cost Rollins as McIntyre gets the shoulder up. Getting into deep waters in this contest, yet still no eliminations. Robert Roode. Sunset Flip didn't have the right positioning to pin Cena there, but a little bit of damage done by the glorious one. As Rollins goes off the apron on McIntyre. And a brawl on the outside, brawl inside of the ring. Any means necessary to leave with the gold. Cena with the elbow to Rude. Rude with the block. Bobby Rude now grabs the hold. Cena with the counter. Back and forth reversals, and Cena with the drop kick to the glorious Robert Rude in the ring. Meanwhile, Rollins sending McIntyre into the apron on the outside, just trying to beat down on the Scottish psychopath. The brawl continues out there. Cena and Rude continuing their fight inside of the squared circle. Cena muscling up the glorious one. And a snake guy's in the corner on Rude. Follow that up with a five knuckle shuffle. Maybe enough. Wait a minute, Cena going for the attitude adjustment. But Robert Rude with the counter. Cena was moments away from dropping Rude at the AA. But Rude able to get out of it at the last second. Glorious one saves his chances at least for a moment. Seth Rollins back in. Caught Rude off guard while he had his back turned. Oh no, the visionary. Hits the ropes. Curb stomp. Rollins into the cover. One and has gone. Has been eliminated. Our first elimination of the contest, the glorious Robert Roode will not be leaving Las Vegas, Nevada as the world heavyweight champion. Rollins pins Roode and we are down to three. Rollins out of the picture right now. John Cena taking the fight to Drew McIntyre. Rude is gone. Rollins is out. Cena, look at this. Could we get our second elimination here? Number two on the way. McIntyre muscles out of it. What a main event we are witnessing here tonight in Sin City in this epic live premiere of Friday Night SmackDown. Pay-per-view-like event with the All-Star kickoff. Cena's got McIntyre. Right where he wants him in there. Seth Rollins up on the outside, but Rollins in no rush to get back in the ring. You see him just watching the contest right now. He sees Cena working on McIntyre. Cena's got no idea. Meanwhile, Cena hitting the ropes for the second time in the matchup. This could spell the end for the Scottish Psychopath. Five knuckle shuffle, Cena into the cover. Rollins is waiting inside on the outside of the ring. McIntyre's gone. McIntyre's eliminated. Rollins trying to catch Cena off guard. Cena dodged it, and we are down to two men. The franchise and the visionary. John Cena versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. Not one, but two five knuckle shuffles throughout this contest. Double knockout blows to Drew McIntyre. McIntyre joins Bobby Roode on the bench, and we are down to two. Two men who've got a lot of history with each other battling over world championships here in the WWE. Reuniting that flame here tonight. Cena with the counter. Muscles up Rollins for a belly to belly. 
Will Cena be winning his 17th World Championship in the WWE tonight? Or is Seth Rollins next in line for the championship gold? Got Cena on the top rope. Seth Rollins gonna meet him up there. Frankensteiner in the middle of MGM Grand. Cena's out. Rollins going back to the top rope. Picture perfect frog splash. Into the cover goes Rollins. Is that all she wrote? Cena gets the shoulder up. Rollins went high risk twice there off the Frankensteiner on the frog splash. Knows it's gonna take more than enough to keep John Cena down. And bringing Cena back up to the top rope. Rollins, any means necessary to leave Las Vegas with the big gold belt. Cena, grabbing a hold. Now wait a minute, Rollins could have been going for that Falcon Arrow. Cena counters. Cena trying to avoid disaster there. Now the franchise from the top rope with a crossbody. Cena was in trouble. Seth could have been looking for that suplex Falcon Arrow combo. Cena saw it coming and was able to dodge it. Oh no, Seth Rollins grabbed a hold. Could have been going for a pedigree, possibly, but Cena powered out of it. Cena sees an opportunity. Pinfall scenario here, but Rollins gets the shoulder up again. What a back and forth between these two men battling over the World Heavyweight Championship here on the All-Star Kickoff. Cena in trouble. Oh no, Rollins. Vintage Rollins here. Super kick to the dome of the franchise player. Rollins isn't done. Swing blade to Cena. Seth is unloading on Cena right now. And I don't like where this is heading for John Cena's chances here tonight in Vegas. Rollins going all in with the curb stomp. And is that going to do it? The visionary. The revolutionary. Seth freaking Rollins. Like him or not, is leaving Las Vegas world heavyweight champion. Rollins eliminated Bobby Roode earlier in the contest. Cena got rid of McIntyre off two five-knuckle shuffles, but Seth Rollins goes all in and Here's gets the last winner. laugh tonight. He's the new world heavyweight champion, Seth Rollins! A pay-per-view-like edition of Friday Night SmackDown concludes with the visionary of the WWE leaving with the big gold world heavyweight championship. Thank you for tuning in to SmackDown's All-Star Kickoff. Mustafa Ali, an incredibly proud competitor to hold that United States Championship that means so much to him. Handing over the gold tonight. Is he handing it over for the first and final time in his first United States Championship defense in this reign? It is your main event to this special Raw and SmackDown production of Saturday Night's main event on the road to January 1st at the Royal Rumble. Lashley, Ali, the bell has sounded. Who is leaving Ohio? The United States Champion. And Ali right off the bat, the drop kick to Lashley that might have just pissed off the almighty superstar as he levels Ali with that clothesline. Two completely different competitors inside of the squared circle. The size and strength of Lashley. The speed and agility of Ali. Who is going to get the best of the other here tonight for the United States Championship? The all-star kickoff in Sin City that night belonged to Ali. But Lashley more motivated than ever. Coming up short in that battle royal, the victory over Buddy Murphy two weeks ago on SmackDown. Lashley sees the opportunity at hand. Coming in 100% tonight. And also not seven other men inside the ring tonight, just one in Ali, able to focus in on Mustafa Ali. Will Lashley be able to take advantage and leave the new United States champion? And a shoulder block to the current champion. Bobby Lashley has been chasing championship gold damn near all year, ever since losing the WWE Championship back in April to AJ Styles. Of course, Lashley was caught up in the midst and rivalries with Randy Orton and AJ Styles and that really derailed him from chasing championship gold but we knew in Lashley's mind all he wanted was to get gold back around his waist and ever since joining Friday Night Smackdown the opportunities have presented themselves Lashley not able to capitalize yet but will tonight be the night 
Oh, and a slap to Ali. Lashley can't take Ali lightly, though. That's one thing that we got to say about Mustafa Ali. He calls himself the heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown for good reason. We've seen Mustafa Ali go the distance. We've seen him in there with the best of them, and we've seen him beat the best of them. We mentioned that Ali owns victories, multiple victories, over the man who is currently the World Heavyweight Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. It was also back in the summertime that Mustafa Ali picked up a victory over John Cena on Monday Night Raw. Ali has had an epic year here in the WWE 2022, a career resurgence, and almost retaining the United States Championship there, not just yet. Ali looking to end 2022 on a high note. Not only winning the United States Championship, but retaining the United States Championship. Of course, both of these men are going to want to throw their name in the hat as we've been talking about all night long for the 30-man Royal Rumble matchup on Sunday night, January the 1st, 2023. As much as both of these men, as we mentioned, are going to want to participate in that matchup, be two of the 15 SmackDown superstars to enter that Royal Rumble match. They can't look too far ahead. They gotta focus on tonight and the United States Championship. Ali, super kick, falls it up the Tornado DDT. And that's what Ali's gotta do in this matchup. Lashley has used his size and strength to ground Ali thus far in this matchup. But Ali's gotta break free. He's gotta strike where he can. He's gotta take it to the air. He's gotta use his assets to his availability here to try to topple the almighty Bobby Lashley tonight. And some overhand chops. Ali gonna throw anything necessary to try to keep Lashley down tonight, even if it means something a little unorthodox, but that's nothing out of the ordinary for Ali. Big time splash from the top rope. Not enough just yet, but the damage certainly done by the United States Champion. Of course, Mustafa Ali, not only winning that battle royal two weeks ago, or excuse me, three weeks ago on SmackDown, but just this past Friday night, defeating Legado del Fantasma Santos Escobar on SmackDown, so Ali riding a high of momentum as of late here in the WWE. Well, big time maneuvers there to retain the championship. Lashley, a kick out after one. Bobby Lashley is a former WWE champion, is a former United States champion as well on multiple occasions. It's gonna take a lot to keep Bobby Lashley down, but if there's anybody can do it, Mustafa Ali has silenced all the doubters throughout 2022, and he wants to do it again here tonight. And thank you again for joining us on your holiday week. Christmas on the horizon, December the 21st, 2022. Nationwide Arena, Columbus, Ohio. Saturday night's main event, what a night it's been. And Ali gonna be feeling that one on Christmas morning. Right to the back, Ali eats the hardest part of the ring there. Now Lashley gonna continue the assault on the outside. And this is not gonna go well the United States Champion. He cannot afford to take a beat down at ringside by the hands of the destroyer, Bobby Lashley. Three. Well, he's gotta get back into this matchup. But right now, things are not going his way. Manhandling the United States Champion. And a power slam on the outside. Lashley knows he can't win the United States Championship via count out but he could certainly do a certain level of damage on the outskirts of the ring. And Bobby Lashley is just manhandling, as we mentioned, the United States champion right now. Ali is worse for wear, and he's got to get back into this matchup. Lashley is using his size and strength to his abilities, as we have mentioned throughout this contest. Working in his favor, there's Ali taking the moment there. Lashley went in to break the count, went back out to the champion, and Ali was able to catch a breath, take advantage, hits the super kick. Not sure if he got all of it, but follows up with a Hurricane Rana. And here comes Ali. Speedy Gonzalez inside of the ring right now. Springboard, moonsault maneuver there. Off the middle rope, didn't get a full rotation, but still certainly did some damage to the challenger. Ali, look at this. Swinging neck breaker, and Mustafa Ali has found himself back in the driver's seat of your main event tonight. Is the United States champion going to continue to trail his own path here tonight? Lashley on the top rope, Ali. Here comes the United States champion, X Factor there for the top rope. 
And Mustafa Ali, smart to go for the finish here. Into the cover he goes, but Lashley survives another moment in this matchup. What is it going to take for Mustafa Ali to leave Columbus, Ohio tonight? Still, your United States champion. Now Ali springboard. Lashley able to dodge it. Oh, Lashley with the kick. And Lashley, dominator to Mustafa Ali. And not watching the ring awareness there. Lashley caught Ali. Oh, wait a minute. He'll be going for another Dominator. Oh, but this time, spins out with it. And Lashley may have won himself the United States Championship, and Ali kick is out right at the last second. We got a board burner on our hands tonight for the United States Championship. Whether you like Ali, whether you like Lashley, no matter who you support in this matchup, Columbus, Ohio is coming unglued for this championship main event at hand. And the matchup, oh, there's Ali turning the tides of this matchup. I was about to say the matchup already had turned the tide a few moments ago. Ali went for that springboard drop kick. Lashley got out of the way and almost won himself the United States Championship of a couple of powerful maneuvers. Mustafa Ali ain't gonna give up without a fight. The heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown for one damn reason, and that's Mustafa Ali never gives up from bell to bell. Lashley down and out. Ali going where he's most comfortable. On the top rope, hits that splash, but Bobby Lashley calculated it from earlier and got the knees up. And just like that, the momentum shifts in this matchup for the United States Championship. Ali is in trouble right now. There's a kick by Ali. Back and forth we start to go. As we enter these championship rounds, I like to call them, in the deep waters of these matchups, this is where you test your heart. This is where you test your intestinal fortitude. And this is where you test where you become a champion. As back and forth we go. Lashley now at the counter. And an STO takes Ali off his feet. Ali able to catch the kick. Both these men going tit for tat right now. They're on Saturday night's main event. The champion is unloading. This is what Ali's got to do. I don't know if he's going to be able to beat Lashley at his own game, but at least he can try to outstrike Bobby Lashley. Now, Lashley just had it scouted. You see him just blocking everything Ali had right there. Now Lashley whipping Ali off into the corner. What strength by the challenger. And there's the champion. Wait a minute, schoolboy. Rope break right there. Ali trying to steal the victory and retain the United States Championship here tonight. What has Mustafa Ali got in mind for his challenger? I'm sure Ali has put together a blueprint to try to defeat. Wait a minute. What a Spanish fly by the champion. Catching the challenger in the midst of combat. Headed up to the top. Dropping the leg from the skies above. And that's got to do it. Still the United States champion, Lashley survives. A kick out at damn near 2.9. The challenger survives for another moment in your United States Championship main event. The Spanish fly followed by that leg drop from the heavens. Not enough to keep Lashley down, but Lashley goes falling down to the outside of the ring. What a United States Championship matchup on hand. Lashley's dazed. Ali, back to the sky. Springboard moves salt to the outside by the champion. Ali is rolling in your Saturday night's main event. And now back inside, corkscrew over the top rope. This is what Ali's got to do. High flying maneuvers are going to be, if anything, what Mustafa Ali needs to defeat Bobby Lashley here tonight. Piece together the right maneuvers, and you'll walk away still the champion. Springboard again, frog splash to the lower back. A series of maneuvers. Will that be enough by Ali? Lashley gets the shoulder up. What the hell does Mustafa Ali got to do to retain his United States Championship here tonight? All that offense, and again, Ali's got no choice with the throw caution in the win and head to the top rope here in Columbus, Ohio. Drop kick takes the challenger off his feet. 
The drop kick that he looked for earlier could be the end of this contest, but Lashley again gets the shoulder up. Ali's got to be sweating right now, wondering what the hell he's got to do to keep this destroyer that's lying in wait and put him away. Lashley, oh, wait a minute, Lashley attacking Ali. Got him in the air. Dominator. And that might do it. Lashley to the cover. We have a new United States champion. Wow, what a matchup here on Saturday night's main event. You know, you might not like Bobby Lashley, you might not like his attitude, but there is no questioning the result of your Saturday night's main event affair tonight. Ali threw everything he had and just a little bit more at the challenger. But at the end of the day, the almighty was simply the better man on December the 21st, 2022. A new United States champion here tonight. Here is your winner and the new WWE United States champion, the almighty Bobby Lashley. A new United States champion at hand Friday night SmackDown Zone, the almighty Bobby Lashley. And how will Bobby Lashley ride this momentum into Sunday night, January the 1st, less than two weeks away? The breakout star of 2022 holding the championship in her hands and possibly handing it over for the last time. Since winning the gold at Survivor Series, Shotzi has defended it and retained it at Raw Homecoming against Rhea Ripley. And on a recent episode of Monday Night Raw against Tegan Knox as well. But tonight, she reignites the rivalry with Asuka for the third and final time. It's Shotzi versus Asuka here tonight at the Rumble. Things are underway, and Shotzi's wasted no time. A knee might have been a knockout blow. Asuka gets the shoulder up, but Shotzi is coming out swinging here tonight. The women's title's on the line. That is very important in the mind of both women, but Shotzi's looking for a little bit of retribution after Asuka laid her ass out inside of that very ring a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Asuka showed her true colors on that night, and Shotzi's trying to show her heart, show her toughness here tonight at the Rumble. And a set tie to the outside. Shotzi has come out in a blaze of glory since the opening bell. And you can't say Asuka didn't have this onslaught coming from the women's champion. Doing one good for herself. Doing one good for Mia Yim after the events of Monday Night Raw this past week. And Shotzi, after sending Asuka to the barricade, taking the fight back out of the ring. It's all about the women's title. Shotzi going for that senton. Only caught that little bit of the lower legs of Asuka. Goes for it again and Asuka gets out of the way. I know Shotzi's fired up, but she's got to be careful she doesn't overexhaust herself. And Asuka may be looking for a mistake, and she just capitalized on it right there. Asuka, obviously the more experienced competitor, especially in these big match situations. Triangle hold on Shotzi. Referee better check to make sure that's not a choke here. Shotzi may be on the verge of passing out in the first minute of this matchup. But the ballsy badass got the nickname for a reason, able to break out of the submission hold before things get too deep. Shotzi taking the fight to the number one contender, Asuka. She is coming out swinging since the opening bell, but she's gotta be careful, not only to overexhaust herself, but Asuka's gonna be looking to take advantage of this anger, to take advantage of this momentum by Shotzi, catch a mistake, and take advantage of it. Asuka and Shotzi had one of, if not the women's match of 2022 back at Survivor Series. What a tough battle it was between both women. Now they're back at it tonight here in Toronto at the Royal Rumble. It started in Phoenix at SummerSlam, made its way through Boston and Thanksgiving, and now ends in Toronto here at the Royal Rumble. Who is gonna leave the women's champion of Monday Night Raw? We are gonna find out right here tonight. And Asuka snaps, sends Shotzi to the outside, and Shotzi takes a nasty fall down to the floor of the Saskatchewan Bank Arena. Shotzi able to counter. Oh, well, look at this, look at this. On the outside of the ring, tilt to whirl, head scissors. And that landing's gonna do a little bit more damage than good, and she falls it over the knee. 
And Shotzi is like a firecracker tonight. You just can't stop her. And she's unloaded on Asuka on the outside. On the runway here, Asuka's down and out, and Shotzi's beating her ass. You can't say the Empress didn't have this coming after she showed her true self these last couple of weeks. All Asuka cares about is the Women's Championship, and I get it. The championship is the top of the division. It's what every, every woman in the division, excuse me, wants to hold. But there's a way to do it with honor and respect, and Asuka doesn't give a damn about those words anymore. She just wants the championship by any means necessary, and she will pry it from Shotzi's cold, dead hands if she has to. I don't think Shotzi gives a damn about Asuka anymore either. Respect is out the window, and she is trying to beat Asuka within an inch of her life tonight. Sending Asuka into the ring, or excuse me, into the corner. Shotzi not looking to kick off the new year on the wrong note. After winning the Women's Championship at Survivor Series, she wants to head into the road to WrestleMania as the champion. Wait a minute, Asuka, hip attack to Shotzi. And that may be all she wrote. No, not even a one count. Shotzi said, I don't give a damn what you throw at me. I'm going to survive. But Asuka hits the ropes, a second hip attack. And that is not good. Shotzi is in trouble. Oh, and Asuka wasn't done, but Shotzi, wait a minute here. Pop up, there's a knee, and an Insiguri. Shotzi is in trouble right now. Asuka's unloading. Double hip attacks, the kicks, and now the beatdown punches by the Empress of Tomorrow. I do not like Shotzi Blackheart's chances right now, and Asuka locking in the armbar. A submission specialist inside the squared circle, and she's showing that through fruition here tonight. Shotzi trying to break out of it. Nice counter there by the women's champion. Trying to slow things down. And a nice X Factor by the champion. Shotzi looking to take care of business, retain the women's championship, bring it back to the ball pit here tonight. Looking for her arm bar of her own on the, on the challenger. Wrenching it in. This has been pedal to the metal since the opening bell. What a fight we got on our hands for the WWE Women's Championship. Asuka in the corner, Shotzi setting her atop. What has the women's champion got in mind here? Frankensteiner sends Asuka to the middle of the ring. Falls it up with a kick. And the crowd here in Toronto coming unglued for the champion and the challenger in this epic final battle for the women's title. From the top, she went for the splash, but Asuka caught her with the knees and directly into the cover. Shotzi able to kick out, but you gotta believe the damage has been done after Asuka got the knees up. And now she's unloaded. Oh, she picked the ankle there. Oh no, another submission. Lock it in the ankle lock. Asuka is unloading on Shotzi with the submission holds tonight. How many times can Shotzi survive? Asuka's got it wrenched in tight. The champion, look at that, able to roll out of it. The resilient champion goes for the Insiguri. Asuka pushes her off, and Asuka again is back in control. I don't know how much of the beatdown and the submission holds and the punishment by the Empress, Shotzi's gonna be able to take a belly to belly there by Asuka, and Shotzi eats the canvas. Asuka's just coming out a different woman these last number of weeks, and she has shown it again here tonight. Wait a minute, look at this, Asuka was in trouble there, a little too close to the ropes. Shotzi almost stole the victory here tonight at the Rumble, and now unloading on the Empress of tomorrow. Never count out the ballsy badass. She made a name for herself last year for a reason, and she's atop the women's division right now for the same very reason. And look at this, head scissors takes down the challenger again. Hits the senton, a signature maneuver by Shotzi. Goes for it again, but she went to the well too many times. We've seen Shotzi make that mistake in the past, going to the well too many times with that senton. The inexperience of the women's champion at the end of the day ain't gonna do her no favors against somebody like Asuka. Asuka on the middle rope, hits a splash. Same maneuver Shotzi was looking for earlier. Oh, wait a minute. Asuka's got her eyes locked. Shotzi counters whatever she had in mind, hit the elbow, hits a clothesline, takes her challenger down. The champion's trying to fight back, trying to get Toronto and this crowd behind her. Rally the troops, any means necessary to defeat the Empress of Tomorrow. 
The fight we got on our hands for the women's championship. Shotzi goes behind. Double underhook German. No. Asuka counters. Stomps on the foot of Shotzi. Locks the arms. Belly to belly again. And Shotzi has got to be feeling it right now. She has taken a beating. And she may have just lost the championship. Into the cover. Shotzi survives again. Shotzi is dazed. Oh, no. Asuka. If she hits this, it could be all she wrote. Going for the third, hip attack in the match. The third time is a charm for Asuka. And oh no, oh no. Asuka's got it locked in. The Asuka lock on Shotzi. Shotzi is all tied up. She's got nowhere to go. Asuka's wrenching it in tight. Is that gonna be it? And that is all. Asuka taps out Shotzi. And we have a new women's champion of the WWE. I'd feel better about that result had Asuka not shown her true colors these last number of weeks. But at the end of the day, what can you do? I mean, Shotzi gave this all she had. A storybook Cinderella run for Shotzi. Unfortunately, comes to an end. The Empress of Tomorrow is just too much to handle here tonight in Nerano. Three hip attacks. The Empress of Tomorrow with the Asuka lock. That's all Here she wrote. Here is your winner and the new Raw Women's Champion, Asuka! A heartbreaking loss for Shotzi, but there is your new WWE Women's Champion. The Empress rules atop the throne yet again. Asuka wins the gold. And after Shotzi's silver rival run comes to an end, I don't know who is going to be next to step up to that woman right there. The stage is set here in Tampa Bay to kick off Friday night SmackDown on the road to WrestleMania. The Cruiserweight Championship is on the line in a special Royal Rumble meet rematch. Rey Mysterio lose the gold in his first defense back to the one and only Ricochet, or will the master of the 619 continue to ride this wave of momentum? We're gonna find out in moments as we kick off the first SmackDown on the road to WrestleMania right here, right now. The bell has sounded and the Rumble rematch is underway. For the matchup these two gentlemen had this past Sunday night in Toronto at the Royal Rumble, so Scotiabank was rocking in Toronto, Canada in the North this past Sunday. New Year's night, what a matchup it was. The replay is available right now here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. And Mysterio defeated Ricochet, of course, for the Cruiserweight Championship. Now we're running it back tonight. Ricochet wants back the gold that he held for 189 days here in the WWE. And Mysterio went to the cover off the Bulldog, and Ricochet gets the shoulder up. You gotta wonder if the strategy, as we mentioned, for Ray is gonna be any different compared to what was successful for him this past Sunday. And on the other hand, Ricochet, I'm sure, is coming in with a different blueprint tonight. Everything he tried to throw at Ray this past Sunday, obviously not working out in his favor as he left the North without the gold. So Ricochet's got to change things up tonight, throw something at Ray that he's not going to be expecting, all in the effort to win back the Cruiserweight Championship. It's a nice pump kick moments ago, now trying to keep the offense going. Nice collar and elbow from Ricochet and Ray. Sends him to the outside and a beautiful drop kick by the one and only. Ricochet looking good in the early moments of this contest. Wait a minute, over the top rope, the human highlight reel of Friday Night SmackDown showing up and showing out tonight here in Tampa. To Pekin Hero over the top rope. Wait a minute, Ricochet springboard goes for the moonsault. Doesn't really connect with it. Rey Mysterio, however, still dazed and Ricochet takes advantage. Ricochet throwing caution in the wind. That is what fills up his arsenal is those high-flying maneuvers. Not everyone's going to hit flush, but Ricochet prepared for moments like that. Was able to keep the momentum on his side off that costly misstep there. But luckily, still in advantage of this contest. And now, wait a minute. Springboard. Nice clothesline there by Ricochet. Didn't connect with all of it, but enough to take Ray off his feet. Ray got the knees up that time. You see Ricochet not really connecting with a couple of those moves in a row there. You gotta wonder if the psyche of the one and only is not 100% heading into this matchup after the loss on Sunday night. Try to get back into this match. Not trying to allow Ray to get the momentum, but there's Ray with another counter on the current. 
challenger. I was about to say cruiserweight champion Ricochet, but Rey Mysterio, the new champion, Ricochet held the gold for 189 days. These two men trying to get at each other here. Slowing it down a little bit, Ricochet trying to change the pace. And the challenger picking up the current champion, the new champion, Rey Mysterio. Ray takes advantage, now knocks Ricochet down. It's a Royal Rumble mean rematch from New Year's night this past Sunday in Toronto. Look at this, Ray springboard goes for the crossbody and miscalculates it there. And again, that's a couple of missteps for both of these gentlemen throughout the matchup. You know, another thing you gotta take advantage is you gotta wonder what the condition of these two men are. Just coming days after their encounter at the Rumble. Are either of their bodies anywhere near 100% tonight? Nice arm drag by Ray. And now he's got the challenger reeling and drops the leg on the arm. And still to come tonight for the second time only in SmackDown history. It is a special SmackDown Royal Rumble matchup here on SmackDown. Ten participants, and the winner will challenge Seth freaking Rollins, the visionary himself, for the World Heavyweight Championship in less than three weeks, Sunday night, January the 22nd, in Anaheim, California, at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Cannot wait to get to our main event tonight as Ricochet off the spine buster to Rey Mysterio. And now the one and only in the driver's seat once again in your Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Going to be looking for the moonsault here and he hits it. And into the cover goes the challenger. Looking to win back the title just days after losing it, but not just yet. Now Ricochet heading to the top rope, keeps the momentum going off the shooting star press. Nobody can do it like the human highlight reel, but again, Mysterio gets the shoulder up. And this is where Ricochet's got to stay focused. He lost on Sunday, and things aren't really going his way right now. Ricochet's got to make sure the psyche doesn't get messed up as the later this matchup goes. He's got to stay focused on the future Hall of Famer, the multiple-time world champion, the current defending Cruiserweight champion Rey Mysterio. He's looking good. He's keeping the offense going. Well, there's a counter by Rey. Gets out of the way. Now Rey Mysterio trying to get back into this matchup that the Ricochet's been ruling the last number of minutes. And Mysterio again going to the well with what works. Takes that arm drag. Takes down the one and only. Ray off the double stomp here. The master of the 619 trying to build momentum. But again, Ricochet gets back into this. There's a drop toe hold by Ray. Almost had him in the ropes. Could have set him up for the 619 there, but luckily for Ricochet, almost inadvertently avoided it. Nonetheless, the cruiserweight champion here. Not going with anything pretty, just trying to smash the one and only's face up against the canvas. Respect is there by these two gentlemen. When the championship is on the line, it's any means necessary to walk out of Tampa tonight with the win. Ray off the X Factor, into the cover. And Ricochet kicks out. Ray has not gone for that 619 yet. That move, followed by a frog splash moments later, is really what paid him dividends this past Sunday night at the Royal Rumble. If Ray can hit those big time maneuvers in that combination, it may be all she wrote for the one and only. And a springboard moonsault by the challenger. And once again, Ricochet into the cover on Ray. But Ray again gets the shoulder off. And Ricochet, you see him questioning there. He thought he had a three. That was multiple occasions throughout this match that Ricochet almost won back the Cruiserweight Championship. Held the title for 189 days, only looking to go a few days without it. Looking to start his second reign here on SmackDown with the gold. Rey Mysterio trying to avoid that at all costs. So wait a minute, we're heading to the top rope here. Ray splits right, or Ricochet with a bulldog for the top rope. We've seen Mysterio Defeat Roderick Strong a few weeks ago with that very maneuver. But Ricochet gets the shoulder up. How close was that? It was that very bulldog a few weeks ago here on SmackDown that Rey Mysterio used on Roderick Strong to become the number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. Ricochet was able to avoid it, now catches Rey in a powerbomb position into a fireman's carry and hangs him up on the top rope. Ricochet has done his homework tonight. He has changed up the game plan from Sunday night, and he's coming out swinging Phoenix Splash. And now again, into the cover by the one and only. Oh, and Mysterio at the very last second, 2.9. The championship stays with the master of the 619, at least for another moment, in your opening matchup here tonight in Tampa. 
Man, high implications on the road to WrestleMania here tonight on SmackDown. This Cruiserweight Championship matchup says it all. As Rey Mysterio goes to the outside, and the one and only here is trying to put together his next maneuver. Rey is dazed, trying to get his wits about him, but Ricochet with the corkscrew over the top rope. Nobody can do it like the one and only in there. One of the most innovative towns we have ever seen inside the squared circle, pulling out all the stops tonight to take down Rey Mysterio. You see Ricochet hit moves that he didn't hit on Sunday, didn't even attempt to on Sunday. Maybe, oh, wait a minute here. Rey Mysterio on the outside of the ring. Look at this. He's going for a three amigos out there. Forget inside the ring. On the outskirts, he's gonna do more damage. A three amigos by Rey Mysterio, paying homage to the late great Eddie Guerrero, the man who won the inaugural SmackDown Rumble back in 2004. We're gonna see the second one of those here tonight in your main event from Tampa, but Rey Mysterio continues to fight on the outside on the challenger for the Cruiserweight Championship. Now we're not done with the ringside action. A code red on the outside by Rey. Referee's at a count of seven here. Rey Mysterio ain't the kind of guy who's gonna wanna win, win this matchup, excuse me, by count out. Ricochet's day is all right, look at that, breaking up the count. He wants to go back at Ricochet. Rey wants to win this thing fair and square, up on the shoulders, and a hurt at Conorana. Frankensteiner takes down Ricochet. And count the one and only, there's him throwing Rey into the barricade. This championship matchup has broken town into a Pier 6 brawl. As we mentioned earlier, the respect is there by these two combatants, but when the championship is on the line, any means necessary to walk away with the prestigious Cruiserweight Championship of the world. We mentioned it, or we were about to mention it earlier, but Ricochet's going for maneuvers tonight that he didn't necessarily go for on Sunday. You gotta think if Ricochet was maybe starting to feel a little comfortable at the top of the Cruiserweight division, maybe that's what cost him this past Sunday. And now the one and only's got his edge back without the championship. Now he feels like he's out to prove something tonight against Rey Mysterio. Nonetheless, we are back inside the squared circle, Ray's on the top rope, Ricochet trying to avoid disaster there, and he takes down the champion. Now, what has the challenger got in mind? He's heading back to the top rope. Rey Mysterio on spaghetti legs right now, and here comes the challenger. What a maneuver! And immediately into the cover. Oh, but Rey Mysterio barely you see the lack of enthusiasm in that kick out. Enough to survive, but Rey Mysterio, the damage is certainly taking a toll on the champion. Incredible maneuver by the one and only. Almost like a West Coast pop Frankenstein or similar to Rey Mysterio's old maneuver back in the day. And now Rey into the cover on a challenger, but Ricochet gets the shoulder off. And this is how you kick off the first Friday Night SmackDown on the road to WrestleMania. This is how you kick off Friday Night SmackDown just less than three weeks away from the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view in Anaheim. Ricochet's down, Mysterio's heading to the top rope. Oh no, goes for the frog splash. Ricochet got the knees up. You remember, Ray hit that frog splash this past Sunday night in Toronto to win the gold. Now Ricochet, Inside Cradle here, Rey Mysterio, that may be all she wrote. Ref was a little bit out of position, but Rey survives. And I've oh wait a minute, Rey Mysterio, look at this. Gets Ricochet in position, dial up the cell phones, a six, a one, and a nine. Rey Mysterio tried for the frog splash earlier. It missed, but he hits the six, one, nine flush, and it's enough to win the matchup. What a fantastic. Cruiserweight battle here to kick us off in Tampa Bay tonight. Ricochet throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the Cruiserweight champion, but Rey Mysterio is operating on a Hall of Fame level right now, retains the Cruiserweight Championship in his first defense here tonight on Friday Night SmackDown. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Rey Mysterio. Nothing to be ashamed of from the one and only. Ricochet will live to fight another day, but tonight here in Tampa, the Cruiserweight Championship of the World is leaving with the master of the 619, Ray Mysterio. What a way to kick us off here in Tampa.
number one contender for the WWE Championship could possibly put Alexander in line for a future shot of the gold as well. A big time main event, RVD getting a little warm up before Sunday. Cedric Alexander possibly getting a WrestleMania opportunity in some ways. Here we go with your main event. Target center is rocking. Minneapolis, Alexander, RVD. And Alexander immediately off the get-go, taking the fight to the number one contender. Respect there between these two men. We saw them shake the hands back on December the 28th, but tonight is not about respect. It's about the competition inside of the ring, and it's about getting the W on the road to WrestleMania. Cedric Alexander also has got to be thinking about where RVD's head's at. Is RVD already mentally in Anaheim to fight Randy Orton this Sunday? If that's the case, Cedric Alexander is going to be able to take advantage of the opportunity tonight to possibly get an upset over the number one contender. RVD obviously no, no slouch, excuse me, a number one contender for a reason, a WWE Hall of Famer for a reason. A man who has been the WWE Champion before, and he's looking to do it again this Sunday against an old rival in Randy Orton. Remember back in 2007, Randy Orton kicked Randy, or excuse me, kicked RVD in the head so hard, RVD went away for several years here in the WWE. Orton's first win, first championship win here in the WWE also came over RVD. Like an Armageddon in December of 2003 for the Intercontinental Championship. And a current Hall of Famer and a future Hall of Famer, two decorated careers meeting once again this Sunday in Anaheim, California. And Cedric Alexander not interested in this Sunday. He is focused on Minneapolis tonight, and he has taken the fight to Rob Van Dam. Alexander all over the number one contender. He knows the opportunity that's at hand, and he's looking to capitalize to the fullest. RVD, on the other hand, wants to keep his momentum in a firm way tonight. Super kick, follows it up with a beautiful standing moonsault. Now, Mr. Monday Night trying to prove why he is a legitimate threat to Randy Orton's WWE Championship reign this Sunday. Oh, and went to the moonsault again, but Cedric had scouted that time. Now, one half of a former tag team champion and a former cruiserweight champion as well, Cedric Alexander, back in control of your main event tonight in Minneapolis. RVD with the counter, and takes out the leg of Cedric. These two tore down the house on December the 28th here on Raw. RVD picked up the victory. That was ahead of the Royal Rumble. Now, Cedric Alexander with an opportunity to get that win back here tonight. Meanwhile, RVD on the other hand needs to keep that momentum ahead of this Sunday. Split-legged moonsault, a classic out of the Hall of Famer. Into the cover, but only a one count. Cedric Alexander, I'm sure, has watched the tape back over and over again to scout his match with RVD and to try to find a weakness here tonight. Nice reversal there by Alexander. There's a reversal by RVD and a clothesline for the number one contender. Back and forth we go. There's another reversal by Cedric. Springboard goes for the moonsault there, I believe. Our cross body. RVD caught him in the rib cage with that kick. Cedric counters again. Back and forth the momentum goes in this match. Cedric into the cover here on Van Dam, and Van Dam gets the shoulder off. Alexander is not looking to see this opportunity slip through his fingers here tonight. As we mentioned, a win over the number one contender could possibly put Cedric Alexander in line to fight the WWE Champion, whether that be Rob Van Dam or Randy Orton, possibly before the champion gets to WrestleMania. Alexander gets caught with a drop kick by RVD and a nice senton there by Mr. Monday Night. Again, RVD outlasted Austin Theory in a physical ladder match a few weeks back here on Monday Night Raw to obtain the number one contendership for Randy Orton's WWE Championship. RVD has absolutely earned the opportunity. Remember, he was number 30 in the Royal Rumble matchup. Came down to the final two with the man who ended up winning the whole thing, that being the original bro, Matt Riddle. RVD was so close to punching his ticket to WrestleMania, but now through that ladder match a few weeks back, finds a new opportunity, a new path ahead for RVD. Will he be able to capitalize he got get to really run it back with Matt Riddle at WrestleMania. He's got to get through Randy Orton first. So RVD would love nothing more than to win the WWE Championship 
defeat Randy Orton, an old rival once again. Oh, nice counter by Cedric. Cedric Alexander with the Spanish fly out of nowhere. Into the cover, gonna knock off Van Dam. Van Dam gets the shoulder up, but what a counter. RVD went for that spinning leg lariat. Cedric ducked, and he was able Oh, wait a minute. Oh, but could have been going for the lumbar check there. He was able to hit the Spanish fly. RVD survives. And they smell the sense of urgency out of Mr. Monday Night. And what a counter that was by Cedric Alexander. Van Dam back into it, but you know the damage has got to be done off an emphatic maneuver like that. With such ease, Cedric Alexander able to spin the body of the number one contender when crashing on the canvas, but now finds himself in a predicament on the top rope as RVD is looking to take Alexander for a ride here. Superplex, and Alexander's spine has got to be crying for mercy right now. Big time maneuver for Mr. Monday Night. And now RVD sends Alexander to the corner. And now unloading on the opponent. Number of kicks there. RVD knows how to utilize those feet almost better than anybody. And sends Alexander for another ride. Van Dam's looking good. Really started to pick up the pace. Ever since Alexander caught him with that Spanish fly, it was a sense of urgency out of RVD. Not looking to come up short here tonight ahead of his matchup with Randy Orton in Anaheim this Sunday. Nice maneuver by RVD. A classic leg drop by RVD. Nobody does it better than the whole damn show himself. Now RVD, look at this, hitting the ropes. Speaking of classics, a rolling thunder into the cover. And that's got to do it. RVD going to pick up the victory. No, Cedric Alexander gets the shoulder up. These two men might be topping their matchup from December the 28th right now. That one tore down the house in Houston. Now tonight they're doing it again in Minneapolis. And my God, are they up in the ante. Cedric countered again. RVD countered and followed it up with a bulldog. And Van Dam's got to be wondering how the hell Cedric Alexander was able to kick out of that rolling thunder. Out of all the offense in this matchup, you would have believed that would have been the final nail in the coffin. Now Van Dam, springboard, moonsault. RVD's looking good right now. Both men going for shots, and both men crashing and burning. Gotta watch, gotta slow down the pace. Don't call it high risk for nothing. Look at Alexander, he's unloading on Van Dam. RVD now giving Cedric a taste of his own medicine. Forearm. More of an elbow, a little bit of a forearm in there. But now, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Poison Rana by RVD. And Cedric Alexander has got to be staring up at the stars right now. Van Dam up top. Boots, so but he crashes and burns. Alexander out of the way. Cedric has still got heart. He's still got fight. He's testing his intestinal fortitude right now in this matchup against RVD. Wait a minute. Look at this. Into the crucifix, but Alexander saved by the ropes right there. What is it going to take as RVD whips Cedric off into the corner? And damn, now putting Cedric back up on the top rope. We've been here earlier in the matchup. We are back here again. Could be looking for a Frankensteiner, and he hits it, and Cedric goes dead center of the ring. And now Van Dam going where he's most comfortable. Back on top. Oh, look at this. Right in the wrong from a few moments ago. Moonsault, dead center of the ring. Nowhere to go. RVD picks up the victory here tonight on Raw. What a matchup. Absolutely topping their fight from Houston on December the 28th. Minneapolis getting a treat here tonight. Rob Van Dam successful over Cedric Alexander and is in the driver's seat ahead of his match with Randy Orton this Sunday for the WWE Championship. Here is your winner, Rob Van Dam. RV, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Speaking of the WWE Champion, Randy Orton has hit the ring and a cheap shot to RVD. Orton's looking to take an advantage ahead of Sunday. But RVD, look at this, fighting back, and down goes the champion. Rob Van Dam ain't having none of it. The adrenaline's still, it's still fueling. And a senton, Randy Orton finds himself in a predicament as RVD is looking to make a statement. Orton's down, RVD's headed up to the middle rope. Van Dam going for a splash, but Orton got out of the way. 
A brawl has ensued ahead of this Sunday's Elimination Chamber. These two men set the ballot out for the WWE Championship, and RVD turning the lights off for Randy Orton off that super kick. And we are going to find out what that matchup is going to be after the second bell sounds tonight. The chamber has closed. The matchup is officially set. And the bell has sounded. We are officially underway. Finn Balor and Robert Roode kicking things off inside the elimination chamber. Same rules apply as earlier tonight, of course. Pinfall submission, the only way to be eliminated. Last man standing is going to WrestleMania. Robert Roode going to go early, but Balor not able to get it done just yet. This match, as we mentioned earlier, only gets more dangerous, only gets more chaotic as the ring begins to fill up with superstars. We will find out our first entry into this matchup from one of the four pods in just a moment. Right now, Roode and Balor going at it alone. It's another singles matchup I would love to see in due time on Friday Night SmackDown. Roode, of course, along with LA Knight, the last to qualify for this matchup this past week on SmackDown in that tag team affair. But who is going to join Roode and Balor as the third entrant in Elimination Chamber? Who's it going to be? It is going to be... The Scottish Warrior! Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre enters the Elimination Chamber matchup and a superstar of this size. That man's strength, that man's caliber. Now put him inside of this structure, only gonna make him more dangerous. Just stacked Balor and Root up like Cordwood in the corner, now taking the fight to the glorious Root, a man he's got history with, a man he dethroned back in 2017 for the NXT title. Now, just like that, you see how the complexion of the match changes. Balor and McIntyre, excuse me, Balor and Rude were going at it. McIntyre entered the matchup, and suddenly all eyes are on the Scottish Warrior as Balor goes to the top rope, but is met with a shot to the rib cage by McIntyre. Fourth entrant coming up. This matchup turns from a three to a four way. Cena, LA Knight, and Mustafa Ali inside of the chamber, and it's gonna be the defiant LA Knight, a man who's had a lot of issues with Drew McIntyre over the last few weeks. Remember prior to the Royal Rumble, McIntyre defeated Knight on SmackDown. LA Knight dropped him with a low blow after the match. And then LA Knight, you know, it was his second opportunity this past week on SmackDown, as McIntyre had originally defeated him in an Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup. Look at that, no rest for the weary Rude and LA Knight showing no love. They might have qualified for this match together this past Friday, but it's every man for himself when you step inside the Elimination Chamber with an opportunity to main event WrestleMania on the line. Oh, and Balor McIntyre going out on the outside. Nice code breaker on the outside by Balor, and LA Knight takes down Rude up the moonsault. And the superstar is just going to keep on coming until this ring is filled with six. Ali and Cena stare across the ring from each other. Who is going to be the fifth entrant? And it is the former United States champion, the heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown, Mustafa Ali. Ali, again, as we mentioned, won the United States Championship back on December the 9th at the All-Star kickoff. Lost it just... 11 days later on the 21st of December at Saturday night's main event to the man you saw in that ring earlier, the almighty Bobby Lashley. How sweet would it be if Ali is able to right those wrongs and kick in the door of 2023 by becoming the number one contender for the world championship. And you got to feel that Ali would be pretty confident heading into WrestleMania after all the history of victories he owns over Seth Rollins find out if that'll be the case the next time we hear the bell we see how chaotic this matchup has got with five superstars how chaotic is it gonna get when you add a six the franchise john cena gonna be added to the fray right here right now cena's pod door opens and all six men have entered the elimination chamber Remember, eliminations can occur at any time by pinfall or submission. And you see the chaos as all six men are teeing off on each other right now. McIntyre and Cena rolling away. And I might be wrong, but I believe McIntyre may have a cut over the eye. I'm not exactly sure it's from our vantage point, but I believe McIntyre 
Maybe he's showing some wounds inside the Elimination Chamber. Power slam Cena. Remember, those two men got a history. John Cena originally qualified to face Seth Rollins back at the Royal Rumble by defeating Drew McIntyre. McIntyre goes back after LA Knight. Unfinished business between those two men. Mustafa Ali going after John Cena. Ali actually owns a victory over John Cena. What a date back to last August on Monday Night Raw. Ali has defeated the franchise in his history. Big time Tornado DDT to Cena as we speak. Oh, he's not done yet. Make it a dose by Ali. Down goes Cena again, I believe. John Cena, oh, that's a big gash from our vantage point. John Cena has also been busted wide open. The Elimination Chamber calling these men to take a sacrifice for their wants and needs here tonight. Rudo must eliminate Cena with the pinfall on Balor. Referee's a little out of position. There's the cover. Balor gets the shoulder up. And all these men got history with each other. Robert Rude had defeated Mustafa Ali to qualify for the All-Star kickoff. Same thing with John Cena defeating Finn Balor. At the end of the day, you are looking at six of Friday Night SmackDown's top superstars. And Whoever wins this matchup will certainly be a deserving challenger to fight Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Meanwhile, take a look at the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre, who sails to the outside of the ring with an elbow drop on LA Knight. Into the cover. First elimination coming. Not just yet as LA Knight gets the shoulder up. Well, what a maneuver by McIntyre. Throwing caution in the win. Any means necessary to get the win here tonight. Robert Roode laying out. Mustafa Ali in the, in the ring, Balor laying out Cena, McIntyre throwing LA Knight into the wall. A lot of action to cover here inside of this demonic structure. McIntyre again heading up to the top rope, delivers another elbow. I think only caught a little bit of LA Knight there. Rude and Ali on the outside, Cena and Balor on the other end. McIntyre trying to eliminate LA Knight again in this matchup, and LA Knight gets the shoulder up. Now Cena again. This is the second time referee's been a little out of the vantage point. Cena trying to eliminate Finn Balor. Two count here, but Balor gets the shoulder up. And Cena might have had Balor there, had the referee not been focused on McIntyre and Knight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mustafa Ali is climbing the side of the Elimination Chamber, taking flight! Ali with the crossbody to Robert Roode. Sacrifice to win, and there's an elimination. Our first casualty of the Elimination Chamber, Robert Roode's ribs getting crushed. And now Balor trying to eliminate Cena on the outside of the ring, Cena breaking out of it, but I cannot believe what we just saw moments ago. Mustafa Ali sacrificed to succeed. That crossbody off the wall of the chamber, crushing the windpipe of Robert Roode and an elimination by Ali. Roode, the first man to hit the showers in the elimination chamber tonight. That brings us down to five. Wait a minute, Cena. Balor's down and out. Cena's looking for a little bit of that five. Knuckle shuffle to Finn Balor. And that may be all she wrote on the Prince's Evening here in Anaheim. And it is. Balor has been eliminated. And just like that, we are down to four. Balor gone by hands of Cena. Rude gone by hands of Ali. And we are down to four men to decide who goes to WrestleMania. The defiant LA Knight, the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre, the heart and soul of SmackDown and Mustafa Ali, and the franchise, John Cena. And what a fight this has been. Cena and McIntyre showing wounds, rocking the crimson mask in this elimination chamber. Ali throwing caution in the wind. This is what main event in WrestleMania means to these superstars. And whoever fights Seth Rollins is certainly going to be a deserving challenger. And Rollins is absolutely going to have his hands full on the grandest stage of them all. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that. Out of nowhere. An attitude adjustment to LA Knight. Came up from behind and caught him. LA Knight him. has been eliminated. LA Knight had laid out, I believe, Drew McIntyre. And then he turned around into an attitude adjustment. Cena eliminates Knight. And we are down to three men. Ali, who is ruling the ring. And look at that. Going for 
for that Koji clutch on John Cena. Ali's got it locked in. If Cena taps, we will be down to two. Ali's oh, got a wrench, but Cena able to counter there. Cena with blood gushing from the forehead. Correct me if I'm wrong, but McIntyre, McIntyre is still gushing as well. Mustafa Ali, God knows the condition of him after he dove off the chamber a couple of minutes ago. But nonetheless, we are down to three men inside of the elimination chamber. And Seth Rollins has got to not love the choices. It's going to be a lose-lose situation. Quite possibly for the visionary of WWE at WrestleMania, Ali to eliminate McIntyre, not just yet. So Ali eliminated Rude. Cena has eliminated both Finn Balor and LA Knight from this matchup. Cena taking the fight tonight, and now Cena goes for the DDT. McIntyre says otherwise. Nice counter there by the Warrior. Goes for the Claymore, I believe, but Cena sidestepped it. And now finds McIntyre finds himself in a predicament. Little count out Drew. Kips up, and there's the strength from John Cena off the counter. And sends McIntyre into the turnbuckles. Now Cena to eliminate McIntyre to bring this thing to a 1v1, but McIntyre survives. Mustafa Ali's got to keep his eye on the ball. There's John Cena coming up from behind on Ali. Got to give the former United States champion credit. The heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown's proven his worth. Wait a minute, small package by McIntyre. Cena's going to be gone. No, Cena breaks out of it. So close to another elimination there. On a McIntyre coming unhinged, stomping away on the heart of the franchise of WWE, John Cena. Keep your eye on Ali. Tornado DDT out of nowhere. And Ali super kicked to John Cena. Drop kick to McIntyre. Mustafa Ali is ruling the squared circle right now. Will Ali be the one to go to WrestleMania and face an old rival? Wait a minute, Cena. Attitude adjustment to Ali. Will it be another elimination for Cena? It is. Ali has been eliminated. Cena with his third elimination, and we are down to two men. The Scottish Warrior versus the franchise. Drew McIntyre versus John Cena. One of these men are gonna main event WrestleMania for the World Heavyweight Championship. As Cena comes off the top rope, hell bent on punching his ticket to the show of shows. And Cena has cleared house in this matchup. You gotta say the odds on favorite. Fighting through the pain, fighting through the wounds, the scars, the blood trickling from the forehead of Cena. He eliminated Rude, he, or excuse me, he eliminated LA Knight, he eliminated Finn Balor, he eliminated Mustafa Ali. Is Drew McIntyre gonna be next? Cena wants a third shot at, or excuse me, at Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. He failed at the All-Star kickoff. He failed at the Royal Rumble. Could he succeed at the show of shows? Or will McIntyre be the one standing across the ring from Seth Rollins? Will McIntyre right the wrongs of 2022 and bounce back in 2023 in the Friday Night SmackDown main event in Tampa Bay, Florida? Sits out with the power bomb to go to WrestleMania. Not just yet as Cena gets the shoulder up. Man, we have got a fight on hand. The final two men inside your main event, the Elimination Chamber, Honda Center, Anaheim, California, Sunday night, January the 22nd, 2023. McIntyre wants to pummel John Cena. And Seth Rollins has got to be watching this match on the edge of his seat right now. Does he want to go three for three? versus John Cena, or does he want to test himself against Drew McIntyre? Only time will tell as McIntyre lays out Cena again. You gotta say Cena's the favorite after he's already has three eliminations in this matchup, but at the end of the day, both these men are battered and bruised, bleeding from the forehead. And neither one of these men want to give up the opportunity to fight for the title at Mania. McIntyre is unloading with a little bit of everything in the kitchen sink on John right now. What a overhead throw. The strength from this guy. Drew McIntyre is on a rampage in Anaheim. 
Cena has not been able to fight back the last minute or so. McIntyre has been all over Cena. You notice he hasn't gone for a pinfall just yet. He knows he's got to inflict more punishment on Cena to keep him down for good. McIntyre's rocking the Crimson Mask. John Cena's got color. Who is going to go to WrestleMania? Hit to the gut, continuing the offense. McIntyre, I guess, doesn't trust the offense just yet. Doesn't trust that he's done enough to keep Cena down. Not going for the pinfall here. You can't knock McIntyre. Wants to do everything he can to keep Cena out of it, but did he wait too long? There's a counter by Cena. Did McIntyre miss his chance? As now Cena muscles up the big man and sends him down to the canvas. And now Cena into the cover. Is he going to WrestleMania? McIntyre, only a one count there on Drew. That just shows the heart and the resilience of the Scottish Warrior and a hit toss by the franchise player. Kip up by McIntyre, neck breaker by Drew. Back and forth, the momentum swings inside the Elimination Chamber, goes for the Tomahawk chop off the top rope, but Cena sidesteps it. And now John Cena, oh my goodness, a hurricane run in the ring. Unorthodox maneuver out of the franchise arsenal, but any means necessary to win this contest tonight. Cena wrenching it in on Drew McIntyre right now. Clearly, McIntyre is feeling the damage from this Elimination Chamber match. Cena drags McIntyre and just sends him over the top rope. McIntyre, dead weight, not able to stop his momentum. He goes crashing on the floor. Now, wait a minute, Cena. Oh, no. Pinfall and submission counts on the outside. He's got the STFU locked in tight. If McIntyre taps out, Cena's going to WrestleMania. We saw an elimination on the outskirts of the ring earlier. Are we going to see another? Oh my goodness, look at the strength from Drew McIntyre. How the hell did he just break out of that? Any mortal man would have passed out moments ago, but McIntyre still has a fire inside of him. And now Drew McIntyre sends John Cena right into the pod. And he's not done just yet. Look at this, just grinding John Cena's head up against the steel. Did you hear that? Did you hear the thud? The carnage of Elimination Chamber is being played out before our very eyes as Cena gets set into the ring. McIntyre scales the rope. The big man from the top drops the elbow on Cena. Cena's down, McIntyre, oh my goodness, look at the strength, gut wrench, power bomb, sits out with it into the cover. Drew McIntyre is going to WrestleMania. Holy, what a main event. What a deserving challenger to headline one half of the Friday Night SmackDown main event for the World Heavyweight Championship at the grandest stage of the ball. Here is your winner, Drew McIntyre. Look into the eyes of the challenger, the man who will try to knock Seth Rollins off the top of the mountain at the grandest stage of the ball. WrestleMania, the Friday Night SmackDown main event has officially been signed. The Visionary versus the Scottish Warrior, Seth freaking Rollins versus the winner of the Elimination Chamber, Drew McIntyre. What a main event. What a night here at Anaheim. The next time. Mania Saturday, so it is time to find out. Kicking us off here on Saturday night's main event, who is going to battle Pete Dunne for the Intercontinental Gold? Will it be Big E or will it be Ilya Dragunov? First time ever, let's get it going here in Atlanta. This is going to be one hell of a night. Matt Riddle, Austin Theory battling it out for Riddle's Royal Rumble victory. And a chance to fight Randy Orton for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Also still to come tonight, a grudge match from Friday Night SmackDown and a Falls Count Anywhere Affair. Happy Corbin battles the strange and disturbing Dexter Loomis. All that and more tonight here at Atlanta State Farm Arena. Nice move by Dragunov there to take down the bigger competitor. First time these two men are ever locking horns, not just in a WWE, WWE ring, excuse me, but anywhere. 
Big E, a decorated tag team competitor throughout his career, but he is a former NXT champion, a former Intercontinental champion as well. Ilya Dragunov was the man to dethrone the 870-day reign of Imperium's Walter for the NXT United Kingdom Championship at one point as well. Right now, Big E using his strength on the smaller competitor. We just mentioned Ilya Dragunov. He defeated Walter for the NXT United Kingdom Championship, so he knows how to defeat the bigger competitors. As Big E tackles down off that slam Dragunov there. Speaking of Walter, this past edition of Friday Night SmackDown, he defeated Tyler Bate in the main event. And the ring general will battle the almighty Bobby Lashley for the first time ever for the United States Championship on WrestleMania Sunday. What a matchup that is going to be. WrestleMania is taking, starting to take shape, and both nights are looking to be incredible. From what I'm hearing around the locker room, we got a couple of major announcements regarding WrestleMania still to come tonight here on Saturday night's main event. So stay tuned all throughout this broadcast from Atlanta, Georgia. Big E to the cover, but not watching the rope right there. Oh no, a little bit uncharacteristic for the big man. Off the top rope, drops the elbow on Dragunov. Any means necessary to move on to WrestleMania though, but again, not watching the rope break. Got to drag Dragunov's feet away from the ropes. That was a costly misstep by Big E. Big E's tag team partners. Oh, nice counter by Dragunov. Big E's tag team partners, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods of the New Day. We'll be battling Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic this coming Monday night on Raw in the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Of course, the winners are going to move on to WrestleMania Saturday to fight in the finals of that tournament, so could be a big weekend at WrestleMania in Tampa. If Big E can win this match and the New Day can win their match on Raw, it could be a very New Day WrestleMania weekend. Big E getting back into this fight. Again, this is the first time these two men have ever stepped foot in the ring with each other. Whole new experience in there. Big E with a big time splash to drag it off. And that may be all she wrote. Going to WrestleMania, not just yet as Elia Drago is able to muscle up the big man. Impressive kick out there, but Big E definitely doing some damage to his opponent. Oh, could be looking. Oh, wait a minute. Nice counter by Dragunov. Could be looking for the big ending, but Dragunov saw it coming. Using that bare knee to the skull of Big E. And this is where the invincible Dragunov's got to get back into this fight here. Who will battle Pete Dunne for the Intercontinental Championship? Raymond James Stadium, Tampa Bay, Florida. WrestleMania Saturday, February 25th. Oh no, Big E, another slam to Dragunov. Big E really using his power to his advantage in this matchup. And he does it again with that pump handle, taking Ilya down to the canvas. Big E's a former Intercontinental Champion. He knows what it's like to hold that gold. He wants to do it again in his hometown of Tampa Bay. The only thing standing between that opportunity right now is Ilya Dragunov with an impressive chop by the Invincible One. Falls up with a senton there. Gonna throw any, everything in the kitchen sink at Big E to keep him down. And a nice lariat there by Dragunov. Gotta keep his eye on the ball there. Dragunov trying to build some momentum, get this crown Atlanta behind him. And a takedown on the big man again. It'll be an awesome night here in Atlanta. State Farm Arena is rocking. This is your final live premiere before we get to WrestleMania. Saturday night's main event. Big E is down, and oh no, wait a minute, Dragunov gonna head to the top rope. Big E did this earlier. Dragunov dropping a knee right to the heart of Big E. And will that do it to go to Mania? Not just yet. Those exposed knees of Ilya Dragunov gonna inflict more damage than anybody as he delivers one right to the Chrome Dome of Big E. Big E's not rocking knee pads either, but you see Dragunov's the only one utilizing that body part there. The Big E, look at this, striking with Dragunov. Dragunov definitely the heavier striker between these two, but Big E not afraid to throw some hands. Dragunov into the corner. Now Big E again. This is where he used the strength to his advantage. Sends Dragunov for a ride. Now splits the legs of the opponent. Falls it up with an elbow. Big E trying to get back into this. It started off really Big E heavy in the opening moments of this matchup. Dragunov had a little bit of a comeback there. 
I don't see Big E getting back. Dragon off now gets back. You know what? Who is going to get the upper hand and punch their ticket to the grandest stage of them all in just 17 nights? Nice drop kick to the back by Dragon off, but he's got to take advantage while the big man's down. Big E went for a haymaker there. Dragon off avoids it. Look at this. Swing. Hip breaker. Takes down Big E. And now back to the second rope. The Invincible goes for the knee, but Big E gets out of the way. And that may have cost Dragunov. The high-risk maneuver did not pay off. Power bomb by the New Day's big man. And that may be all she wrote for Dragunov in this matchup. Big E starting to unload on the Invincible. Goes back to that slam. It has worked throughout this matchup. Wait a minute. Small package by Ilya Dragunov. Almost stole the victory to go to WrestleMania, but not just yet. Close call there by the Invincible. Goes for that chop. Big E able to counter. Oh, no. There's a big power slam. And Big E could be looking for that big time splash for the second time in the match. Dead center of the ring. And that's going to be it. Big E is heading to his hometown. WrestleMania not just yet as Dragunov gets the shoulder off the canvas. What a match to kick us off here from Atlanta. The Intercontinental Championship means so much to both of these competitors. Neither want to pass the opportunity up. Dragunov avoids the big ending again. Nice takedown. Fouls it up with a senton. A second gear here by the former NXT United Kingdom Champion. But may have had a little too much gas right there. But oh, there's another counter by Dragunov. It's now or never. If Big E hits another one of those splashes or hits a big ending, there's no way Dragunov is going to be able to scrape his body off the canvas. Big E being brought to his feet by the invincible Dragunov. There's a counter. And who's it going to be? Pete Dunne's going to be watching this match. Laser focus trying to scout his potential opponents for WrestleMania Saturday on February 25th. Look at this, the ground and pound by Big E. Any means necessary to punch his ticket to the show of shows. But there's Dragunov. We have got a slugfest here in the opening bout. Atlanta's getting a good one for the Intercontinental Championship contendership. Back and forth we go, and now Dragunov's into the corner. State Farm Arena's rocking. Ilya, full steam ahead. And Big E, his lights may be knocked out for good. No, Big E gets the shoulder up and the matchup rolls on another moment. What a fight. Big E is still down though and Ilya Dragunov is going for the kill. Back in the corner, the invincible one, locked and loaded. Down goes the New Day's Big E again. Cover. And Dragunov is going to WrestleMania. That was one hell of a fight. And Pete Dunne, the bruiser weight, is going to have his hands full on WrestleMania Saturday. An absolutely earned victory over the New Day's big man tonight and the former NXT United Kingdom champion, the invincible Ilya Dragunov is going to the show of shows. Here is your winner. Two of the United Kingdom's best will meet for the prestigious WWE Intercontinental Championship. Rhodes' father was honored earlier tonight in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, but now the prodigal son takes center stage here in Tampa Bay, Florida. And the matchup is underway. The bell has sounded. Cody Rhodes is back. And Austin Theory is looking to spoil the American Nightmare's dream. Tampa Bay, Florida can't believe their eyes right now. Cody Rhodes here at WrestleMania. And he's taking the fight to Austin Theory. Look at the aggression. Look at the passion pouring out of Cody. As Austin Theory bit off more than he can chew tonight on the grandest stage of them all. That is the question that is soon going to be answered. As Cody Rhodes drops Austin Theory with a DDT. 
This may be Cody Rhodes' return to the WWE, but he has been active as all hell ever since he left in 2016. He is back, and he is better than ever in the prime of his career tonight here at WrestleMania. But Austin Theory doesn't give a damn about Cody Rhodes' story. He does not want Cody to come and finish the story at WrestleMania. He wants to spoil the return of Cody Rhodes here in Tampa Bay, Florida. Austin Theory heading to the top rope. Cody Rhodes down and out, and Theory with a splash. Uncharacteristic for the young man, but wants the victory more than ever. Austin Theory, I believe I have a cut over the eye. I cannot really see from my vantage point. The offensive flurry from Cody Rhodes may have opened up the wound of Austin Theory here tonight at WrestleMania. What a scoop and a slam by the American Nightmare. A count of two when Theory gets the shoulder up. Austin Theory, still very young in his career here at WrestleMania, but you remember the 2022 Austin Theory had from debuting on the main roster to several months later winning the WWE Championship back on August the 7th at Extreme Rules. He may have only held the title for 34 days up until Judgment Day, losing it back to the rated R Superstar Edge last year, but still Austin Theory turned a lot of heads in 2022. A rivalry with John Cena that lasted three matches. Austin Theory get, got his hand raised in one of them. Cannot count out Austin Theory. Yes, he's young. Yes, he may be naive in the eyes of men like Cody Rhodes, but Theory's going to have a long career ahead of him here in WWE. Tonight, Cody Rhodes wants the spotlight on him, and Austin Theory has something to say about it. But here comes Cody, slingshot DDT on the apron. Cody Rhodes swinging for absolute fences tonight. Looking for a home run. Suicide dive to the outside. The American Nightmare is not wasting any motion tonight. He is bringing the fight to Austin Theory. Cody was set to return here at WrestleMania. Theory wanted the, no pun intended, road to the grandest stage of them all. So saw Cody as an opportunity to get on the marquee, and that is what gets us to this matchup here tonight. Meanwhile, Cody Rhodes scaling the top rope by Austin Theory is trying to get Tampa Bay behind him. And what a DDT by the American Nightmare, who is feeling it here at WrestleMania. No, oh, Austin Theory has definitely opened up. If he wasn't before, that DDT certainly didn't add, or help it, I should say, ate it in any way, and Cody Rhodes continues to unload on Theory in the corner. Cody Rhodes' first WrestleMania since 2016, finally back home here in WWE with a long career ahead. But right now, it's about getting the victory on Austin Theory! And maneuvers like that are certainly gonna help! Theory gets the shoulder up, but Cody Rhodes, talk about adding some tricks to the trade during his time away here in WWE. A brain buster on the turnbuckle. Austin Theory, we mentioned he was a WWE Champion for just over a month last year. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Cena on several occasions. One of those matches being the last man standing. He is a tough young kid, and he is going to bring the fight to Cody Rhodes, whether we like the attitude of him or not. And Theory's trying in this matchup, but Cody Rhodes is all over him here, and I'm rolling him up for the pinfall, but not just yet. Theory with a shot, and Theory really needs to start piecing together some maneuvers. Man, we got a closer look there. Theory is really gushing from above the eyebrow, it looks like, as he comes from the top rope. And that happened early on in this matchup. It was in that first minute. Cody Rhodes dropped Austin Theory. I believe it was a DDT that opened up Austin Theory. And the later this matchup goes, that is only going to worsen Austin Theory's chances of getting his hand raised tonight. Going to fatigue you even more. As we get to the later rounds in this matchup. Theory now into the corner. Oh no, here comes Austin Theory. Blockbuster to Cody Rhodes. Theory pulling out the best maneuvers in his arsenal. And that was stalking the American Nightmare. Going for the kick. Austin Theory going eight town down on the American Nightmare. Into the corner, into the cover. And Cody Rhodes gets the shoulder up. 
at basically 2.9. Austin Theory throwing everything in the kitchen sink at Cody. Not even a one count there. We have got one hell of a fight here at WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes has been the aggressor for the majority of this matchup, but Austin Theory certainly turned the tides off those series of maneuvers. Cody Rhodes, this is his first night back in WWE. He does not want to come up short on night one. What a springboard clothesline by Cody. And how good it might feel for Austin Theory. And how big of a head he would get if he is able to spoil the return of Cody Rhodes here at WrestleMania. We're going to find out who is going to win this battle among men here tonight in moments. It has been a war since the opening bell. All about bragging rights, all about shining your star the brightest tonight on the grandest stage of the mall, WrestleMania. No championship, personally no grudges on the line. It is simply about the competition inside that squared circle right now. At the end of the day, this is what WrestleMania is all about. These kind of fights, this kind of atmosphere, this kind of adrenaline out of these two superstars. As Austin Theory goes to the top rope, Cody Rhodes, his wheels are spinning, could be looking for a superplex, or wait a minute, the same brain buster he hit earlier. Go to the well with what works. That is the motto of the American Nightmare tonight. And Cody Rhodes follows it up with a boot right to the eyebrow, or I should say the open wound of Austin Theory. who has been gushing throughout this entire matchup, and Cody following it up with a series of elbow drops to the heart. Cody not done yet. Neither is Austin Theory. Never count out this young man, the former WWE Champion. We're gonna get the biggest win of his young career tonight. Certainly the biggest win of his 2023. Getting whipped off into the corner. Cody Rhodes following up with a little bit of offense. How good it's gonna feel if Cody Rhodes walks into his first WrestleMania in several years and walks away with a victory. Certainly may be on the verge of doing so. And Austin Theory is in trouble. Cody Rhodes has got his eyes locked. I think we know what's coming. Crossroads into the cover. That, whoa, no. Austin Theory gets the shoulder up. Ladies and gentlemen, I was ready to call it. I thought Cody had Austin Theory there. Theory kicked out of the crossroads. And quite frankly, I'm shocked. Austin Theory's been busted open since the opening bell. Cody Rhodes has thrown a little bit of everything and more at Austin Theory, including the, including the crossroads, excuse me. But somehow Theory is still into this thing. But Cody able to counter the suplex from Theory. And you gotta wonder, even though Theory got the shoulder off the canvas, is it because he still has fight left in the tank? Or was it purely out of instinct? There's a bulldog by the American Nightmare. Here he's down, Cody Rhodes, oh no. Heading to the top rope. What has Cody got in mind? Moon Salt! Rhodes wants the victory and he wants it back. And he's not done just yet. Looking to roll up Austin Theory for the pinfall. Make it a dose. Not just yet as Theory kicks out again. Both of these men kick it out of their each other's best maneuvers. His exploder suplex by Austin Theory. Cody kips up. Theory with the neck breaker. Fouls it up with the shooting star. Into the cover. Cody kicks out again. We are witnessing a WrestleMania classic between the now, all day Austin Theory, and the returning American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, who avoided disaster and follows it up with an elbow right to the face of Austin Theory. Now what has Cody got in mind? Off the middle buckle with the Tornado DDT on the bloody head of the all-day superstar. And Cody's got to be shocked. He hit that crossroads, and I bet you believe Cody thought he had it there. Sure, Cody did not come into this match taking Austin Theory lightly. He knows what Theory has accomplished within the last year. 
but nonetheless, the crossroads you thought would have done this thing, but maybe that slam's gonna do it. Theory kicks out again, and this matchup rolls on. I cannot believe it. Cody's gotta be questioned if he's got what it takes to get the victory tonight. Maybe he did underestimate Austin Theory. Maybe he didn't prepare enough for this matchup against the youngest and brightest star on Monday Night Raw. Theory trying to take down Cody. Cody, however. Oh, look at this unique pinfall there into the bridge. Cody, this might do it. One, two, no, Theory kicks out again. You, know, you may not like the attitude, you may not like the actions of Austin Theory, but you cannot knock his efforts. A talented young superstar who is showing his worth tonight at WrestleMania. Meanwhile, Cody Rhodes just wants to walk away with the victory on return night. Oh, look at that, caught Theory into an exploder. And now unloading on Austin Theory. Cody Rhodes is fired up. Raymond James Stadium, Tampa Bay, Florida, 65,000 plus coming unglued for the American Nightmare. What a WrestleMania Saturday it has been. We're nowhere, nowhere near over yet. Meanwhile, Cody avoids Austin Theory's onslaught again. This has been all Cody Rhodes for the last number of minutes. Theory is really just surviving. Cody into the bridge again, and Theory gets the shoulder up. Is it instinct, or does he have gas left in the tank? Quite frankly, it's now or never for Austin Theory. He can't just keep playing defense. At some point, the tank's gonna run empty, and Cody Rose is gonna walk away with the victory. Oh, for the shot, Austin Theory with one of his own. Cody counters again. Cody got the boot of Theory. Axe hammer to Austin. Cody heading back up to the top rope. Going for a clothesline, and he hits it. Several different maneuvers from high risk vantage points in this match by Cody Rhodes, and they've all worked out to fruition. And now following it up with an Alabama slam in Tampa Bay. This has been all Cody Rhodes the last few minutes, but as we mentioned a moment ago, how long can Austin Theory simply survive in this matchup. He needs offense, and he needs offense now. And that may be what is coming, and he's got Cody Rhodes in the corner. Whipping Cody off into the ropes. Discus forearm by Austin Theory. Again, Cody Rhodes trips him up. You cannot knock the hustle of Cody Rhodes tonight, who whips Theory off, goes for the clothesline. Theory able to avoid it. Now Theory going behind on Cody Rhodes. Cody goes behind on Theory. Man, big fight feel right now as the momentum in this matchup starts to hinder back and forth as Cody drops an elbow. Looked like on the back of the neck of Austin Theory. The hell is it gonna take to keep one of these men down tonight at WrestleMania? Cody, oh, he's going for a maneuver there. Austin Theory a little out of the vantage point. But he's gotta stay focused here, cannot. Let his desperation for victory almost drive him off the rails tonight and allow a mistake. Austin Theory, kick to the gut, spinning Cody Rhodes out again! And I don't know if there's any getting up from that. Theory gonna spoil the return of Cody Rhodes, no! You have gotta be kidding me! Cody Rhodes kicked out again and this matchup is still going. What a fight. This is what WrestleMania is all about. As Theory's hung up in the tree of woe, and Cody looks to take the wind out from under him. Mind you, Austin Theory has been busted open since the opening bell. And Cody Rhodes has got his eyes locked on Theory. Grabbing a hold. He could be looking for crossroads number two. And Cody not watching his ring awareness there. Austin Theory's foot under the ropes. Oh wait, Cody, Cody heading back to the top rope. And after the crossroads, follows it up with a moonsault. Into the cover. Theory kicks out. You have gotta be kidding me. I don't know if Austin Theory's foot being under the ropes was able to give him that extra moment of rest, but two crossroads, a bloody forehead, 
And these men throwing every haymaker in their repertoire at each other, and somehow the matchup progresses. It ain't over till we hear a bell. Here he has got Cody in the corner, grounded and pounding by the now of WWE. Theory goes into the cover. Cody is down and out. Will that do it? Cody Rhodes able to muscle Theory off of him. Austin Theory with a kick. Oh no, oh no. Dropping Cody Rhodes. Eight town down. Will that do it? Oh my God. Austin Theory just spoiled the return of the American Nightmare. The hush that has just come over Raymond James Stadium, Tampa Bay, and millions watching around the world cannot believe Cody Rhodes' return was just spoiled by anybody but Austin Theory of all people. I'm shocked to say the least. Here is your winner, Austin Theory. Well, you know what? You may not like Austin Theory, you may not like the way he talks, the way he acts, the way he wrestles, but with blood dripping from the forehead, two crossroads and a hell of a fight later, he is still walking away from WrestleMania with his hand held high. Theory defeats Cody Rhodes. Well, this is going to be a strong style hard-hitting heavyweight affair. Two of SmackDown's best meet on the grandest stage, WrestleMania Sunday. And that is the gold that is on the line. The colors of the red, white, and blue. The United States Championship up for grabs. Walter Lashley, first time ever. The bell has sounded and we are underway. It is going to be very interesting to see who gets the upper hand in the early moments of this matchup. Walter with the size advantage. I don't know if he's got the strength advantage. That remains to be seen. A lot of similarities, yet a lot of differences between these two competitors. And look at that. Who is Ragdoll and Lashley quite like Imperium's ring general? And it does it again with the double underhook. And right off the get-go here, Lashley has taken back-to-back -back falls by the hands of the number one contender. Walter better keep his sights on the United States champion. And down goes Lashley again off the Saito. This has been very interesting already. Walter has taken the fight to Bobby Lashley, followed up with this dragon sleeper. Lashley's feet a little cro close to the ropes there. I think Walter knew he wasn't gonna get the victory anyway off that offense. He just needs to do some damage on the almighty Bobby Lashley. It is not gonna be an easy win for either man. But the United States Championship and so much bragging rights are riding on the line of this contest. This has been all Walter since the opening bell. Lashley has really not mounted any offense yet, but wait a minute, there's a counter. Holy hell, look at that splash! Down goes Walter. It caused a tsunami here in Tampa Bay off that, off that slam by Bobby Lashley. Oh, wait a minute. Speaking of slams, there's one by Walter. This is simply going to be a war of attrition between the Almighty and the Ring General. As Walter immediately picks up Bobby Lashley again for that hesitation suplex. Bobby Lashley, tough as nails, able to get back to his feet and keep fighting, running off adrenaline here tonight as Lashley with a shot right to the dome of the number one contender. Oh my God, oh, look at this. There's the strength by Bobby Lashley on display again. Military press into the gut buster. Walter gets the shoulder up, but he's gotta be feeling it off that drop. Man, these two competitors, it has been Pedal to the metal since the opening bell. Ragdolling each other around the ring. And really the only men that can really do that to each other are these two competitors. Back and forth we begin to go as Walter avoided Lashley's 
little bit of a spear in the corner. And now Walter going for that vice grip on Bobby Lashley. Just looking to knock out the United States champion here in Tampa Bay, Florida. Going after the knee of the almighty one. And clearly the strategy of both of these men is throw everything in the kitchen sink at the competitor until they cannot get up anymore as there's a gut wrench by Walter. Lashley is down and out. We have not seen Lashley in this kind of predicament at all throughout his United States Championship reign. If he retains tonight, it is certainly going to be by adapting to the situation and simply just outrunning Walter to the finish line. As Walter, wait a minute here, power bomb! And that power bomb is what earned Walter the number one contendership to be here tonight at WrestleMania. But will it win, the, win him the title? Not just yet as Lashley gets the shoulder up. Normally we see a series of power bombs out of Walter. Power bomb symphony. Oh my goodness. Tonight was just one power bomb, at least so far. Followed it up with that kick. But Lashley, look at the fight of the United States champion. Lashley is running off pure adrenaline and the will to win here at WrestleMania. Lashley's United States Championship is on the line and he is not looking to leave Raymond James Stadium empty-handed tonight. He's got to get back into this after some high offense from the ring general. Goes for that cut in half again, but Walter with the bare knee able to avoid it. Over Walter had in mind, Lashley able to dodge it, and there's a clothesline, and not many people are gonna be able to take Walter down off of just one shot. But there's Lashley, look at the strength as he sends Walter halfway across the ring. There's a message for the ring general, kiss his you know what, Bobby Lashley is fired up at WrestleMania Sunday. Now the strength of Lashley, oh my goodness, on display in full effect, military press by the United States champion. And smart to go right into the cover. And not just yet. You saw the tail of the tape beforehand. Lashley went in around 270, Walter around 290. Walter with the one foot difference as well when it comes to height. Both of these men, not only strong style hitters, but strong enough to be able to pick each other up just like that. As they've been doing it since the opening bell. Just wait a minute, Lashley, you have got to be kidding me. Oh my goodness, superplex to Walter. My sentiments exactly for the capacity crowd in Tampa Bay. This is certainly awesome. Lashley is not done. Going for another suplex on the ring general. Walter, however, lands on his feet, pops the hips for the German. And the United States title match rolls on, at least for now, as Walter's reapplied that dragon sleeper he was looking for earlier. And look at the arch he's got in there. The bend in the back of the United States champion. The pressure on the spine for the champion able to get out of it. Now Walter going double underhook again. He hit this earlier, but Lashley this time had it scouted. Back and forth, the pendulum of momentum swings, but Walter knocking the heart out of the chest of Lashley with that running drop kick. A man of that size should not be able to move with that kind of agility, but Walter is certainly a rare breed inside of that ring. Lashley down and out as the ring general is in search of his first championship on Friday Night SmackDown. Lashley able to get the shoulder up. The United States title match rolls on here on WrestleMania Sunday. Over the top goes Walter. And look at this, Lashley dragging him by the neck over the top rope and just drops the hammer on the spine of Walter. Lashley has thrown Walter around this ring, but as much as that might take out of Walter, it's got to take a lot out of Lashley as well to be able to pick up the 290 pounder and ragdoll him from canvas. Lashley's best bet, oh wait a minute here, Walter, small package, he's gonna steal the US title, not just yet. We well, you know what Imperium says, the mat is sacred and Walter staying on the mat and still finding a way to utilize offense there and I'm just trying to stump the champion trip G dreams of Lashley right out of him. And here he comes off the top rope with the splash. 
And Lashley luckily saved by the ropes there. My goodness, so much to call in this match. Bell to bell, these guys have been battling it out. This match is not gonna end until their tanks are on empty. That is for damn sure. Walter going for the cover on the almighty Bobby Lashley. Lashley gets the shoulder up, and at least for now, retains the United States Championship, and there's an STO by the champion. The hell is it gonna take to keep one of these men down? Lashley, swinging neck breaker to the ring general. Trying to muscle the big man up again. Whips him off a second time. And for a second time, it's the swinging neck breaker. Lashley just trying to reach deep into the repertoire, throw anything in the kitchen sink at the number one contender tonight. All in the means of leaving the United States champion is Walter, another German by the ring general. The Austrian looking to win United States gold as he whips Lashley into the corner. And you see the tiredness, the exhaustion of Bobby Lashley setting in, not able to defend himself right now. Oh, wait a minute, what the hell? Walter is on the top rope. You have got to be kidding me. No way. Holy hell, power bomb for the top rope. Oh my God. We have a new United States Champion. I cannot believe what we just witnessed. Walter, the second powerbomb of the match, but this time lifting the 270 pounder off the top rope and sending him for a ride down to the canvas. Here is your winner and the new WWE United States Champion, Walter! I am not shocked at the result, but I am stunned by that move off the top. Imperium's ring general, Walter, has secured his first championship on SmackDown. He is the brand new WWE United States Champion! Nation, before you go, I wanted to leave you all with a special message. A message to simply say, thank you. Over the last year, I've given my heart, passion, and dedication to trying to build the biggest and best universe mode you could find. And with the support of all of you, I think we have taken a big step towards that goal. WrestleMania was the grand finale to WWE 2K22, a game that I poured endless hours into all in an attempt to make it the most captivating content you could consume. I hope you all have enjoyed every match, moment, and story you have witnessed. Now, as we end the 2K22 season, we will sit back and prepare for what will be an even bigger year with 2K23. All of these stories that have transpired will pick up right where we left off. Nation, thank you for your support over the last year, I promise. We are just getting started. I will see you all in just a few weeks for WWE 2K23. Based on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.